the best location in the nation. And, you know, when I moved down here from Cleveland, Ohio, because even though I was a local celebrity in Cleveland, Ohio, I knew I couldn't make it mainstream down there because my name ain't LeBron James. Your name's LeBron James. You can make it mainstream in Cleveland. I could not. So when I moved down here, I knew my life would change. I knew I'd get a billion views, probably more by the end of the year. But I knew my life would change because, you know, Dehute, I used to hang out with billionaires and politicians. I'd go out with these people. My kids play with their kids, go out to dinner. Here, I'm hanging out with degenerates and influencers. So the, the, the funny thing is, my friend, the funny thing is, I'm making way more money. It. <laughs> it, it's crazy. You yeah. go from hanging with billionaires in Ohio yeah. to hanging around with influencers in degenerates. And when I mean degenerates, I am talking about the fucking generates. OK, but yet you're making more money. That doesn't say anything about me. That says a lot about the fucking society mm. we fucking live in. And by the way, we are in the free state of fucking Florida. <laughs> and now the hell that I said that. Let me introduce today's guest, because, you know, most of the times I'm interviewing people in 2023. And it's basically for off clout. Mm. All right. I'm saying this. This ain't that. OK, this is a straight up intellectual Someone who knows the law and holistic medicine the same way I know fucking numerology. Having said that, Tehute, introduce yourself. Greetings of peace, everyone. Tehuti Maatra, LifeMassReform.com, and various herbal businesses in the house. My man, G-Man. My man is uh, born in the year of the dog. He's a Taurus because he definitely reminds me he's a Taurus all the time. By his mannerizations, by the way he talks, by the way he thinks. But what you give me faith in, Dehute, is, you know, I, I consider a lot of nine, nine, nine life paths pieces of garbage. Um, <laughs> you, my friend, um, you're the complete opposite. Mm. I, 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 you are essentially what all nine life paths think they are. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because let's, let's face it. I got an ego. You got an ego. Ain't nothing wrong with it, right? Nothing wrong with, nothing wrong with ego. But you know what? It comes down to this. Can you justify mm -hmm. your ego? Yeah. You okay. Up. I've basically influenced millions upon millions of people to basically accept numerology. It's as close to being mainstream as it ever has been in any time in world history, at least modern day world history. So I am the God. I'm, I'm not Pythagoras, but I'm the Godfather because most people learned it based off what I did. This man right here, the feds went after him. This man right here, who other people got shut down. Not him. He's still doing what he's doing. So, Duhute, let's start like this. Yes, sir. Um, let's get into it. You have a very interesting life. We're going to be here for a while. And I want you to start off by saying... How the fuck did you beat the feds? Knowledge of law and spirituality. Break it down. Those two in tandem. Knowledge of the law, including federal law, because when you deal with the feds, that's federal law, not state law. And then spirituality, being spiritual. Now, the reason why I bring up that spiritual component because I could just say just the law, mm -hmm. right? You can just know your rights, what have you, and mm -hmm. you're, you're good to go. But the spirituality is key when a government agency is really looking to get you. And to, they were to, looking to, to get oh, you. Oh, absolutely. Because even though my people never said I was the head or the leader, they could deduce. Which is why I got the visit nobody else got. But in the questioning, I was interrogated for uh, two hours. By who? FBI. FBI interrogated you. The feds. And yeah, they interrogated and, you for two in hours. In Glendale, California, interrogated me for two hours. It was Friday, September 27, 2002, at 9.30 a.m. They didn't leave until 11.30 a.m. And I was going to see my uh, chiropractor. And the feds hit me. Boom! FBI. And I was like, damn, because my entire life, I never, ever wanted to run into the FBI because <laughs> I read the books on Quintel Pro. The, the, the wrong skip color for that, right? Man, Malcolm X, <laughs> Fred Hampton, Dr. Martin Luther King. I never wanted to run into the FBI, mm -hmm. you know. But suffice to say, 
Friday, September 27, 2002. My man got the date. Yo, yeah, 9.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. It was a Friday, too, which is my favorite day of the week. I incarnated on a Friday. Man, those jokers caught me off guard, man. But I was prepared for them. So the knowledge of the law, but the spirituality, you know, my angels working for me. Because the question, they were asking me set up questions. Like they did Malcolm X. All they need is a set up question and you hang yourself. They use your questions, uh, the answers to them. I'm sorry. They use your answers to their questions against you. And they tried to do that to me, but I was too smooth for them. So when it first started, see, first there were two agents. One was in a suit mm -hmm. and the other one was in military gear. Oh, that's that's psychological okay. right there. Yeah. So I, was, I said, that's that's pretty strange, you know. But uh, they said um, they wanted to um, they wanted to to take notes. I said, no, nah, because we'll end up with different notes. So I said, uh, <laughs> I said, I, 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 I got an idea. I'll go up and get my little mini tape recorder and I'll record us. And when I'm done, I'll immediately make you guys a copy. Mm -hmm. That way we have the same thing. Mm -hmm. Man, those jokers, and they kept doing this the whole two hours, mm -hmm. right? They just kept looking at each other like, like this motherfucker right here. We, we've, ne we've never encountered a dude like that. Mm -hmm. And so in trying to set me up, I was dishing it right back to them. And so they said, you know what? Forget it. Nobody take notes. We'll, we'll just, you know, ask questions. You give us answers. And, man, they were asking me how I felt about 9-11, uh, planes being blown up, uh, terrorism. But I'll tell you the key thing, though. They said, Mr. Mara, what are you going to do with your knowledge? And to this day, I still think about that question, man. So what are you going to do with so, your so, knowledge? So, so, so let's go back. After interviewing you for two hours, two hour interrogation, after interrogating man. you yeah. in your own home, two hours, with, one in military gear, one in FBI one in gear. Suit. After they're trying to manipulate yeah. you, they're trying to use psychological tactics against you. None of that works. Nothing. It didn't and work. At the very end, the only thing they're interested in: what, what the fuck are, are you do? going to do with, with knowledge. that knowledge? Yeah, and that right there, like that was it. I had always been like. A studier, if you will, ever since I, you know, got into personal research, personal studies, 19, January 1990. But, man, I turned it up a notch after that visit there, man, based on that question. What are you going to do with your knowledge? And I was like, there it is. Now, I'd always heard knowledge is power, mm -hmm. but it is the acquisition of knowledge and the application of knowledge ah. that is the key. Knowledge is not power. I see. So just knowing no, no, is no, not no, enough. No, no. You have to actually apply that I'll, stuff. I'll, I'll say it again. The acquisition of knowledge and the application of knowledge is what is power. A lot of people have knowledge, but they don't use it. A lot of people got knowledge, but they don't use it. They don't know how to apply it. You got to apply it. And that it. is what sets GG33 apart you gotta from apply the it. other numerologists out there. We actually apply it just like the you gotta, says. You got to apply it. It's, it's one thing to, to have it. You, you've acquired it. But are you applying it in your day-to-day -day life? That's what makes the difference. And another thing I need to share about that FBI visit was another question. Mr. Myra, why are you so calm? <laughs> I was like, damn, why am I so calm? They trying to I, call you a sociopath? I said, I, I said, respectfully, I haven't done anything wrong. See, and I didn't do anything mm -hmm. wrong. I knew the law. I studied your criminal code. If you study the criminal code and know all the criminal offenses and you know not to do those things, you're in the But in you're the not a lawyer. No, I'm not, I never said I was a so, lawyer. So, so you're not a lawyer. How do you know all this Criminal justice. Did you pass the bar? I've never taken the bar. And, and nor no, would I ever take no, the no, bar. No, 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 no. You're never going to take the no, bar. No, I'm never going to take the but bar. But without a doubt, you could pass that thing with flying colors. Oh, I don't know. I haven't, you know, ever looked at it or what have you. Um, law is one thing, but mm -hmm. then the bar is something else. So I can't say that, you know, I would just cinch that test because it's a lot of bullshit. Gotcha. Yeah, they got gotcha. all type of quizzes and shit like but, that but that you're it, not going to use in a court of law. I'm helping my daughter right now, mm -hmm. right, in an employment case, you know, suing her uh, employer. Mm -hmm. And she, you know, went to school, right? Now, school is one thing, right? Theory. 
But being in court, application is something else. It goes right back to knowledge and then the application of knowledge. So the things that they're teaching these students in school, let's take law school, for example. These people can't go to a court of law and defend themselves, let alone somebody else. Theory and application. See, so I, I've never dealt with their theories. I've only dealt with the application based upon my own independent studies. And an astral student of Bruce Lee, that's what, that's what sealed it for me. Meeting Bruce Lee several times in the astral realm and coming back to the 3D state with the answers. Because if there was a time I was blocked, like, damn, I just, I can't get this thing, this civil, this criminal. And one visit, I came back and it just clicked. Civil, contract, or obligation, criminal, injury to person and or property. I mean, it's that simple. It was simplified for me. How long, and, did, how long did it take you to learn this stuff? Uh, let's see, 2001. Same I would I would say about I would say about two I would say about two years, man, because Wait, wait, you, law, start, you started studying this in 2001? I started studying law officially in 2001. The information came to me in 2000, 2000, but I wasn't ready for it. You know what's crazy? I wasn't ready for it. That's when I started studying numerology. Really? 2001. Oh, wow. I believe, uh, 2001, I believe 2001 is when, is when the age of Aquarius hit. So the people who were say. like, you know, already spinning on yeah, that vibrational yeah, level yeah, hit yeah, them right yeah, away. These yeah. other plebs are just catching up now. Yeah, yeah. That makes because sense. Because it came to me. I was like, man, get this stuff away from me, throwing it in the trash. You know, I was an angry black man back then. I don't need no goddamn constitution. I wipe my butt with it, man. And then it just clicked. I was like, damn, where's that constitution at, man? I was looking for it, man. I called the Cato Institute and got another one. It actually came right on time, man. And that second time, it was a wrap. I was like Bruce Lee in a court of law, man. So it didn't matter what it was. I could master it, man. Have you ever I, lost a court case? Yeah, you you lose court cases. I, I've done a lot of uh, court cases for like a lot of people, and I've done them for myself. What, and what, so, what about the ones where they're going after you? Oh, no, no. I, I'm here. I, I won all those. You know. <laughs> That's all the ones oh, okay. that matter, brother. Well, I, I, you know, just for the people uh -huh. watching, I don't want people to think that yeah, you yeah, can yeah, just yeah, get yeah, in there it. and be 100 because law is like Las Vegas. It's like boxing. You know how Marvin Hagler said the refs robbed him of against course. Sugar Ray Leonard? That's court, bro. I mean, I look, I've lost cases that I knew I won. See, it was, well, you're trying to do this sovereignty stuff. You're a pro, per, what have you. We're going to teach you a lesson. It wasn't even about justice. Mm -hmm. We're going to teach you a lesson. So in all due honesty, I lost cases that I should have won. But it was political. Of course. It was political. You know, so the even, even the with feds, that. The feds have a 96% conviction rate. That's right across the board. Six fucking percent. The states, too. You beat them. Absolutely. Number one, the righteousness, man. Living righteous, knowing the laws. You see, man, I should be an avid L.A. Lakers fan, right? But then it clicked. Like that scene in the movie, uh, Bronx, was that Bronx Tale Bronx with Robert Tale. De Niro? Yeah. He was like, you know, what are the Yankees doing for you? Yeah. It was the same thing, like, you know, that for me with the Lakers, man. You know, what, was, what is James Worthy doing for me? What is Magic Johnson doing for me? What is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar doing for me? What have they ever done for me? Nothing. And so it clicked, man. So in 1990, man, I started hitting the books like crazy, man. And suffice to say, it changed my life. Knowledge is where it is at. Money, women, fashion, travel. I don't care what it is, man. Knowledge. That's I, the key. I remember us talking. You actually said you spend more money on knowledge than some people do on books. I haven't had the pleasure of visiting your house yet. But you showed me it's pictures insane, of brother. your library, bro. How much have you actually spent on books? You told me you spent like tens of thousands on particular oh, with, books. Like with all knowledge, six mm. digits. Now, like the books, you know, that probably would be like the bulk of it, man. Probably a good 80, 80K. 80k on, in books. So I books. want you to think. I want you to think about 80K? what this man is telling you while you're spending your money on fucking OnlyFans girls because you're a simp. While you're fucking spending your money on fucking drugs. While you're spending your money on fucking nonsense. He's spending his money on knowledge. What do you think about people? Man. What do you think about people who say I don't pay for knowledge? Oh, you do pay for the lack of knowledge. <laughs> Oh, you, yes, you do. <laughs> Viral clip. <laughs> yeah, you pay for the lack of knowledge. I mean, that's what keeps me busy, man. You know, people don't want to learn law. You come to the mod rod, there's a fee associated with it. 
you know, if you want pro bono, then you have to go deal with the system. And the system, the system is going to fry you. But there's people who say that um, knowledge should be free. And if you're actually withholding knowledge, then you're a bad guy. You're one of the Illuminati. Knowledge should be free. What type of knowledge are these people talking about? Mm, they feel entitled to anything you know. No, because when you study history, you've always had secret societies. And I'm not talking about Illuminati, NWO mm-hmm. type of society. We're talking societies like the Nazarenes, right? Spiritual societies, you know, who stayed away from the masses of the people. So when the masses of the people got sick and they were experiencing things like the bubonic plague, if these people were healthy, you know. While these people were in, in hospitals, right, and their babies being like jabbed COVID. and forceps being used against their mm-hmm. hands, man, these people were having home, so-called home births. You see, so we've always had society. You have to protect knowledge. Even the biblical Jesus, and, and I say that for a reason, the biblical Jesus said, cast not forth your pearls unto swine. That's spiritual language. <laughs> you know how your, I your took pearls, that? Your pearls, your gemstones. Mm. You that's how, knowledge. You know how I took that? I took that one as in uh, astrology, the snake is the one with the wisdom, yeah. and the enemy's sign is the pig. So hmm. the snake should never show p- pearls that, of wisdom a, that's, to the that's, fucking swine. That's an aspect. Yeah, I, I, that's yeah, the way that, I've always took that. Yeah, because, see, when you hear, you have to... Go into the Bible, whether you believe in it or not. When you you're believe quant- in it? When, when you, do you believe some, in it? Something in the Bible I do believe in. The Bible is not a book you take literally. But the point I want to make right quick is uh, the serpent is associated with wisdom. Be ye wise as serpents, gentle or humble as doves. But the snake comes first. The wisdom comes first. Be wise, first and foremost, but then be humble. That's a form of wisdom. Now, biblically speaking, wisdom means the ability to live life skillfully. So even though I knew I could crush attorneys and I knew things that judges didn't know, I had to apply wisdom because that sapsucker in the black robe was in a position higher than me or more superior than me in that particular venue. So I have to show wisdom and play stupid, right? Sheep amongst wolves. When you're in a courthouse, you're the sheep. I happen to be a black sheep. We have white sheep, <laughs> black sheep. No, seriously, because the, the black sheep are those who they tread their own way. And you no, know, when you study history, the white sheep is when we talk about the sheeple, those are white sheep. Because when you study the white sheep, those are the ones who are led to the slaughterhouse, uh-huh. right, by the shepherd. But most people don't even know that there's something called a black sheep. And when you study the black sheep in nature, they're never in that crowd. They go their own way. So we've heard of black sheep of the family. That's all we've ever heard of mm-hmm. as some type of metaphorical statement. But it's really real. It's really real. So I consider myself the black sheep of the family, the black sheep of the matrix. I go my own way. It's been like that since day one. Brother, when did you become a millionaire? Man, I forgot we were supposed to talk about that earlier. We'll uh, get into it. No, uh, it's just certain things. Uh-huh. We were outside on the patio, uh-huh. which is nice too, people. Y'all got to see this bad spot here. But uh, we were talking about certain things about the past. Uh-huh. And so when it comes to that whole money thing, uh-huh. yeah. There were some issues dealing with that there, which is why you don't hear me talk about that, because I learned my lesson the hard way. Gotcha. But to answer my man's question, I'm going to say 2008 and leave it at that. Outstanding, man. Um, the point I'm trying to make is you're a man of means. You're a man who um, can basically have anything he wants at this point, correct? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, Everything I have in life now, that- I want it. The, the point is when people are in your position, that gives people respect because no matter what they believe, almost everyone represents, respects that bag. Absolutely. That's universal. Absolutely. That's universal. Uh, absolutely. Because when you have that absolutely. bag, it basically meant that you know how to get past this fucking mouse trap. Uh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. That, I mean, that's real talk right there, you know, and... Back in 19, I'm sorry, in, in 2008, 
which is when my life changed, which, which is so crazy because when you go back to 2008, Great America, recession. Yeah. You know, I had always read about, you know, certain men making their bag, you know, during recessions and depressions. Mm-hmm. And, you know, people were catching hell. I'm like, man, that's, that, how, how does that happen? You know, read it, heard it. I'm like, it doesn't make, you know, any sense to me. And then it happened to me in 2008. I was like, wow. Got that phone call like, yo, man, check the account. Check, check your documents, what have you. And I'm like, wow, it just like came out of the blue. But let me say this. Did you feel like you finally made it? I'm going to be honest with you. Spiritually, I did because I was just doing me, which was formulating the herbs, you know, dropping knowledge, helping people. Like I, I have what we call the psychic income, the psychic bag, the joy, the elation, the happiness and all of those things. They came from me being free, first and foremost. I was free. I wasn't working a nine to five. I wasn't W4 anymore. So I was free to do me. So I was on top of the world. So this is why the scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, which most people don't know what that is and where it's located. But seek ye first the kingdom of God in all things. I include the matrix. All things of the matrix shall be added unto you. I didn't have to go get these things. They came to me. And that came manifested them. absolutely following my heart, which is the kingdom of God. That's what's in here for me. The kingdom of God is is it's um, incidental to the individual. It's different. It's not a, 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 a singular place. It differs person to person. So the kingdom of God for me is what I believed in, is what gave me joy and what has led to my manifestation. What do you say to people who say you're full of shit, manifestation ain't real, you just outworked everybody else? What I, I would simply say that your perception of me is not my reality, and I leave it at that. What if they say your perception isn't reality either? You can't speak for me. You're not my representation. You're not my representative. I've never hired anybody to represent me. So you can't speak for me, right? A re- uh, what, what does your representative do for you? They speak on your behalf, right? Mm-hmm. I don't have any representatives, so nobody can speak on my behalf. Your opinion of me is not my reality. Your perception of me is not my reality. So you can. If, you if, can, if a lot of people have the same perception, isn't perception then reality? For those people, yes, it is. I create my reality from my thoughts. See, nobody controls my thoughts. People don't give me my thoughts. I'm in control of my thoughts. The only thing that I can get from people are the building blocks in which to form my own thoughts. You say you control your thoughts. Was there a time you believe you did not control your thoughts? Of course thoughts? I did. You know, I grew, up in, I grew up in the Matrix, you know, as a young boy, a teenager, okay. you know, I, maybe my, my first year of my 20s uh, for a few months, because in all due honesty, my life took off in 1990, I was 20. So you were, you were born in the year of the dog, your life took off in the year of the horse. 19 and, 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 and 1990. Yeah, my life took off in 1990, man. 1990. I made up my mind to make that sacrifice. While all my homeboys, you know, uh, my, my cousins, you know, relatives, they decided to party and smoke weed and just do ghetto street shit. I made up my mind to study the books, to hit the books. I said, I'm going to sacrifice my 20s so I can have the rest of my life to live on my terms, man. And, and people do, ask me all the time, how, fuck, hell no, I don't regret okay. it. And people ask me all the time, how come I'm not in communication with my family members? Why would I be? If I did something different, I'm the only one who did something different, got a different outcome that I want, that they want, but I did the work. Uh-huh. Why would I hang around them? All they're going to do is ask me for money. Like I'm Tahuti Rockefeller, <laughs> Tahuti Rothschild. Hey cousin, hey cousin, hey, can you loan me this? Can you loan me this? What do you mean loan? You know I'm not getting that money back. So because I don't even want to be in a position to say no, I don't go around certain people. And that includes family members. I talk to you more than I talk to any blood relative outside of my immediate family that I make. Aunts, uncles, grandparents, I don't talk to any of them. Brother, I'm going to say this the three. You know, I want everyone listening. There are three people I talk to for a long time on the phone or at dinner consistently, not like once or twice, but consistently. One of them 
is worth about eleven billion dollars. Mm. One of them is Roger, uh, my top student, who's a master thirty three in his mm. own right. And you're the other one, brother. Oh wow! That's it. Wow! That's it. Man, uh, I can relate. Very, very few people can teach me anything fucking useful in this world. Yeah. That's the fucking problem. Yeah. All you guys have had fucking mentors. Mm. You've had mentors. I don't have any really fucking mentor. Right. I right. didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Right. And, and people want to question if I'm a 33. How the fuck did I do all this? How, the, how am I the guy who made all this shit viral? Mm. If I'm not a 33, how the fuck I pulled that off? That's what people need to stop getting their heads out their asses. Okay? Here's the bottom line. This man wanted it. He wanted it fucking bad. He wanted it bad. And you went through a lot of different... I went through, man. You went through a lot of different phases in your life, brother. A lot, brother. And a lot. The well, average person would not be sitting here, bro. And, and the last ultimate trial was a four and a half year divorce. Most dudes that would have been in my place, in my shoes, would not be sitting here right now. They wouldn't be sitting here. They'd be homeless, in jail, or in the cemetery. If they were in my case, the divorce where, I went through. Where did you grow up? I grew up in South Central Los Angeles. How Watts are, and Compton. How are you, uh, and I'm assuming you grew up uh, below middle class? Oh, man, we, we, man, we were upper lower class. Upper man. lower class? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, probably middle lower class. Okay, you were, you we were, were most definitely South lower Central class. And lower class. I grew up in South Central Los Angeles, Watts and Compton. A paternal grandmother in Watts, maternal grandmother in Compton. Poor, poor area, Compton. right? Oh, yeah, the hood. Okay, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Low, low income. Um, how is it that you, um, a black man who grew up in uh, South Central, um, actually made something of himself? I mean, how, I, I, I've never talked to you, and you say, "Oh, I'm a victim." I never, no, no, no. I never talked to you and heard, yo, you fucking white devil, where are my no, reparations? No, 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 I no, never no. heard that shit from you. So why is it that you, a man who doesn't believe in that nonsense, has a bag, but yet the people who fucking say white devil this, white devil that, they're fucking the bottom society fucking broke us out. You, you have to take accountability for yourself first and foremost. See... If you link into, say, black consciousness, black power, what have you, that's external. So even though you may be a member of the race, that ideology is external to yourself, you see. And so when you attach yourself to that, you are attaching yourself to everything that makes up that ideology. And a lot of that is uh, being poor, being broke, being robbed, being done wrong or what have you. And you're stuck there. See, I study history. So it's one thing to study history and you study the, you know, the Armenian genocide, you know, or you study, you know, what took place in Namibia and, and, you know, and, and all of these things. here. It's not to deny that. But when you stay stuck into something, I'm, I'm not saying slavery didn't happen. I'm not saying all these things recorded in history didn't happen. But if you stay stuck in that, there is no growth or movement now, before I got to where I am right now, I was into all of those things, man. You know, the black power, nation of Islam, all of that and learn many great things. And to this day, I'm still grateful for all the good that I learned. But because I am a I have a what they call a voracious or voracious appetite for knowledge and you keep on studying, man, you actually get to levels that are above the ideologies, especially the levels that certain people will want to have you on. You, you go higher. This is why certain people, they stay in something for years. It's because they get stuck. It's like the same thing in herbalism or herbology. People get stuck and they stay there forever. That's stagnation. For myself, man, I love to study and I just keep on studying. And so I get to the point where I learn more than I'm supposed to learn. And then I'm going to start questioning what I learned, what I believed in. And when there are no answers that can satisfy my curiosity, then I'm out. You see, it served its purpose. I'm the little baby that grew too big to stay in the crib. Okay. I had to, cr I had to, cl I had to climb me, out let, now. Let me throw that back at you. Um, I believe at this point in history, Islam will do a lot of good for America. Under the I, circumstances. I, 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 right now, in this point in history, Under in the 2023, yeah. I believe Islam will do a lot of good.
fucking getting these whores off the streets, fucking putting these beta males into whatever they need to be fucking put into. We'll just leave it at that. I believe that Islam is going to cleanse the rainbow. I believe all that's going to happen because I believe Islam is something that is beneficial to society when society is degenerate. No. But when society has reached a level like it was in the 1950s, uh, where the family union is strong, that's when I believe Islam starts holding shit back. I believe Islam is really good for fixing shit, but when it's actually fixed, it's actually like a like an anchor and holds society down. Is that your take from Islam as well? That's what I was about to inquire of you. That you know, once you get a desired outcome, a yeah. result, what do you do with Islam? What do you do with the the Muslims? Because now you got a, a whole new problem, right? So they knocked out a problem, but they're still here. They believe yeah. they got they they believe they got a, a stake. Yeah. You know, in, in, in the nation, you know, and, you know, their way or the highway, you know, now they want Sharia law. You have no more LGBTQ mm-hmm. in the rest of the alphabets, you know, and degeneracy, what have you. I, I, Sharia I, I, law in, in America no. and those things no. don't exist anymore. So I would say that there are aspects of Islam that are very useful here in the West, here mm-hmm. in America. There, there are aspects of it. Should and I these bitches I, be in burqas and hijabs? This bitch said bitches. <laughs> 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 she made us too much, man. Um, here's the thing, G. This is the United States of America, free will. Now, you believe it. I believe they should. I know it's for their own good. Mm-hmm. Okay. But... We're under Marxism. We're under socialism. Right. And these people, they're under the illusion that they have freedom. Right. You, you got feminism on the scene here. You got freedom to be whores. That's for sure. But that's just still it's still freedom. There's free will. Right. It's it's it's, it's personal but, but, liberty but, but, under the Fifth but Amendment. But cancer doesn't have free will in your body. Your yeah, white yes, blood cells yeah, will attack it. You can't, so why do we allow this cancer to flourish here? But cancer does have free will, you know, to, to, to formulate, which is actually a really positive thing. It's a sensor, you know. Um, and then the white blood cells working on your behalf turns against you. It just gets tired and turns against you. Then you got more white blood cells. Then you have red blood cells. Not good. You see? So it's not good. You see? So when it comes to people, you know, the American citizens, it is dangerous to give these people free will when they don't even have willpower. See, you can't have free will until you develop the willpower. You have to develop the mind first and foremost before you can be free. You see, like I tell people when we deal with um, Uranus or Uranus, which deals with liberation, right? No restraints, no constriction. Mm -hmm. Well, before we can deal with that planet, we got to deal with Saturn. Correct. Saturn comes first, right? Restriction. It deals with restriction. It deals with discipline. Reprimand. Uh, Saturn, a lot of people look at it as a uh, malevolent planet. I see it as a benevolent planet because discipline is the key. Discipline is the key. And American citizens don't have discipline. Look, America is a great country, right? You have Best country pers- in the world. You know, agree? Yeah, you you have liberty. You you know your freedoms, and they're they're you know various ones: the civic, the judicial, the economic, and all of that there. But what the American people are missing is the mindset. See, America is called the land of enlightenment. See, I figured this out a long time ago. I said, let me become enlightened, so America could work for me. See, that's who America truly works for. Those who are enlightened, those in the know. You can't be a dummy, an ignoramus, a degenerate, and be an American and think America's going to work for you. Those are the people working two and three and four jobs. That's what I thought before I moved to Miami. A lot of degenerates down here got a bag. <laughs> Man. But, but, uh, but see, there's a, there's, a, there's a difference, though. There's a difference. But overall... You know, most people are striving to be religious people and good or what have you. And they're the ones who are playing the game, playing by the rules. And those are the ones who are being shafted. Now, there's an aspect of the matrix that allowed degenerates to get money. But we have to look at those degenerates who have money and see what's going to happen to the degenerates. They will use the money to sabotage themselves, 
to hurt themselves. Drugs. Do you know how many people? Women. Do you know how many people compromise their health in pursuit of wealth? And then once they get the wealth, they have to sabotage that to get back at health. Quite a few. They sacrifice their health to get to wealth. Once they get the wealth, they got to spend it to get back to health. And this is why you got people traveling all over the world to knock out cancers. I'm going to go to Germany. I'm going to go to Switzerland. I'm going to go to Sweden. Spending hundreds of thousands of dollars. Stevie Wonder did that for his wife, his ex-wife, uh, Sylvia Wright. Traveling all over the globe to help her out. All that money. And it's spent on health through the wrong modality. Knowledge is power because if you got a lot of money, you'll end up like Steve Jobs, right? Cancer took him out. Well, the treatment took him out. So yeah, what good that, is your that, money? That, that's because he didn't go to you. Well, if he, if he well, went to you, he'd still be alive. I, a lot of people, had they come, to, but see, I was very controversial, underground, what have you. A lot of people would be, al uh, be alive if they came to me and actually did what I told them to do. See, it's one thing to go to a person. You go to it like a Dr. Sebi or to Hudi Madra and you hear good words, but then you don't apply it. Now, the people who apply it, you know, they get benefits. Those who don't, they're no longer on the scene. Let's talk about your health. You ever sick? Man, I was the sickliest person growing up. As a matter of fact, I was so sick coming up, I thought I would die in my childhood. My cousins would be out playing dodgeball, what have you, and I'd be on the couch sick because I swallowed some pop rocks and I thought I would die, what have you, and I'm coughing and eyes watering. I'm like, damn, you know, I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna die. That was always with me as a little boy. But then it turns out being that black sheep again, man, I was the only person in my family to get into health. And that too changed my life. I met people, I was a little boy taking BC powder. I used to be a BC powder junkie. That's powdered aspirin because of all the headaches. And there's an astrological implication to that, but I didn't know about because my family grew up as Christians. So they didn't want to deal with numerology and astrology and palmistry and psychiatry and that's those things. That's all devil shit, right? Yeah, that's what, you know, we grew up as okay. Baptists, so you, you know we heard that, especially from my very religiously devout grandmother, Willie Mae Maxwell. Witness. No, no, I went to school with, with you know, some of those them. Are, those are the crazy ones. Them gone, man, gone. But uh, being that black sheep, I was the only one that went up against my beloved maternal grandmother who used to control the whole family. Boy, the devil gonna get you. Boy, if you don't go buy me a seven up, the devil gonna get you. Really? Yo, yeah, that's how my grandmother if was. If you don't buy her a seven boy, up, boy, the devil. Boy, go buy me a seven up. I'm like, Grandma, I don't wanna go. Boy, if you don't go buy me a seven up, the devil gonna get you. And it was just the devil, the devil, the devil. <laughs> I said, why is She's it? She's like the government putting the I, fear in people. I said, why is a woman so into Jesus Christ and Christianity talking about the <laughs> devil so much? <laughs> I'm like, how the hell you know? Do you talk to the devil? How you know the devil gonna get me? And so at a young age, man, it clicked. I was in elementary school, sixth grade. And I went to my grandmother's house and she tried to pull that whole, the devil gonna get you nonsense. Mm -hmm. And I told her, I said, no, he ain't grandma. She said, well, what you mean? I said, the devil's not gonna get me. She said, well, how you know? I said, because I'm friends with the devil. <laughs> Her power was gone just like that. <laughs> Boy, Bonnie, you got your hands full with this one right here. <laughs> I was free that day. It could no longer work on Tahuti Matwa Matra as a little boy. How old were you? I was 12. I was sixth grade. So oh. I, was, I was 12. I was 11 or 12. So you knew that program was bullshit 12 Man, years it's, old. It, it's, while, while these people are 20, 30, 40, 50, even 60 years old watching, and they still believe the Matrix programming, oh, you got out of it at 12 years old. So let's Absolutely. see, you got out of the programming in your dog ear, and you are a dog. What do you know? Man, I'm telling you, man, like it, it's, it's, it's mathematical, like it, it adds up. You know, it makes sense. Yes. I look back at my life and it adds up. It makes sense. And that's why I feel the way that I feel right now in this moment. When we were in Las Vegas and you were like, hey, man, what do you want to do? I said, man, let's walk. Remember that? Straight I, up. I, I said, I, said I, 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 I told this man, listen, you're in Vegas. Anything you want to do on me. You want to go to the five star restaurant. You want to go yeah. anywhere. Let's go. This man said, let's go for a walk. I said, let's walk. G. <laughs> let's bask. I said, let's bask in this moment. Why? Because we are free. What was going on that day? What was going downstairs? There was a lot of people. What was going on? Some convention. It was a convention. And I said, Gary, I said, we used to be those people. Remember I said that? Yes, I, said, that you, I said, that used to be us. And we used to be those plebs. That used to be us. I said, brother, we're free. 
We don't have to do anything. Let's 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 just bask no, in we, the moment. We, we, we don't, don't have to let's, do this. We yeah. don't have to do this. Let's, we let's, do this because we choose to do this. No absolutely. one's putting a gun anyone's head. Absolutely. No one, because we this this is actually what free will is. This is actually what free will is. We choose to do this with our free time. My man chose to come out all the way from fucking California, do a podcast to educate you, and some of you fucking morons are just going <laughs> to dismiss this shit. So that's the problem. You have people out here who are trying to help you. We're trying to give you that life yeah. raft, and you don't care. As a matter of fact, you trying to throw that right back. They're not even going to swim. They're going to try to throw that shit back. But that's how okay. much pride they have. But it's okay. Their time is coming. It never fails. Oh, their time is coming. You their know why? Is coming. Because that shit yeah. got activated yeah, yeah. today Let what me. is today yeah. today is all uh, october 4th 2023 when the government started doing those uh 5g tests with the satellite oh, yeah. you know what i'm not a psychic people think yeah. i'm a psychic but i'm not a psychic but i got a prediction for you the hute and i think you're gonna oh, back I'm me already on this knowing. i'm already I'm thinking there's a lot of access deaths coming real a- soon absolutely absolutely an uh, activation took place today and you know what it's not my problem because i'm smart enough not to get vaccinated oh you didn't get vaccinated hell no but the government said get vaccinated yeah. but, you but, don't but, trust but, but, the but, government but no i do trust the government because the government told me in 40 and title 42 united states code section 300 aa-22b1 Love this game. that all have unavoidable Adverse effects. That's what the government tells you. 42 U.S.C. 300-AA-22B1. All have unavoidable adverse effects. You can't escape from them. And so they got immunity. Oh. The vaccine companies. They got immunity for all this shit. Yeah, but what the government is telling you, hey, Mm -hmm. listen. These things called vaccines, Mm -hmm. they're going to fuck you up. (laughs) Okay? There's nothing we can do about it. Okay? And, And we're reciting what the vaccine companies, the manufacturers have said. Like Robert Kennedy Jr. said, the vaccine companies themselves have said, if we could make a safe, we would, but we can't. Do you understand? We can't. So the government in 42 U.S.C. 300 clearly states that these things have unavoidable adverse effects. Now, we don't know like which one, but there are plenty and it's, it's Russian roulette. If you get this shot, it's Russian roulette. So we're giving you the notice. And see, that's the thing about wickedness in they the world. You. It gives you. you notice. They tell you. You can say, I didn't know. Nobody told me. It's there. You go into a court of law and they'll tell you straight up, ignorance of the law is no excuse. People tell me that all the time. There's a lot of law. I can't remember all that. You remember these goddamn degenerate rap lyrics? <laughs> you remember that shit? You remember them goddamn box scores? Them sport box scores? How come you cannot remember a, a, a legal provision or a legal code or a statute? You don't want to. You don't want to apply your mind. You see? And so these are the people who end up as cannon fodder because they don't want to apply their mind, man. When we talked about the, like the FBI, and I told you the two things, knowledge of the law and spirituality. We're not talking about the spirituality, now we're talking about the knowledge of the law. These people will tell you ignorance of the law is no excuse. Gee, man, how many laws do you think are in existence in the United States? Millions. Man, there are 70 million yeah. statutes on the books. Now guess what? According to the government, you and I, us, everybody, we have to know all 70 million statutes. These motherfuckers That's don't even know where they fucking take our tax dollars. And they want you to fucking know that shit. 70 That's million fucking. St- Look, I'm in Florida, right? And if anything jump off criminally, the state of Florida is going to presume that I know the law. And if I don't, they're going to tell me ignorance of Florida law is no excuse. We don't give a damn that you just got in last night. You got to know this damn law. Now, even though I don't know Florida law because I'm legally astute, I could master it just like that. Because when you study law, you find out that all the laws of the state are pretty much the same. They just word it differently and they give it different code sections. But the traffic code, the penal code, the family, they all say the same thing. So it would be a cinch, man. It would be a cinch. But the knowledge of the law, if you that's moved on here, us. If you moved here to Florida, how long would it take you to fucking master that shit? 
in, in no time at all. Because like I just said, it's California law with the with Florida on the name of the book. Mm -hmm. And the and the codes are different. Like our, our murder statute is one eight seven. And it's going to be different in Florida. But when you read it, it's going to say the same thing. 187. Well, it's yeah. so fitting. So fitting. In oh, murder but that's what, that's, what, that's what the rappers got it mm -hmm. from. That's California yeah, Penal Code Section 187, which is murder. Remember Easy said said mm -hmm. uh, 187? Dr. Dre Killer and Snoop Dogg was talking about 187 mm -hmm. on yeah. Undercover Cop. Yeah. Homicide. And those fools did not even know the California Penal Code. Most of them caught cases under the California Penal Code. But that's where that 187 came from. It's, it's the, the numbers like 211. I remember the last time I got robbed was on February 11th. And I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, wait a minute. That's that's the that's the criminal code for robbery in California. 211. <laughs> it, it, it's amazing how the synchronicity yes, is brother. always there. Yes. And, and, and 211. And speaking of synchronicity, my friend, you know, a lot of people have always asked me, how did you meet the Hute? Hmm. How did you meet the Hute? Law. It, it, it actually it, it, it involved law. It, it wasn't numerology, folks. It involved law. It involved the law. It involved law. Uh, Dehute was uh, giving me advice um, of how to deal with a certain somebody. So we're gonna go right down the rabbit hole. I had a student once. Her name was Vara. She is the reason I have non-disclosures. Mm. This fucking bitch <laughs> is the fucking reason I have non-disclosures. Um, she's born 525. We'll get into that. By the way, 525 for women. If you're born that day, you're, you're banned from GG33. I don't wow. want your money. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Hit the fucking bricks. Um, I didn't know this at the time, but Dehute dealt with this crazy psychopathic oh, yeah. bitch before I dealt yep. with her. And by the way, this is still to this day the craziest, most cringe fucking whore Man. I have ever dealt with in my fucking life. Dehute, tell us about this woman I know was Vara. Man. What do you know her as? Man, this girl started out with a lie. Wanted to work for me so bad. And, you know, and she went hard. She, she did certain things, you know, to prove herself. She wasn't stupid. Not no at one's all. ever calling her stupid. Not, not at all. Born 25, 2 and 5 is no, 7. No, that mother smart. Was, was devious as hell. Mm -hmm. But um, she got out to Glendale, hired her. And it was only when I hired her, when I hired her, I could really start seeing who she was as a person. Because there was conversation on the telephone. But man, when that girl was in Glendale, man, it all started coming out, man, piece by piece. And I was like, what in the world did I do? I'm like, oh, my goodness. She's not wrapped too tight. Mm -hmm. I said, I said, this girl got issues. Now, I knew she was a Gemini. So I was like, OK, mm -hmm. the, you know, I tried to in, in the beginning, I, I, I tried to justify yeah, this is the Gemini, behavior. Gemini on steroids. You know, I, I tried to justify, uh, you know, that, you know, but no, nah, it, it was deeper than that. You know, it was deeper than that. And I would say four or five months, it was full blown. I was like, oh, my goodness. Wife at the time put her out. She was staying there. You know, we had five or six rooms. So she had a room in the house and uh, the wife, they got into it. The wife put her out. And I was like, damn. I said, this motherfucker ain't got no place to go. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, I had a couple of spots in Glendale. So I let her stay in one of the spots. Mm -hmm. Man, 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 I'll tell you, brother, looking back on that, man, there was that thought, like, you know, I should let this motherfucker freeze, you know. <laughs> but uh, You would have been better off, brother. Man, As a matter of fact, if you, if I'm you, not going to lie, I would you, have. If, if you did, I, maybe she never would have came to my life. Maybe. So, so again, this maybe. shows you something. Maybe. Put the motherfucker out of his misery. Maybe. Put that fucking knee on the fucking neck and get it over with. Because if you don't... That person might go out there and commit the same fucking tragedy yeah. you know, to someone else. Yeah. I'm like, damn, boy, I remember that day, boy. I'll never forget it. But anyway, you know, I was like, damn. Okay, let me, it's cold, what have you. I'm justifying this shit here, man. So I let her stay in my spot, my sacred spot, man. Mm -hmm. Books, uh, DVDs, I mean, just everything. Like a little mini library mm -hmm. for one week. 
but I'm talking to her father. Mm -hmm. I'm like, look, she got to go. She can't stay here. Like, mm -hmm. this don't look good. I'm a married man, yes, you yes, know, yes. young female. Yes, yes. And I'm not going to lie to you. Like, in the back of my mind, I'm like, how do I know what this motherfucker's going to do, right? Yep. You know, rape, just sexual abuse, what mm -hmm. have you. I'm not going to lie. But that, that thought was there. Me too. Yeah, it, it was there, brother. You know, so I called her father. I said, hey, look, man, your daughter is out here and she has no place to go. You know, where she at right now? Well, she's here. Mm -hmm. But she can only stay here for like one week and then she got to go. I'm not about to F up my domestic situation. Correct. because of your, I'm not about to do that. And he was like, all right, man, thank you. You know, he tried to get two weeks. I'm like, no, sir, like seven days. And so we were talking, you know, every other day about what we had to do for Veronica because by then I knew, hey, that girl was crazy, man. Straight psycho. And her father told me, her father, t I was just telling you out there mm -hmm. on the balcony, mm -hmm. I said, brother, I regret that I did not make a copy on my printer of this document that the father showed me stating that the girl had at least eight, it was eight of those bad boys. She was cl clinically eight mental illnesses. She was clinically diagnosed with eight mental diseases or disorders, whatever you want to call it. Eight of those bad boys. I was like, my goodness. I said, God damn, what was I dealing with? And so our last resort was going to be because she was crazy and the father knew it. We would have to call the police and they would take her to like a psych ward. And as I'm listening to this, I'm like, man, I, I, I've really done it to myself this time, man. You, being nice, not vetting people, mm -hmm. giving people the benefit of the doubt. I wasn't doing the, the aura photography and the astrology. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do, I'm not gonna lie to you. Back then, I didn't do my due diligence. See, that's why you got the non-disclosure right now, you see? Mm -hmm. So if I was still doing things I was doing 10 years ago, I, it'd be the same way because of this person. Because of this person. And man, when that girl left, man, I had a conversation with the angels, man. I was so grateful. I said I would never, ever do that again, man, because that that was very, very risky. I know people who got hemmed up dealing with that girl who called criminal cases. As a matter of fact, when we met, mm -hmm. your she case was she, your case she, was she criminal. tried. She tried. You she see, failed. I didn't, ha yeah, she I, failed. I, I, I didn't this, have a, this, I didn't have a case. This, this fucking bitch who I fucking threw out. <laughs> Fucking started a criminal fucking case on me. I had to go to fucking Massachusetts. A fucking and that's how we met. Yeah, that's how we met. That's and how I Gary and I hooked up. I had to go to fucking Massachusetts. I'm talking to my man over here on the phone. He didn't know me by Gary's numbers guy back no, then. No, I didn't We're know just anything. Talking man. about this fucking bitch. And so, I knew her. So let, let me ask you this, Dehute. Um, how much of the fact that this bitch was fucked up in the head do you attribute to the fact that her mother was a whore? Oh, uh, the father told, look, man, okay, the people don't know who she is. You calling her Vari. Look, the father told me that the mother was crazy than a motherfucker and was a whore, was promiscuous. She was, she was basically a prostitute. Me, she was he, a prostitute. He told me, and I said, I said, dude, you're supposed to be a member of the Black Panther Party. I said, why'd you do it? <laughs> he said, man, I just wanted a freaky good time. That's what he told me. So, so, so I said, why did you drop seed in her? He, he dropped seed in her two times. I said, why'd you do that? And he was like, you got me, man. He said, no, he told me, he's like, you got me. He said, he said, I shouldn't have done it. He said, because VZ's mother was crazy than a motherfucker. I will never forget that dude's word, man. The mother was crazy. The mother was a whore. Men, remember it's not worth it. No, it's, it's not. It's just not, it's not worth it. That it's one not. night stand, that 5, 10, 15, hell, 30 minutes if you're a G, it's not worth it because if you fuck around with these whores, this is the end result. You have crazy ass people who come into this world because don't let anyone tell you. Don't let anyone fucking tell you that if a fucking woman is not a fucking whore, if she's not fucking getting <laughs> ran into, don't let anyone tell you that doesn't affect the kids. It yeah, does. Yeah. With fucking oh, yeah. health, with yeah. mental health, yeah. with physical health. Yeah. A lot of times these women talk about, yo, my kid's autistic. Mm -hmm. Yo, mm -hmm. my kid is this. Yo, my kid is that. I'm thinking of back in mind, you should have kept your fucking legs closed. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't care what nobody say. It is definitive. Look, I don't advocate masturbation, but if you're dealing with a, what do you, what do you call her? 
We call her VZ. You call Vari. Uh, Vari. She, Man, let again, me tell you the something. Personality. They have so many fucking different names. You gonna come out better doing shit, plug tuning a goddamn cantaloupe than messing around with something like that because you will regret it. Like I told you out there, brother, on the patio. I know of two dudes who call criminal cases. Now I don't know if those dudes are still serving time or what, but when it was going down, it was criminal, and these brothers were young, and they caught cases. This girl just throw cases like it ain't nothing. And people's lives are on the line, man. It's a joke Look, to her. It's a for, joke hey, to for, her. For, for, for you, I believe going to Massachusetts, you missed your child's first uh, yeah, birthday. I, I, I missed one of my kids. Uh, yeah. Birthdays. I think you had when you were in Massachusetts. Yeah. yeah. I, I missed one of my kids' birthdays. I remember because that. Because I of that to, shit. I had to go to Massachusetts yeah. because this fucking whore made up some charges. And I'm sitting there in front of the judge. She doesn't even fucking show up. Doesn't even and show I, up. And I'm like, judge, is there anything, any accountability for None. this woman? Because she dragged me all the way out here. I missed my kid's freaking yeah. birthday. And there's no accountability to these bitches. There's absolutely none. And, and and this is the whole point. Men, we hold all the power. We honestly hold all the power. How do you know this? Because when any country is occupied, it's 8 to 80. It's 8 to 80. Dude. Most people look it up what 8 to 80 means on the internet. 8 to 80 meant when those Russian soldiers were going to oh, defeat yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nazi Germany. 8 to 80. Yeah. Eight, as young as yeah. an 8 year old they t- up to girl 80. Yeah. to an 80 year old woman. Yeah. Women only have rights as long as men provide them. Now, didn't you have to fly out there? Yes. Didn't you have to get a rental yes. car? Yes. Didn't you have to stay in a hotel? Yes. Didn't you have to buy yourself food? Yep. And I had to all smoke some. Sh- and I had to it, smoke some garbage. All too. that shit, money. <laughs> but my point is, but my point is, it was insult to injury. The man missed out on a child's birthday. Then have to come out of his pipe. What no thing? But it's a it's the principle, people. I, you know, it's just you, you got snaps. I don't want to go it, to fucking Massachusetts. It, it's a the principle fuck? type of thing. You know, it's like going to court when you don't want to go to court. Like it doesn't feel good. You know, so you got these false charges, man. Money that could have been spent on your child yep. or your wife or what it have you. Definitely would have spent that. You know, and so you know you have a system that allows what we are talking about today, and it's on. Purpose. That could take us into the field of family law. I just told you a few minutes ago about a four and a half year divorce. And it was so much shit I went through because that system allowed a woman. That's why I said earlier, man, any other dude wouldn't wouldn't be here, man, because my ex, she was good. And I'm dealing with a brother right now. His his, his ex is, is, is good, man. Let me the stuff that man, I was hit with everything, man. Every single th- I mean, man, when you live your life consciously and, and righteous and you start hearing these things that you've only read about or saw in movies and rape and child molestation and domestic violence. Like what the like, what is this here? Like it really does something to you mentally. That's why a lot of dudes be messed up, man. They can't handle like divorce because the false charges, you know, and then for a lot of them, they don't have the money to fight. And then if they have an attorney. The attorney is not 100 percent because it's 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 a it's a fraternity. You know, mm-hmm. they're working with the other uh, lawyers and the judge as well, too. It's a system. They don't they don't care about you. If you think they do read the book called The Respondent. And I think uh, I think his name is Dale Ross or Dale Ellis. Read The Respondent. That book came out a few years ago. This dude was in Hollywood. Big house money. I mean, the number his wife and uh, the mother in law did on him was something else almost drove this dude to commit suicide jump off a damn freeway in los angeles that's how bad it was you know and this dude man he was in a, in a, in a better space than myself man he had the connections man i know you know alec uh what's his name uh, baldwin is not in people's good graces today but i mean this dude knew you know johnny depp alec baldwin the, you know producers you know fat crib used to be a millionaire before this thing happened to him you know, living the life and it was all snatched from him. Now, this took place before my divorce. You know, I didn't come up in life until like 2008. Well, in early 2000, this, he was balling. Yeah, he was balling when shit, I was just figuring things out, you know, in struggle mode days, you know. And it's like I look at myself where I am today compared to that dude. And I'm like, damn, I came out better than that dude. 
Why? The knowledge. I did my own case. I was pro per. That dude had an attorney and he got screwed. The biggest mistake you can make is thinking that an attorney is always going to bail you out or help you. He's spinning game. That, that's the biggest mistake that you can make. You know, when people ask me, why am I not afraid of going up against attorneys? It's because it boils down to the law. In my divorce, I had to tell the guardian ad litem. And yes, we had a guardian ad litem. My shit, it was just so foul. They ended up throwing in an attorney for my sons. But like I told that dude, his name was Jacobson. I said, sir, it's not about the judge. It's about the law. Uh, Mr. Mara, you might want to just, you know, kind of smile and suck it up and do this because she has mm-hmm. a lot of power and there's things she can do. I was like, no, she can't. And he looked at me. I said, she's not the law. She's a judge. She interprets the law. I am Ma'at Ra. Ma'at means law. I said, that woman is not the law. She is the interpreter of the law. And then I started hitting him with certain things. <laughs> I said, and if she don't do that, I'm going to recuse her behind pursuant to CCP, which is California Code of Civil Procedure, section 170.6. Her ass is gone. And I said, if she wants to try to hardball me, when I hit that CCP 170.6 on her behind, then I'm going to hit her behind with California Code of Civil Procedure, section 184, 1084, and 1085. And that's the writ of mandamus and the writ of prohibition. That will be her ass because that'll go to the appellate court. And then also quoted in California, we don't have the canon. We have the code of judicial ethics. I said, I'm going to hit her ass with 3B2 of the, of the California code of judicial ethics. Man, I just it was just a list of things, man, that Let I spat. the painter paint. You know, it, 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 I always say that thing. Let the painter paint. This man is showing you he's got that shit to memorize. Oh, it, it, it's, I'm like, dude, memorize. I'm like CCP section 170.6, man. I'm like CCP 1084, 1085. I'm, I'm going down the list like this is real stuff. It's there. And in the language, it says shall. I'm like, sir, with all due respect, shall is mandatory. May is permissive in law. May is permissive. You may file such and such. Shall is mandatory. You shall file it. I'm like, sir, it says shall. And it's applicable to her as a judge, because if she doesn't do her job, then I can go above her to the California Court of Appeals and get them to checkmate her for being errant. And I did file a uh, CCP section 170.6 and I recused. I lost a whole damn year. She was a female too. female judge. lost a whole year dealing with a judge who try to adjudicate on emotion <laughs> rather than logic well, and law. A typical, a woman, shocking. A woman, it was, it was 110% emotional. Now the dude Jacobson, that was her friend. They knew each other back in New York in the Bronx. So he's like, Mr. Mott Rod, you're from South Central Los Angeles. She's from the Bronx. And so we got this little battle thing here. I'm like, dude, it ain't no damn battle. This is law, you know, but he gave me the heads up. He was like, it's, 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 you know, we got this little personal thing going on here. They don't want to fuck I, with you. I, I said, dude, she's biased against me. Oh, Mr. Mara, I don't know. You guys just got this thing, Bronx, South Central Los Angeles. He came mm-hmm. to court. We went to the men's restroom. There was a break. We mm-hmm. went to the men's restroom. Right by each other, right? We're micturating or urinating. And he says, just, he's just like this. He's like, Mr. Mara. I'm like, yeah, you're right. She's biased against you. Now, this was her friend of 30 freaking years, man. And he told me that in the John. You're right. This woman, my friend that I've known for 30 something years, she's biased against your interests. And that's all I needed to hear. I was like, you know what? She's gone. And she was biased against my interests when I was pursuing contempt of court against my ex for 16 separate cases of violating the court order dealing with quote unquote child visitation. Now you don't visit your children. You spend time with them, but that's, you know, legal terminology. You don't visit. She your, was trying you, to you, ring you, you up. Absolutely. You visit people in jail, in the hospital. You don't visit your, your offspring, but we could deal with that, you know, another time. But this woman was trying to help out the ex-wife, a female, of female course. judge, of ex course. is female. Of I said, ain't that a bitch? Mm-hmm. And the guardian ad litem told me, Mr. Mara, you are right. And I 86 her behind. And you won. And absolutely. And look, the, the day I got rid of her was in December. The, the woman came on the scene in January because they don't let you have the same attorney mm-hmm. in divorce court. You, you get about four, five, six, seven, eight different attorneys. Mm-hmm. So it's like starting a case over again because they're new. They don't know anything. Well, anyway, in December, I, rec- I, I got rid of that woman in 
December and we're in court on a Friday and it was her attorney, the ex-wife, her attorney and myself. Man, we were the last two people in the courtroom. And so the attorney said, yeah, your honor, what's up? The Marra case. I mean, this woman turns around, like rolls her eyes and she's like, oh. I recuse myself pursuant to Mr. Mott Ross. I recuse her. Hurt her. It fucked her up. That must have hurt her. I, she rolled her eyes. She was losing sleep at night. She I recuse myself. to ring you up. But she was waiting to ring you up all those months. She, 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 and thought she, she, could. she thought she could. Of she thought she could. But let me tell you, I got to say this. When it first started, it started on the wrong foot. Because she thought I was the typical pro per litigant. And the first thing out of her mouth when we first met, what she was not supposed to do, she says, Mr. Mara, Mr. Madra, let me tell you, be very careful of what you tweet on social media. And so I stood up. I was like, whoa, whoa, hold on, your honor. Hold, whoa, whoa, what's up? What happened to due process of law? You do know that the California Court of Appeals said that due process of law guarantees a fair tribunal and a fair judge. You are accusing me of doing something and you have no proof. You have jumped over the threshold of the California Code of Evidence or the Evidence Code. And she's done. You just can't say shit like that. What? Look, we have something called best defense. We have something called second defense. We have something called uh, the hearsay rule. You know, we have opinion, you know, we have all authenticity. You have to authenticate a document mm -hmm. being real. We got all of these thresholds that you have to get over in order to introduce evidence. So how the hell are you going to take something from the opposition who's a female and run with it like I'm like I did it? I'm like. Somebody else could have logged in and do that. I could pay somebody to log in on social media. Imagine, how do you know I did it? Imagine how many people she rung up oh, before I, you came man, along. Man, bro, I, I, saw, I saw it, though. Man, I saw a lot of stuff in family court. See, I'm the type of person, I hang out in court even when I don't have a case. That's how I've learned. Yeah, like like, like a fan with popcorn and shit I'm like that? I'm going to sit right behind the bar and I watch. I, I, I listen to how they talk, how they walk, what have you. And then when it's my day, I have a briefcase. I'm in a nice suit. Look here, man. I've had attorneys ask me, who was I representing? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm pro per. I'm, I'm not even a lawyer. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just pro per. I have the briefcase, the suit, what have you. You don't know the difference. You don't know who's the attorney, who's the pro per. Because I play the game and I play it to win. Now, I'm not anti-sovereignty, but, you know, I could give you some things that will open your eyes on the so-called sovereignty. Remember you're, that you're, FBI you're, story? You're, you don't play with that sovereign citizen stuff? No. Okay. Come, come on. A now. lot of people are on that sovereign citizen. I've had people no, no, yeah, tell me on the I, phone, I, I, you get pulled over, just tell them you're a sovereign no, no, citizen. No, no, no. That's bullshit. I, 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 me, you know what works no. for me, though? Yo, officer, you have uh, my birthday. What's yours? And 14, and no, I got pulled over 14 times in the past 10 years, 13 I got let off just because I read them like a book. Man, let me tell you something. You're going to be better off. And I don't with, even have any fucking tits. You're going to be better off with numerology <laughs> than fucking around with that sovereignty stuff. I'm, I'm telling you from first hand experience, it's a moneymaker, people. It doesn't work. I have the document. There's a book that they passed out to the judges in the early 2000s. And the, the book codifies all the arguments to shoot down people who come with the sovereign argument. This book is real and I have it. it took me a while to get it, but I finally got my hands on it. And see, I've always been blessed, man. I, I've just always been fortunate to be in the right place at the right time and to meet the right people. Now, I'm at a meeting with uh, citizen Richard James McDonald, right? This is a dude, white nationalist dude, but the dude is tight with California. He's tight in law in general, in general, but California law in particular. Citizen Richard James McDonald. So I go to one of his function in Burbank or Studio City. And you have no problem going to see a white nationalist. No, 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 no. The, the, the dude and I were cool, man. I mean, I said chop it for <laughs> hours, man. Like I look, I told you about the story, right? In uh, Delaware, mm -hmm. right? Dude was like, "Look, I'm racist. I don't like black people. I don't like Jews. I don't like uh, Asians." His wife was Asian too, <laughs> but he said, "I don't like." I mean, he just went down the line. I'm like, "How, how do you not like Asians if your wife's Asian?" Look, I'm just telling you what the dude said, wow. man. And I'm like, "Okay, that's that's cool here. I'm here to get this wow. tea machine here." Man, that dude did not let me leave until like five o'clock p.m. Man, was hey, I got this here. I got I'm buying some land here. Would you like to come on uh, on board and? 
I was like, damn, the dude started saying he didn't like black people. He didn't like this and that. I'm like, all right, no, cool. No, let me he, just. He, he, let, he was okay with black people. It was the ends he didn't like. Yeah, but I, I, I found that I'm like, you know what? It's the intelligence, you know. And he, yeah, he ended up telling me that. Yeah, he's yeah, he's okay. like, you know, you're different, you know. <laughs> but um, I have no problem learning from anybody. I'll sit down with the goddamn devil if it's about some damn knowledge. That's why I, I study pornology. Well, I study Luc- evil. Lu- Lu- Lucifer, even yeah, star, you'll yeah, fucking take advice from him. Yeah, I listen to anybody that's going to give me some knowledge that I can use in this goddamn matrix to benefit to Hudi Ma'adra for purposes of light and for purposes of righteousness. That's why I studied. Man, why do you watch all them horror movies and what have you? I used to study horror movies to study evil. I always say that I want to look into the eyes of evil. I want to study the psychology of evil. What makes evil people tick? I need to know what to do in case I have an encounter with Michael Myers as or Jason Voorhees, what have you. You know, that's how my mind works. And so if I'm going to defend myself against something, I have to know how it works. You can't defend yourself against that which you have no knowledge of. Knowledge is key, man. I don't know when people are going to get that. Ac- acquiring knowledge, the acquisition of knowledge and then applying it is going to make all the difference in your life. I'm from nothing, people. I'm 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 from Zilch. I'm from the the streets, the gutter. And nobody gave me a goddamn handout. I'm not a part of no secret society. I did my own due diligence. I cultivated this when other people would not do it. And it got me here. I never thought I would live to see a million dollars, which ain't nothing, by the way. No disrespect, because if you ain't got it, go for it. But I never thought I would live to see a million dollars, man. Coming from like where I'm coming from, man, there were days with twenty dollars we felt rich. Twenty bucks made you rich. Twenty huh? bucks for the for the whole family. Ooh. For the whole family. I mean one day my aunt my auntie loaned us twenty dollars, my little brother lost the money. And I it's we were all just dejected, man. I mean just twenty dollars, huh? We had some I'm talking about lights turned off, the water turned off. Like we had hard times, man. Subscription television. Twenty dollars. Pops couldn't even pay the, the the subscription television bill. So you turn it on, it's got a little line. You can't even see the movie, man. You know? And so you go to channel fifty two and see if you can watch it. You know? I mean just hard freaking times, man. You know, you open up the cupboards, man, nothing but oxygen. <laughs> Air molecules, man. You know, refrigerator. You open up the refrigerator, just a little box of Arm and Hammer baking soda, man. Let me, let I know what hard times are. Let, I come from that. Let me ask you a question. Since you say you're a horror movie expert, um, Jason versus Michael Myers, who's winning? Michael Myers is winning. He's gonna take out Jason. See, they they're both the same, right? Could like never die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you deal with Michael Myers, uh-huh. man, you're dealing with Michael was more numb. You're dealing with more of a numbness with the Michael Myers. Halloween is my all time favorite horror movie like uh-huh. that. It's something about that movie that did something to me in 1980 when I first saw it, because it took two years for on TV to show it. And so Halloween triggered something in me. So I began to study how Hall- back. Right? <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it triggered something in me. So I began. That's when I really got into horror, which led me to the metaphysics of horror. And there's a scene in Halloween, too, where Dr. Loomis is really dropping science about like, you know, Sam Hain and, mm-hmm. and Michael Myers and evil. There's nothing there. What have you? And it's like, man, there's really something to, to evil. They can't feel, you know, they're, they're soulless. They have no soul. What have, like this shit was just clicking. And so later on, when I get into the metaphysics of horror, I'm like, wow, like, you know, you really got to give certain producers props because the evil and the darkness that we have inside of ourselves, they have projected it on the big screen. And so we feel safe because all the shit that Jason do and Michael Myers do, we got it in us as well. You see, but we feel more safe watching on the screen, watching other people act out certain things. Ask a mother, could she kill for her children? Of course she could, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, and, and if they ever try to do another lockdown, they're probably going to see that. May, hopefully. I, I don't really know. I don't have, you have more faith in American people than I do. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, getting back I, I, to the it metaphysics. It only takes 3%, brother. It, yeah, only true. takes 3%. That's what happened That's with the American Revolution, Revolution you know? Only but takes yeah, 3%. But, but, yeah, but the American Revolution, they didn't have social media, you know, they didn't have no drugs. And it would be really interesting to see. But that is true. 4% of the American citizens during that time fought. 4%. 
and, 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 and came up with the nation, just 4%. And then when I learned that, that was, you know, I was like, damn, that's pretty profound. Like, damn, I thought it was like half, at least half the population. It was only yeah. 4%. The only difference now is only uh, 4%. the government has F 15. It's a lot of it's a lot of differences. Patriot missiles. Yeah, they got the intelligence, and it's going to be very difficult. The only way personally, uh, I can't. A a, a citizenship can rise up is with pockets of resistance. They it it can't be direct confrontation. But before pockets of resistance, before you had the American Revolution, you had Thomas Paine first and foremost. Thomas Paine was writing. And he was writing things about liberty and freedom. He was educating the people. So the founding fathers knew that they had to educate those farmers, mm-hmm. you know, because they were mostly like farmers, but there were other occupations, but most of them were farmers. So they weren't no, like literate. They were and wasn't working and, and, religious oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. people. I'm not, so I'm you not can't fucking them. do it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm not knocking them all. I'm just making a point that, mm-hmm. you know, they, they weren't, you know, like Thomas Jefferson into the books and writing and things of that nature, but they were educated. So, Thomas Paine came out with the book on liberty, uh, common sense, things that galvanize the people, their thoughts, you know, that revolutionary spirit, revolutionary thoughts. Thomas Paine did that before they could have a physical revolution. So the revolution first took place in the mind of those who revolted. Mm-hmm. OK, it, it, it took place in the mind. So that's why I say today, personally, like. You know, I'm I, I'm I am unable to see it right now based upon the patterns. And I go way back, way back. Like Jordan Maxwell, my former buddy, he transitioned a couple of years ago. Real good friends with Jordan Maxwell. And Jordan and I used to chop for hours just like this, man. We chopped you, you, four, five you, you, hours. Jordan's not alive anymore. He's not alive. He transitioned about two years ago. Jordan they, they, is my they, buddy. They, they I, took him out. I, I met Jordan in 1995. And we were like, we clicked just. I mean, Jordan was, he was the Korean soul. He's one of the OGs. Jordan is the dude from day one, we clicked. And so in the 2000s, we hooked up early 2000. As a matter of fact, Jordan was into the whole sovereignty. You know, Jordan was the one who brought the information my way. Mm -hmm. He was damn good at it. But I did learn that, you know, Jordan, he had the knowledge, but he never applied it. He got one sued. Of those, one of those. Yeah, I hate to say that, but it's the truth, you know, because I'm like, Jordan, why didn't you fight it? Because Jordan was one of the most knowledgeable men I'd ever met in my life. Dude is a walking li- was a walking library. Kids? No. That, that, so, he, so, 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 he, he, so even though the man was educated, he, he, did, he failed. He, he, he did. didn't have he, a wife he, and kids, and, brother. And I think, he, I think he, he, he knew that, you know, he was mad at David Icke and, you know, and certain people from certain studios that never paid him money, you know. It was just a lot. And I was like, you know, that David Icke's making uh, accusations like that on Twitter, too. Like people don't pay him. People don't do anything. Yeah. Well, I, I yeah. Jordan was he was like that on 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 David. This is not rumors, of, you know, mm-hmm. starting anything it, it's, it's documented, you know, and I'm telling you from, you know, firsthand, you know, settings, environment, being in the same environment with uh, Jordan Maxwell, that these people copied him or i think jordan said like stole or, or what have you yeah that's that's the he word was he like they, these people all stole from me including you know david yeah, but a, anyway a, as a numerologist i can I contest that's what people do because i pretty much educated these people on tiktok okay. at yeah. the very beginning of the year what numerology is mm. blah 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 now they're saying i'm not a 33 mm. now they're going saying i'm fucking doing this doing that <laughs> see this is the problem npcs will always turn on you. Hmm. People who have no soul have no loyalty. Again, there is a reason why love, L-O, and loyalty, L-O, go hand in hand. Because if you do not show any loyalty, you're not capable of love. Yeah, Flat the fuck out. Man, Jordan used to say that all the time. I'm like, Jordan, why don't you get paid? Jordan, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And I mean, man, he was just a boogaboo, just a jolly so, so, dude, so, so, kind of so like the, Santa Claus. The, this, this, is, this is what it is. Mm-hmm. Some people are all about that bag. Some people are all about spirituality. Both will fail. Both will you, fail. You got to be you balanced. You have to be balanced. You, 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 you got to be this man. You got to be balanced. Are the top of our profession. You got to be balanced. He's the top people. guy in holistic medicine. I'm the top guy in numerology. You got to be balanced. But guess what? We got that bag too. We're not you, over here getting yeah. taken advantage of. We're not over here helping all these other people while we're fucking sleeping on yeah. our hotel bed. That's not us. That's never gonna be us. Yeah. And I'm gonna have to tell you guys something. One of the under 
printing things I always teach people is capitalism. Yeah. Capitalism is the best system available right now. And honestly, you got to learn it. You, you got to learn it, people. You have to. There was a point, you know, it's like I'm not studying that stuff there, man. Forget that is political, what have you. People, it doesn't make any sense to be here in the United States of America and to not know capitalism. It's a ism, I-S-M, which means the system, theory, or doctrine of. That means you have homework to do. I was broke. Now, I didn't turn to crime. Nobody gave me a hand up. I used my mind. I figured it out, and I got on the other side. And it's easier today than it used to be you know, in the past, computers, you know, technology, it, 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 it's that helped a, a whole lot. Yes. But the most important thing was just like like the mindset, because even before there was computer getting my mind right, it's like, OK, I'm claiming to not have any money, but I got money for junk food. You know, I got money for bullshit. I got money for jewelry, what have you. So people have money. There's a saying they're Jordans. Yeah, there's a saying that we used to say back in the 90s, and it was pertaining to, you know, black Americans. And we would say this amongst ourselves. Mm -hmm. We would say that black folks beg for what they need and they buy what they want. So if it's something <laughs> they needed, they would beg for it. <laughs> beg for what they need, but then they buy freely, voluntarily what they want. Not what they needed, but what they wanted. And so, and that spoke to me because I was that dude going to the Compton Swap meet, man, you know, I was making money in, in the late 80s, uh, doing my thing, you know, coming up, you know, from my resale, I had a resale hustle at uh, the movie theater and the walk-in job, man. you know, uh, and it was good money, but I would squander it, man. I was buying Fila jumpsuits and gazelle glasses and oh, getting so my you, jewelry you, you, you done. You were in and, the Matrix. Of course. You were in. Of course. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. And this is why I tell people there's no excuse. They say, Tootie, you don't have mercy. That's, I hear that all the time. You have no mercy. You have no mercy. You have no. You would have to study my life, my, my, my background. There is no excuse. And especially today, we didn't have a goddamn internet back in the 80s and the 90s. Everything is at your thumb. It, it, it amazes, Everything is it's, amazing. It's, this it's, thing, it's, it's, you can pretty much find almost anything you need on this phone. All you gotta do is it's type disposal. it in. All you have to do is type it in. You, it's people at your disposal. Will go and pay fifty, sixty, a hundred k at, at your disposal. Harvard, Ivy League universities for this information right now. They can get for free, and they want to talk about. White supremacy is keeping them down. Mm -mm. They want to talk about this is a male toxic to society. Mm -mm. These so, people are out there fucking minds. Oh, BS. You got to get your mind straight, people, because see, that used to be me. That you, when you embrace that, man, you, you internalize it. And so What's you're in, you, you, you're you're in anger mode. You're like you're you're mad at white people, and you're like in the hood. The white people are in your mind, and you may see them once you go off the hood. If that was the case. Because a lot of people in the hood, they don't go anywhere. Hell, they barely leave the county. You know, hell. Only time they see a white man is a cop, right? Is, is a cop. Yeah. You know, I got pulled over 12 times in a one year period, man. Damn. 12 times. I was like, I, you know, I've had about 50. <laughs> you dark skinned, though. I, 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 was, I, was, I had about 50 run ins with law enforcement <laughs> my entire life, federal, state, and, and what you call 50? About 50, brother. God with the feds, damn. the state, the county, you the city. You don't have a criminal record, though. No, heck no, I don't have a criminal record. And they're still fucking. So, with you. but no, no, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. And this is not to let anybody off the hook. This is to teach people how to navigate the matrix. That's what I'm always teaching people. You have to navigate, you can't take shit personal. This is a game and you got to learn to play it. Now, when I was being pulled over, man, I had the jewelry curl. I had the, the T-shirt, the gold chain, what have you. <laughs> it was the stigma, right? You had Put NWA. Some you up, had Put some pictures no, I can't, up. I can't do that. No, I'm not, 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 not going to do that. <laughs> but anyway, um, the energy, man. You know, I'm bumping, you know, uh, fuck the police. You know, I'm bumping cop killer. It was energy. You see, and when I got into conscious rap, Paris and, you know, Cam, you know, NC Rim started rapping positive, X Clan, what have you, things changed. See, it's all about the mindset. It's all about the energy. It's all about the frequency. Repetition of a message constitutes mental programming, man. So if you just listen to gangster rap, you're programming yourself. It could even be heavy metal. You know, if it's talking about suicide and kill mother, what have you, repetition of a message constitutes mental programming. So when I started listening to Chuck D, Public Enemy, things started changing. KRS-One, you know, things started changing. 
you know. Then I got into uh, R&B, you know. Then I got into the blues and the jazz. I even got into classical music, man. All these changes. Mozart or Beethoven? All, both. These hands did it all. Nobody came and here you go, what have you. This mind and these hands. That's, that's the whole key. And it changed my life. And the number one thing I wanted was revenge against the California Highway Patrol, man. Because the last time before I became <laughs> I legally that. astute. No, I wanted to get there. They got It was $700. I was ignorant. It was 90s. Mm-hmm. They got my ass, man. And the, the phony pseudo bail was $700. And that shit stung back then, man. It stung. That's like my... The last thing I'm fucking going to do, I'm going to get you guys back. Man, don't know how, but this is a law of attraction. Don't know how, but I'm going to do it. And man, that came true, man, in 2001. Even though it wasn't the highway patrol, it was the police department. Man, that was my first time defending myself in traffic court. Talk about Bruce Lee. Oh, my goodness, man. That judicial Jeet Kune Do that I created. Yeah. Oh, my, it was awesome. As a matter of fact, I thought the sheriff and the police were about to get into it, man. Because <laughs> the judge was white, the cops, the, the sheriff was white, and the police uh, officer, he was white, and I'm black, right? But I'm crushing his, I set him up on the streets, you know, when he was uh, writing the ticket. Mm-hmm. You know, come on, Mr. Marvin, you can tell me. I was like, uh, I have to reserve my Fifth Amendment right, you know. Uh, come on, sir, you can just tell me. Where you on your phone? Officer, respectfully, I decline to answer that question on the grounds of my Fifth Amendment right. Mm-hmm. And so I'm setting him up. He has to write, on, the, the, write all this information on the back of the ticket, on the obverse of the ticket. Set him up. Bloop, bloop, bloop. And he gave me a copy. And um, he, had, he, gave me for, he got me for three infractions. He got me for three infractions. Because I know law, California Penal Code Section 19.7 is the statute for discovery. So I issued discovery. City of Glendale. And I got a copy. In Glendale, they record you. That little thing they hold up mm-hmm. that, that's on, on their shoulder, mm-hmm. it, it records. There's audio. And so they, they, they recorded the entire encounter. I got a copy of that. And I got a copy of the back of the ticket, the obverse of the ticket. And he had three paragraphs. I took all three apart. I was ready for his ass. Man, I went to court. This was 2011, last time I got a ticket. Went to court, man. And this never happened before in the past. You haven't haven't been pulled over in 12 years? No. It's it's over with. It's done. It's done. Um, I play my part now. So, But anyway, this has never happened before. In the midst of interrogating the police officer, the judge stopped. He said, Mr. Mottra, hold on. And he leaned down to the officer and he said, no offense, Officer Fletcher. I'm going to find Mr. Mottra not guilty. I wasn't even through with my interrogation of the officer. But the judge knew I was embarrassing that dude. It was embarrassing. I took this dude to part. This is what I attempt to say to my people, black Americans on social media. And I catch so much hell for it. You know, your coon, your jigaboo, your all the stuff here. And it, it, it's just like, wow, like, you know, Tootie, you're going to have to brace yourself to let these things happen because they're not going to listen to reason. So what goes on is going to have to continue to go on. You have to become legally astute. There is no excuse. The law is a weapon and a tool simultaneously. It can fix things. In what way? It can defend you. It can fix things like, it, let's it, just say if well, I have well, an well, issue. Well, let, me, let me back over one second. Okay. It can fix things in this country. You're not talking about other countries. Because they have the, law. Yeah, they but they're very, very, they're, they're very, uh, much more it, corrupt it, 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 in other it, countries. It, it, so it, it, so well, I'm just making sure you're talking about America, maybe Western society. You're not talking about Zimbabwe. Listen, you're not, uh, I, I'm just making sure. Listen, all law offers remedy and recourse. Okay, all even law. Even in Iraq. All, even in Iraq. E- even, yes, all law. North Korea. All law offers remedy and recourse. Okay, that's at its root. Mm-hmm. Now, is it implemented? No, it's the same thing in the United States of America. We have a United States Constitution that prohibits taxation based on our heads, right? 
It's in the Constitution. If you're going to tax the American people, it must be pursuant to the population. Correct. The enumeration of the census, right? Yes. But are we paying taxes today? Is it predicated upon the population of a state compared to other states, right? California, Texas, Florida, large populations, right? Correct. So if the government, the federal government had to raise one trillion dollars, the bulk of that one trillion would come from taxpayers. But from what states, though? From Oklahoma or California? California. Is Oklahoma going to pay more than than California or Florida or Texas or New York? Of course not. Okay, because we got to break it down based on population, right? So that means out of one trillion, California would probably have to pay uh, 100 billion, right? Seems legit. Yeah, it was 10%, right? I think think California is 10% of the nation's Mm -hmm. uh, population. So California would have to pay 10% of the one trillion, right? If my math is correct, we're looking at a hundred billion dollars. Then you got Florida, New York, what have you, you know, maybe 60, 70, 30, what have you. And then the other 46 states. Now, based on the constitution, that's how we're supposed to be taxed. We're not taxed like that. That's the same thing that goes on in Zimbabwe, in Iraq, Iran. Look, all nations are corporations. The movie network, 1976, the movie network tell you, I think it was a Ned Beatty's character. There are no more countries, only corporations. They're all the same. Is that 100% true? Yes, it is. Because Not 99, just 100? It's 100%. All, all, corpora- uh, all countries are corporations. All of them, Iraq, Iran, Russia. They have corporate names. Like a Russia is a country. What, then what, you have Soviet Union what, is a corporate name. What, so What if you, they don't have a... a, a bank basically backed by the Rothschilds. It, still- it, it, it doesn't matter. They're, they're still a corporation. Okay. They're just not a part of, you know, the, the, the outfit. You, but they have banks. All co- If you're a country, you're going to have a bank. Correct. Now, as far as a central bank, Rothschilds own what have they. I think there's like four or five that don't. Iran, but, but those North places Korea. are, but, they, but they, those are corporations though. They're all corporations. How do you know? Look, are they members of the World Health Organization? There's 201 nations. Why was the lockdown so successful in this push for the vaccine? These were World Health Organization members. You know what? When you deal with the IMF. No, 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 no. You're exactly right. Because I always told people it didn't matter if you're in socialist Canada, capitalist America, a a mob run Russia, communist China. It don't matter. They all shut you down. They all told you to fucking get the vax. Absolutely. Absolutely. You saw the Russians in on it. You saw the Koreans in on it. The Americans, the English, the French. It was like, yo, what's what's going on here? It's that membership into that world body, World Health Organization, IMF, the World Bank. That's how they get, you know, these these corporations to be a part of the outfit and to do certain things to the citizens. It's all about controlling the citizens, man. It's just. What goes on in America goes on in Russia and Germany it, and other places. But it people, is but different. But people it's, are listening right now and okay. saying, wait a second, we got more laws here. I mean, we got, you more, got more laws here. We got more laws, but we also got more freedoms. I can call Joe Biden a fucking pedophile. No one's going to fucking kick in that door and fucking take me off mm-hmm. the jail. No mm-hmm. one's going to. If I go to in Russia and say the same That's thing about your Putin, constitution. if I say the fucking same thing about Assad in Syria, I might get a fucking bullet in me. Let the constitution change and it'll be the same thing. See, it has to be enforced, though. That true. But first of all, it has to be on paper and then you have to enforce that. So when we talk about freedom of speech, that's actually in our founding document. You see, these constitutions are made over. Why do you think um, there's something called a bayonet constitution pertaining to Hawaii? When the committee, the so-called committee of public safety put a gun to the head of the king of Hawaii and said, look, you're going to issue this new constitution. You know, what's that, fun, you know what's funny about that? The last leader of an uh, independent uh, kingdom of Hawaii was a Lily, woman. Lily, was Lily, a woman. Lily, Lily Quill. And they say, this is what happens when you have women in fucking leadership positions. The country ceases to exist. Let's talk about Korea. Who was the last leader <laughs> of a united Korea? A yeah. woman. Who we, was the last leader of the Ming Dynasty in China? A woman. So you constantly have a pattern here. You have a woman in power, nation collapses. What does it say in, in the Quran about women in power? Quran? Per- what, what particular provision? 
Uh, you tell me that. You oh say well, book. I mean, just in, in in general, you know, you can call it sexist or what have you. You I know, that's re- that. it's relic. I mean, hell, it's really like that in the Bible as well, too. <laughs> really, what, what is more sexist, the Quran or the Bible, in your opinion? No, they're both the, they're both really saying the, the same thing. I mean, mm-hmm. what are the main? Differences? I would have to say that the Bible mm-hmm. is a little bit more sinister, pertaining. Um, to women, because you know the Quran does say, "Listen, don't kill your daughters," because you know the Arabs were mm-hmm. practicing infanticide. If it was a girl baby, they would bury it alive. Yeah, so but they have stoning in Islam too. Yeah, for for, for crime though, mm-hmm. you know, one of my favorite movies is the stoning of Saraya M, and uh, she was fraudulently set up though. But that's for penalty. But see, when you go to the scriptures, man, and Yahweh is telling you to, to kill people and rob and to go into other men's wives and shit like that. Yahweh is more gangster than Allah. You know, you know, my perspective on that. These are alien gods and they're gangbanging yeah, it's about territory and what have you. You know, it may offend certain people, you Who know, it, but I, know, I know, but it's in the safe space. You know, but when we start talking about Bible Quran, you know, I, I look at it. I come from a different but you know, you perspective. I, I've, I've you, studied it. You've, you've been a Christian. Oh, yeah. I've been, I've been, I've been all Muslim. of that. Yeah. So I've been what a Jew. were you first? I was, what I was, were you first? I, I started off Christian, Jew, Muslim. OK. Did, did, do you believe Islam is superior to Judaism and Christianity? What do you mean superior? Uh, I'm asking you because you studied that one last. They're all, they're all like in line in, in chain. Uh, they, they're they're called the Abrahamic faiths uh christianity okay, let me, let islam me, let judaism me, let me rework Superior, that question what do you mean like better or let, moral? Let, let me let me ask you this what unit has a better way of keeping women in check oh without a doubt it's going to be islam okay. you know but like the bible you know christianity and judaism they have their 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 strong spots or areas I, I, islam I, I, has I, theirs I, too and they, they see, have their weaknesses I, I see churches with the lgbt flag i see zionists promoting but, but, okay, it, uh, promoting okay. homosexuality i don't see that shit with islam right and that's true 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 now you have to remember over here in this corporation which is called the united states it's no longer the united states of america mm-hmm. that's the that's the official name the corporate name is united states inc Mm-hmm. Right. Like Russia is the official name of that country. But the corporate name is Soviet Union, Union of Soviet Socialist Republic. Mm-hmm. This is this is why country. There are two names. Right. What's the difference between uh, England and Great Britain? You see, England there's is a country. Four, four, there's four nations in Great Britain. Correct. Correct. Mm-hmm. But England in history, you you hear about England. Yeah, you don't hear about Great Britain. You hear about England. Yes. Right. England is a country, Correct. but Great Britain is a corporation. Correct. Britain uh, or British means covenant man or contract man. You see, this is it's a corporate term. You see, civil court, civil society. Civil means contract. When you're civilly dead, that means that you can't contract anymore. You can't vote. You know what I'm saying? It's, you With can't get a job. 19. You know, you can't do all those things. So you're you're civilly dead. So. Uh, studying words from a legal perspective is very important. See, when you go to court and they say, uh, Mr. Grinberg, uh, how fast were you driving? You were like, I, I wasn't, you know, driving faster than the speed limit. You just dropped dime on yourself. You just admitted that you were driving. And in a court of law, driving does not mean what it means outside of a court of law. Driving is a commercial term. This is how they make money from us. This is how they can impound our quote unquote vehicles. This is how they can tell us to put a child restraint seat in the car and on a particular street. Don't go more than 25 miles per hour. What have you see? It's all about the words word control. Like I tell people I travel. I steer or I travel. I don't I'm not involved in commerce. Are you a traveling man? I'm a traveling man. I'm not a driving man. I'm a traveling. man. I travel. I, I, basi- see, and, and, I, I basically asked you if you're a Freemason. Oh, no, no, no. You know, when it comes to Freemasons, <laughs> but uh, that, yeah, that is a question, yeah, but no, you get, no, it's just so much that be going on up here. It's like, you, you. you can catch I me, I, I but no, I'm not, you got me. Sure you, because some people over here will be like, that, oh, that, but, but that is true. But that is true. Hold on, dude, because we got to fucking pretend we're Masons now too, all in secret. Get this all on society. 
But no, that's true because my father, you know, he's like, yeah, you know, your grandfather Bub was a, a traveling man, what have you. And mm-hmm. so I haven't heard that like in a long time. Mm-hmm. But that is that is that's Masonic. That, yeah, that, that is. But hell no, Freemason, what have you. It's like I am Ma'at. I took the name Ma'at for a reason. Before you had a so-called Freemason, you had Ma'at, you had law. This is why we are controlled with law. We are controlled these days by all law. That's why, you know, Muslims are all praises to Allah. Mm-hmm. I, say Allah, the same, Allah. I, I say the same thing, all praises is due to all law, you know, but true law, ma'at, not this pseudo stuff we have today, your statutes, your mm-hmm. policies, your mandate, law, when you look at the etymological root of the word law, it means to lie in a fixed state. These people change laws like it ain't nothing. Like now, I'm, I'm, assisting, I'm assisting my daughter right now in a case uh, dealing with arbitration. Now, when she signed her contract to work in 2020, California was against compulsory arbitration. California just changed the law in February of 2023. How do you can't change law? You can't change the law of attraction. You can't change the law of cause and effect. Only what we call God, supreme being, supreme intelligence can make law. Man cannot make law. Hell, is, man is can God, barely enforce is God benevolent? law. Is what? Is God benevolent? It depends on what you believe. It depends on what you believe. Everybody doesn't even believe in God, but you, these people can believe in benevolence without belief in God. I, I think you can be, you have to be an absolute moron to look outside and look at all this stuff and think that it doesn't, some God, some kind of higher power doesn't exist. Doesn't exist? No, it uh, does exist. You have to, you know, like all the, you have to, how do you look outside and say there's no God? But, but that's going to, I, I, I agree, but that's going to be subjective. And there are morons walking around here. They're called atheists. They don't believe in God. Mm-hmm. Perhaps until uh, they're about to get my, eaten by a shark and fallen overboard, or I, I, listen, I'm not praying to God no matter what. I, yeah, I, I don't. I, I don't pray I myself. Tell people, I don't pray to God. I serve God. Right. I, I, I believe that, that's which the makes sense. I, which, that, which, that, that, that's I, what Osho I, said. I don't think like you know God put his soldiers on here to fucking pray no no no. Hell I think no. he fucking put his soldiers on here to get things done. Um, the plebs can pray. Yeah, no, I haven't uh, prayed in, uh, since the early 2000s, maybe late 1990s or 2000s. But, but, but wait a second. You, you, you have a wife, you have a kid. You, what that got you, to do with anything? Money. What does that have, have to do with oh, anything? How, how, you're not praising God? No. I'm using my mind. Ah, I'm living righteous. I'm not, I'm not violate. Remember, I studied the cold. I, I don't violate uh, people and I don't violate property. So a Christian will say you're going to hell. A Muslim that's will their say perception. You're, that's you're, their say, opinion. Say, it will say you you're infidel. Mm-hmm. You're going to get fucking. Going, mm-hmm. I'm not sure what the Jews will say. Funny enough, I'm a Jew, but I'm right. not, everyone the, would say something is you're going to be punished. What would you say to them based upon their opinion? I'm like, OK, that's 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 great. Again, your perception is not my reality. You understand? I'm into universal law. Correct. Universal law. That means all things are going to be taken care of. You don't need somebody holding a sword. Right. And chopping off balls and doing all type of thing because they don't believe. Now, if it's a crime, you rape, kill, what have you, different story. But because you don't believe, your ears going to get cut off? Are you going to be imprisoned? You know, have property stolen now, they, from you? They've had, they've had stuff like that happen in history. It's quite who's common. To say, but who's to say that's from God, though? That's from man. The simple fact that you got over 4,000 religions lets you know that man created God. 4,000 religions. There's over 4,000 so religions more on religion, planet there's Earth. There's more religions than genders? So, exactly. Wow. And you, so you know God ain't going to confuse people. <laughs> no. Like Osho said, instead of being into God, he got off into godliness. Let me just be, you know, like God, godly. Let me get so, off into so godliness. You, so you believe it's more important to actually just be a good person than to actually go out there and pray? Absolutely. I see. Why would I, why I, I, I've asked the moms, I've asked priests, I've had rabbis this, and some of them say that uh, none of that other stuff matters unless you pray. That's their opinion. That's that, their that, opinion. That's what, that's what they say. God is. See, let me tell they, they, they say God is a jealous God, and if you don't that's show, human show attributes, jealousy is a human okay, attribute. So, so, so that's not true then. No, that's an opinion. You don't, you, don't, you don't believe God is a jealous God, even though it says that in the Bible. Jealous of who? I, I mean, his script. worship. He wants your worship. That's what they keep telling me. If you're a gangster God, if you're an alien, but we talk about the supreme being, like mm-hmm. jealous. That seems like a uh, negative your Lord, drink. Am a, am a, am a, am a, jealous am a, seem like a, a negative drink? That that doesn't. 
it, the Bible says God is not a respecter of persons. So how are you going to be, you know, have a God that's jealous? God don't mm-hmm. respect people. Okay. Who and what is God going to be jealous of? Okay. You create everything, and then there's something in your creation that you're going to be jealous of. It's idiotic to me, in my opinion. That's idiotic. Uh, let's use some words, and uh, you tell me what you think now. Um, you cannot basically spell the word Bible without the word lie inside. True. What do you think that's actually telling us? That within the Bible, there are lies. The Bible is a book mixed with truth and falsehood. Mm-hmm. And the people get confused. So how, do you, they will, how do you find what's true and what isn't? You have to study. You have to get off into what is called exegesis. You see, you have to be able to dig deep. Uh, there's something called hermeneutics and there's something called exegesis. And so you have to apply what I call exegesis hermeneutics, hermeneutics which is a technique. You, have, you can't take things at face value. You have to go under. Like when we say understanding, mm-hmm. you have to go under. The truth is always buried deep. What has value is always deep. The roots. Is, is, is hidden, right? The pearl is in the, in the oyster, mm-hmm. deep in the sea, hidden, right? It has value, right? Pearls have value, right? Where's the gold at, right? Where's the, the diamonds? Things on planet Earth that have value are deep. You got to go deep within. You have to dig. You have to dig. And most people don't do that. They take things at face value. So this is why you have the esoteric and you have the exoteric. You see, you have endogenous and exogenous, inner, outer, inner, outer, metaphysics. You see, you have metaphysics above the physic or the physical. And most people, they only get the they get the exoteric. They don't get the esoteric. So certain Christians will see a statue of Mary and they'll bust their little ritual driving down the street. You see them all the time, especially the Latinos or the Hispanics who are very, you know, religious uh, people, uh, Catholics, if you will. Mm -hmm. Uh, I see a lot of they could be gangbangers, man. They bloop, bloop, bloop when they buy a Roman Catholic church. So. uh, Where am I going with this? Yeah, about that the this podcast, you get yeah, it, right? you know, you, And all of a sudden, you lose your train of thought. Yeah, no, we're really, getting old, brother. No, no, it's, no, no, no. It's just <laughs> having a lot in, 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 in your mind. I was going somewhere with that about the uh, the Roman Catholics, what have you. But uh, I'll get back to it. Okay. Uh, dealing with religion. Uh-huh. Let me just say this about dealing with religion. Religion is a belief system. It's predicated upon personal belief. It is subjective. It, it, it is. Not it, 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 it is no, it, because truth is su- truth also is subjective. No, well, how can truth be subjective? There's only one truth. There's universal truth, and then you have one the subjective plus one's truth. Always equal two. That's that's, ma- that's mathematics. And you, if you no, want to say that's, that's, that's true, that's a truth. Yeah, but that's, it's also you mathematics. You, you so we could say that. I know, but what I'm saying so is, so it can't be subjective. So some truth well, is subjective. I just said that is there's universal. Okay. Okay. And then you also have subjective because okay. there were things. Well, hold, hold on, hold on, brother, hold on, hold on. See, that's how I've lost my train of thought. Uh, listen, twenty. There were things twenty years ago that I believed in mm-hmm. that I no longer believe in today, and I would have killed you Example. for those things. When, like when Example. I was when I was a Muslim, you fuck with Farrakhan, you're dead. If I insulted Louis Farrakhan, you, you're, you're throwing hands right away. You back back uh, then, because I, I believe I was like 19, 20, early 20s. I believe that that man was the Messiah. I believe that man was holy, righteous, could do no wrong, what have you. And, now, and you fuck with. I don't believe that. Now. But see, that's my thing. Back then, mm. it was the truth that Farrakhan is the Jesus that the, that the Bible is talking about. If you remember the nation of Islam, like that is your truth. Master Farah Muhammad was God in person. That was our truth. I believed in that, you know, 20 something years ago what do you in think, 2020, what 2020 do you think about him now. I, I'm, that's, I'm, 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 I'm doing my best to get there. <laughs> I'm trying, brother. I no longer mm-hmm. believe in what I used to believe in mm-hmm. about those two things. I still got love for them, but I don't believe in man. God being a man, God in person. And then I don't believe in a man being uh, the Messiah. That's going to unite everybody and fix all the problems of the world. And that's not just Farrakhan. Cause that's anybody that's an old show name who you want to. Nobody. I, I no longer believe in that. And I used to, but I no longer believe in that. I believe uh, Louis Farrakhan has the best mouthpiece 
out there even today? You know, we have the same chart. It differs at... Um, he's born uh, five... It, no, it differs at Venus, our Venus. He's born March 11th, 1957. No, he's, he's May 11th. He's May, May 11th. Sorry, sorry. May 1933. 11th, 1933, yeah. right. May 11th, 1933. And that man has a mouthpiece his, on him. His, his son is in he's Taurus. His moon is in Sagittarius. His Mercury is in Taurus. His uh, Mars is uh, in Gemini. And oh, his Venus in Virgo. Man. Oh, yeah. You absolutely. studied this man. Ab- ab- absolutely. Do you, absolutely. Consider, do you consider him uh, the best mouthpiece in the past 20, 30 years? Absolutely. Without a doubt. Okay. That dude is Who, awesome, who's man. Who's second in your opinion? In the past 20, 30 years, I mean, there's been so many. I would probably have to put Dr. Martin Luther King. And, and in my, and, 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 hell yeah. Dr. King. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Dr. King could rival Mr. Louis Farrakhan. Dr. King, that dude was poetic, man. What about Malcolm? He, Malcolm's up there, but Malcolm is kind of like myself. He's not fluent. Mm-hmm. He's not fluent, nor is he fluid, you know, but it, it, very intelligent, you know. But Malcolm was, uh, 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 uh. You don't hear Farrakhan with the uh, uh, uh. No, you never you heard don't. Dr. Martin King with the uh, uh, uh. Mm-hmm. You see, that's the difference. Being fluid, fluent and fluid. I just, when, Those, I, when I listen to Dr. King's speeches, I thought what he did best was he changed man, his tone. Man, that dude was awesome. That he dude changed was awesome. His, he, he, changed he was his smooth, tone. man. He changed his tone, and he hit those fucking high notes exactly when he should have. I still think Barack Obama's better, though. Oh, no, 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 no. Not better than Farrakhan, not better than Dr. Martin Luther King. No, no, no not better King. than Farrakhan. I, I think Farrakhan's better than King. It's, it's, for me, it, it, you know, they're side by side. But uh, Barack Obama, oh, no. Well, 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 the, the, Slick Willie, no. The, the people in positions of power helped to push Dr. King. You didn't see that happening with these other guys. What do you mean? Well, uh, I personally believe that Dr. King uh, and his homosexual uh, best friend and advocate. Bayer being, Ruster. Yeah, you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, were basically, you know, being funded or being King was pushed. manipulated. Whatever you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, he was manipulated. He, he was basically... He cut he, Bayard he, off because he, of that homosexual. He, he, he was being puppeteered. Yeah, he was true, being puppeteered. true, 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 um, true. And when I look at Farrakhan, he's been a puppet from the very start. So that's a very, very different situation, man. As soon as they took out Malcolm, woo, he closed up shop on the Nation of Islam. That's his now. He owns that thing. So I think there's a little bit difference. I think that um, Dr. King might have been uh, a good person with good intentions. I'm not too sure about Mr. Farrakhan, even though I will give Mr. Farrakhan credit that he was the first one who explained what the Federal Reserve was uh, to me in mm. the early 1990s. So you do get um, yeah. you know, uh, credit for that. So I do applaud you, sir. Yeah, Far- you know, Farrakhan, I remember that speech. That was in the early 90s. And uh, I was avid back then, you know, and um that was a speech whereby we said that was the first time the minister cried because you like to have your children to go and die for bullshit, you know, and then the little tears. But the difference between Mr. Louis Farrakhan and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., like Malcolm said, King was about the actions. See, when King got away from the integration and holding hands and all of that talk, that he was known for in the 50s and 60s mm-hmm. and went economics. Bye bye. Big mistake. When King started telling the United States government how to spend its money, <laughs> right? There was $200,000 allocated for each Viet Cong killed, but then only 50 something dollars for each American. King was like, we got a problem there. Why are we spending more money for harm, detriment? When the American people, especially like in Mississippi, were impoverished, we're spending more money to kill people than we're doing to uplift American citizens. So King gave a speech whereby he said, when we come to to, to Washington, D.C., right, the Poor People's March, I believe it was, he said, we're coming to get our check. <laughs> That's why a lot of people today, pro reparation people, quote that Dr. King speech there. We're coming to get our check. That comes from Dr. King because he said that when we come to D.C., we're coming to get our check. We are old. Mm-hmm. Dr. King signed his death warrant April 4th, 1967, Riverdale Church in the state of New York. They killed him one year to the day. 
And that's when he gave his anti-Vietnam War speech, April 4th, 1967. Took him out April 4th, 1968, because he was about the actions. Farrakhan, when he did the Million Man March, that was predicated upon the Great March of 1963, Dr. King. But the difference was Mr. Farrakhan pretty much echoed the same thing Dr. King did. And it was it was just limited. It was just for black males, African-American people. Whereas with Dr. King, it was nationwide. He spoke to the nation. Minister, Minister Farrakhan only spoke to black men in particular, black but, people. But that's, that's but, because the media doesn't want you to hear Farrakhan and they were throwing Dr. King in people's no, faces I had, all the time. I used to have every uh, videotape, every lecture uh, Mr. Farrakhan made. I'm a tourist. We hoard things. We collect. So I had a Louis Farrakhan library. So I've heard all of the lectures, especially mm-hmm. the, the 80s, 90s. I had every last one of them. Farrakhan, like the nation, the Islam in general, is great for self-esteem. It's great for helping you to get your mind straight. But like Malcolm said, the teachings, you know, they wake you up. You know, they wake you up. They clean you up. But that stand up part is missing. And when Malcolm left the nation, Malcolm was about that stand up. OK, I'm cleaned up. I'm woken up and all of that. But now I got to stand up. Okay. And when you stand up, you got to take action. And that's what got you notice. King got assassinated. X got assassinated. Mr. Farrakhan, no disrespect, never got assassinated. They, so they, well, someone tried to assassinate no, him. No, no, oh, well, someone no. Someone tried no, to assassinate him. You talking about Malcolm's him. daughter? Uh, Malcolm's that thing? daughter no, 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 no. tried to take him out. Now, and who? No, no. Stop, stop, stop. She tried to take him out. Who stopped him? Who stopped her? Who stopped her? The FBI. FBI stopped her. They said she had a hit on, on Farrakhan, and no. they went in and they arrested her. From what I remember, uh, you, and, you, and, and, you're talking a fish. You're talking surface level. Uh huh. That whole thing was to entrap her, and Farrakhan and Betty Shabazz got together and they flipped it against the FBI. That, 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 that's fine, but wasn't the that, FBI? They was entrapping her. The FBI, there was no uh, good intention. The FBI, on the, the FBI and Farrakhan have been working together since they killed Louis Farrakhan. But, 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 they but, killed Malcolm but, X. But we don't have. But see, the truth about that just came out. So if that's if that's going to be uh, the truth or real, then we got to look at the information. We got to look at the information that came out a couple of years ago, whereby the FBI is implicated in murdering Malcolm X because the FBI arrested Malcolm X's bodyguards, bodyguards and then lying on them said they were going to blow up the Statue and then of Liberty. The is- Nation of Islam's hit men went in there and killed Malcolm X. But first, first the FBI arrested the mm-hmm. bodyguards and mm-hmm. then they killed them. But see, they, the FBI played a role. When you take away a man's security, you allow them, you allow him to get shot. So the FBI, just like with Tupac and Biggie, the FBI knew what was going but, on. They but, knew what was going but, to happen. But wait a second, this was a deal they cut. You take, you I mean, get, you, you, no, come on, let's be, you, let's you, be common you, sense here. You, they, you take away his bodyguards, we'll do the rest. That mm-hmm. seems like what happened. But 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 see, the truth of the matter is, the dudes in the Nation of Islam was going to kill Malcolm just on the strength of dissing the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. It had nothing to do with the government. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad knew that John Ali, Secretary John Ali, was an FBI agent. Mm-hmm. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad knew that, and nothing happened to him. That's because they're in on together. Now, what a lot of people don't know is that Malcolm... Malcolm did certain things. I'm not going to go into detail because Malcolm is my dude. But Malcolm did certain things when they found out that, that, you know, certain people in the nation were henchmen. They were stoolies, what have you. When Malcolm was running things in New York, people were dealt with. Malcolm had a gangster side to him. Now, That's why uh, Malcolm was dangerous. Malcolm was an ox. He had the same Chinese astrology sign as Napoleon, as Hitler, as Saddam. Those Malcolm, fuckers don't compromise. Malcolm, His way or the highway. Malcolm was the real deal. So he strong our people. He did. Okay. But, you know, back in the nation, mm-hmm. when he believed a certain way, mm-hmm. Malcolm actually did things that he wasn't supposed to do. He was not supposed to do those type of things, but he did it. Because Malcolm knew the nation of Islam lacked activity. Malcolm said, I got to leave these people like the talk is great, but we don't get involved in politics. You know, the voting, we we're not influencing anything. We're making people religious. But then after that, what comes next? See, so Malcolm had it. And so Malcolm had to be taken out because had Malcolm lived, Malcolm would have actually had more people in the organization of Afro-American unity than in the nation of Islam, whose numbers were dwindling after Malcolm left. The nation's numbers started dwindling. I heard 
that um, when it comes down to Malcolm, uh, him and uh, Dr. King had a meeting where they were going to uh, form a new political party uh, to take the black people off the plant, Democratic plantation. And uh, after that meeting happened, both of them were killed. Well, Dr. King, what a lot of people don't know is that Dr. King and Malcolm X actually worked together. Mm -hmm. The lawyer for the Southern Christian Leadership Conference was the one who was assisting Malcolm in his lawsuit against the United States in the United Nations, which was very, very, very dangerous. Dr. King dealt with civil rights. Malcolm dealt with human rights mm -hmm. because they, they both admitted that you can't have one without the other. Correct. You see, and so that's what that brotherhood, that partnership came from. It was bringing the two mindsets together. You're not wrong. I'm not wrong. We need civil rights is important. Human rights is important. You take care of that. I'll take care of this. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And both of those men were taken out. See, when people are not taken out, we, we do have to look at those people and we have to question why these people are not taken out. The United States government, when they know you are the real deal, Holyfield, they're taking you out. Like a Fred Hampton senior mm -hmm. of the Black Panther Party, just 20 years old, took him out because he was about action. The Black Panther Party was taken out. Those brothers had guns, man. California changed their gun laws because of the Black Panther Party. The Black Panther Party was not a criminal organization. The Black Panther Party never said go kill white people, get revenge, rape white women. The Black Panther Party was not about that. They were, were you a Black Panther? No, I was never a Black Panther. But I have to give the Black Panther Party credit. And specifically, Mr. Hugh P. Newton, because that's what lit the fuse for me to get into law. I was blown away at Hugh P. Newton, how he talked to police officers and he knew the law would have. And they couldn't touch that dude. I was like, man, you know, so the Panther said that power comes from the barrel of a shotgun. I'm like, I don't know about that because the guns got y'all taken out. But that damn law, mm -hmm. man, that was some powerful stuff right there. You know, Th that's why I'm so pro law to this very day. Because see, it's intelligent. You use the brain, right? Instead of the physical. See, today in our world, everything is physical. Fight, 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 mm -hmm. fight, fight. Dude, you got a little dude that's four feet too scrawny can pick up a gun, you pop, lights out. Good night. You know, and then I've been in court so much. I saw judges, man. You know, it's like white dudes, man, four feet five, black robe on, punking big muscular dudes that could bench press like 500 pounds. And that messed me up. Right. I'm in court. I'm like, damn, this dude was a cholo dude. Right. Hispanic. Right. It was mm -hmm. family court in uh, Los Angeles. And um, it was a female Hispanic, Latino female getting the best of her dude, right? Mm -hmm. And this big dude, man, and the judge was just punking him, punking so much, the dude had tears coming out of his eyes, man. So when the dude left the courtroom, mm -hmm. I went out, a beta, huh? I, man, I saw it, man, in the flesh, man. And I went up to do it like, hey, man, you know, you know, don't, don't, don't trip, man. You know, be there for like for your child would have like the, and the, when the dude turned around and like, like tears was coming down his cheeks, man. Like he was like crying, man. And, and I, I knew it, it, it wasn't like, like bitch, bitch made type of tears. Like it, it, it sets your core. Because me and we cry. We got to keep that shit real. Like some people say, mm, very, me, very, me, very me, rare, me, me, no, me and cry at, at night in, 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 in the dark, you know. So that's why we got lacrimal glands. You know, we cry. I'm not saying that we should cry, but um, fucking men cry. My, You've been my, a little my, boy. You my, got my, injured. My, you my, cried. My kids never seen me cry. Bro. You cried in your life. So what I'm, my, my point is, but, but it's not for I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm saying like at a core, like when you feel like just fucked over and you're powerless and that shit is burning you inside and you feel that there is nothing on planet Earth that can help you because, you know, as a man, you are the fucking power. You know that. But in this system, we have things set up that can take that away from men. I don't give a damn who it is. I'll tell you one thing, bro. Uh, if a man cries, no one gives a fuck about him. If a man a, should a, never cry in fucking woman, public. If a woman cries, she'll fucking I, be taken well, care of. That's un, but that, that's histrionics. Women yeah. are great at that. They can bust the tears and break down and do all type quick. of shit. That's real big in, in, in uh, uh, family law and in, in family court. But, <laughs> but I don't think this big dude, this trollo dude was some bitch beta type dude. It's just that he, he knew if he would have acted a fool, right, and probably choked his girl, that he had to deal with the sheriff, the police department, what have you. Power. You dig? Power. Absolute, absolute power corrupts absolutely, right? Yeah, so it's like, damn, what the fuck can I do here? Because, you know, if I, if I snatch her up, you know, these guys going to be on my ass. You see? So this dude felt powerless. And then a couple of years ago, I saw a dude, big burly dude, like big dudes, man. 
I saw dudes in tears, man. I saw dudes say, hey, listen, I'm out of my child's life. Fuck this shit. I, it's just what? not work. Yes. I saw a dude. He was like, you know, he said, Your Honor, do I have to stay? And the judge was like, no, you don't have to, but you should. He was like, boom, I'm out of here, man. This is some bullshit, what have you. And so as he got up, he was in between uh, the, the, the bar, the back of the bar and the, the exit door. He was in the middle. And he said he turned around and looked at the woman who was grinning. She was like, yeah, I got your bitch. See, women love family court because, you know, they have people working on their behalf to punk men because they can't punk men on their own. Yep. So they have to use a system and, and the child. And man, this girl was over just smiling on her. I said, this motherfucker here. I mean, she just smiled like it just felt good to her. And the dude turned around and said, tell my son I love him. And he bounced, man. And I really wanted to go out and talk to that dude. But that day was just like so crowded. I was like, wow, this dude walked out of his child's life because of the bullshit. He drove like two hours there. He worked somewhere like way out in a different county. And it took like two hours to get there. And he was like, I'm just tired of this shit because a girl could just file whatever she want to. And this dude got to travel like the dude work, got home late. And then have to travel two hours and it, it just it just it wears you down after a while. I mean, it got to the point I was like, you know, what? I have to make up my mind and say, you know what? I'm going to have to you know, prepare for this shit for the next 20 years. I have to make up my mind to say I'm going to battle for the next 20 fucking years because there's a time that comes whereby you don't see an end to this shit. Whole fortune. Hmm? Whole fortune. Damn right. Four and a half years. I'm like, I want to be creating. I want to be creating like new products. I want to make videos. I want to make audios. I want to educate people. I'm in fucking court sometimes for eight hours, brother, 830 to 430. Hell, one time to 445, 15 minutes after the court closed. You know, court have business mm -hmm. hours because this shit is, is a business. Of course. You know, but there were times when I was in court the whole damn day and it was bullshit. But I knew I was there to get the knowledge for other people, which is why I'm helping people now. My homeboy, Kay, is going through a divorce. We kicking major booty. That shit feel good, man. He's saving so much money, man. You know, I'm working with a dude in the Bay Area, man, and he's loaded. But man, his woman got a law firm. The law, see, the, it's the law firms, man. This is why you got to watch the movie The Devil's Advocate. One of my favorite movies. Al man, Pacino. Gotta, man, yeah, law Keanu is the Reed. new priesthood. You know, it's the ultimate backstage pass, man. So the dude got snaps. But was getting shafted, man. I got another partner. He's here in Florida, man. Vanity, my favorite sin. That's what yeah. he said. I got, that, that's, I took that from that the was, movie. That said a lot to yeah, me. That, Vanity yep. is my favorite Didn't know sin. Didn't stop. And Didn't. then I see all these men out here who fucking want to fucking put on makeup now. They want to fucking look good. Where I came from, what my daddy taught me, men had scars. Oh, absolutely. Men have battle wounds. Now these fucking faggots want to look all fucking pretty and shit. So it, it brings me that back to that. Before that was a woman's sin. Yeah. Now it's a man's but, sin as well. But we're dealing with gender uh, re reversal ah. in this society. So the women are becoming more manlike or masculine, and then the men are becoming more womanlike or feminine. So you see men in dresses, wearing purses, wearing pink, uh, mm, all, all types of shit. A little bit more where you're from than you here. Know? Oh, absolutely. Oh, oh, absolutely. <laughs> we oh, live uh, in a free state. I, I, absolutely. You know, but you know, this thing has been going on for a minute because even the pimps were wearing pink. You know, A lot of people don't know. See, where I'm from, we look up to the pimps. Black you know? culture. Yeah, we, we, we looked up to the pimp like for so-called power, but the pimp was really used to bring in the softener because the, the pimps used to wear the silk pink shirt. Pink is a woman's color, man. Yes, it is. Dudes didn't wear no damn pink. The, the, the pimps used to get their hair permed. Oh, that, you so, know, the, 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 so, so all that shit on Martin, like on that TV the, 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 series, the, 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 the character, the pearls, and all this other that's that shit what was that all shit, real. Yeah, that's the oh, what that well, shit. Pearl, the, the, the high heel, the, like yeah, the high heel wow. shoes, the bell bottoms. Like I got, I look better than my bitches. You know, wow. look at the name, Pretty Tony. Remember Pretty Tony from the Mac? Pretty Tony. Pretty is a feminine word. Pretty Tony. <laughs> pretty Bobby. Pretty Ricky. You pretty boy. That that shit was feminine, bro. So it was the pimps who brought in that 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 feminine energy into the hood, getting their hair done like women, because the women used to get their hair permed. It, does Man, that have to cut at the barber does shop? That have anything to do, in, in your opinion, with so many, especially in the black community, so many boys being raised by single mothers? There's no fucking masculine energy around. No. So they get basically brainwashed to be fucking feminine. 
Oh, they have no choice. I mean, if you come up under a single mother who had to step out of the feminine to take on the masculine fucking role. Right. And, and no and no woman can teach a boy how to become no. a man. Well, when we talk about their masculinity, it's a hardness. It takes away yeah. from the nurturance, yeah, the, the nurturing, you know, aspect of, of a woman. Those those womanly qualities. Turns into those, 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 yeah, those are gone. You know, so this motherfucker's hard. You look just like your daddy. You ain't shit. And I mean, just destroying the boy mm -hmm. psychologically. So a lot of that, you know, went on, you know, and then watching a woman. You know, uh, react and respond to certain things, emotional, breaking shit, talking loud, what mm -hmm. have you. They pick that up. So that's what yeah. you see today. The Black know? Lives Matter protest. That's what you see. What, yeah. nigga, what the fuck, nigga? You never fucking talk to me like that. I'm blow your motherfucking brains out. This, now listen to that and like, God damn. Like, <laughs> you know, when you come out, when you come out of the saloon, you know, uh, and look in, you really get to see things, man. So I'm watching the dude. And the dude was right. This is on social media today about New York City and the security guards coming out. And the dude went off. Now, just keeping that shit real, that's, that's, that's feminine, feminine behavior. Because when you look at like a dude like Bruce Lee, a little soft dude, but very masculine, it wasn't all that shouting. Is that, I, I is, that, is, that, is that one of your idols? Bruce Lee? Yeah. Bruce Lee is, is one of my uh, individuals that I look up to. You, I don't, I don't, you, I don't have you, you know he's a dragon, right? Yeah, it, it, and, it's and a dragon, return dog. of the dragon. Yeah. But not, he's not a, he's not my idol though. But he's your dog. You're a dog. That's enemy yeah. science. He's not. But I've met with that dude in the after realm, and it was some good shit. But you. anyway, my point is, Bruce was the perfect balance between masculine and and feminine. He was the perfect fucking balance because Bruce, he knew when to be soft, and he had that soft side, and he showed it. But it wasn't bitch. It wasn't beta, you know. And then when he had to go to that masculine side, that kick ass side, man, it was it was usually a last resort because even like Mercy, man, when Bruce Lee gets the best of Chuck Norris in. Um, Who's the dog? Return, return, return the, the dog. dog. Oh, wow. So the oh, we return the of the dragon. I, like I, Chuck, I Chuck, love putting the astrology in there. Chuck, Chuck is my dude, there. though. I, I like Bruce and Chuck, mm. but Walker, Texas Ranger. Yeah, that's my dude. I just watched Silent, Silent Rage. I'm like, damn, I haven't seen that movie in like 40-something years. I used to watch all Chuck Norris movies, Escape from the, what was it? What Escape was from the Ninja, the, the Octagon, one, what and was the one Good Guys Wear Black. was a cop, and there was a dude who it breaks out from a mental institution. That's Silent, I just watched that. Oh, that's, that's Silent Rage. He's, that, that, he's, he's a sheriff. Yeah, he's a sheriff. I just watched that two okay, weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, that's Silent Rage. That's a damn good movie. That, yeah, it was an old school. That yeah, that was 1980, man. He was hiding in the theater. Yeah, that was, I just watched that two weeks ago. Silent Rage, Chuck Norris. But anyway, I just bring up Chuck Norris because of you Return of the Dragon. those horror movies, man. That wasn't horror. Well, you know what? That was Chuck <laughs> Norris. It was martial arts horror. That's I what that was. Because Chuck Norris was in horror. Chuck Norris was martial arts. But in a Return of the Dragon, Bruce Lee taught us some serious lessons, man. I mean, the mercy that he showed uh, Chuck Norris. Even when he killed Chuck Norris' character, I believe his name was, was Colt. Mm -hmm. You know, and covered up his face, like showing respect, you know. And when Chuck was getting the best of Bruce Lee. You know, Bruce Lee was teaching us that whatever style we have, if that shit is not working, switch we have to be up. fluid and switch that shit up to win. That's the lesson you took out of that. That's the lesson Adap Bruce conveyed. Ad ad adapt to your opponent. A absolutely. Okay. You got to do, you got to switch. Like even in law, mm -hmm. if my shit ain't working, but, I got to switch up. But I will, so, I will disagree on one thing. Okay. Uh, you said that Bruce uh, showed him mercy. You think that's a good thing? Well, I, I truly believe predicated upon the principles of righteousness. I think it's 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 okay. a, it's, so, it's a good thing, but it's circumstantial though. So, because okay, mm -hmm. hold on, hold on, right quick, because mm -hmm. I don't want to forget my thought. Go you ahead. know, <laughs> uh, only one time per podcast. <laughs> now, Pacino in Carlito's way mm -hmm. showed mercy to what's his name? Benny Benny was it Benny Blanco from the Bronx? Benny from the the Bronx? Mm -hmm. uh, what's the homeboy's name? John uh, the L. And you guys know who I'm talking yeah, yeah. about. Carlito's way, yeah. one of my favorite movies. Pacino's character, Carlito, mm -hmm. made a huge mistake by showing mercy to Benny Blanco. Mm -hmm. Remember when he was thrown out the club yes. and homeboy's like, let me kill him. Come on, uh, Carlito, let me take him out. He's on. No, just take him out in the alley. Mm -hmm. Pacino's character messed up because when Pacino almost made it, remember, they was at the train station. Mm -hmm. He almost made it with old girl. Mm -hmm. I forget her name, but, he, you know, they were leaving New York. He's leaving everything behind. Benny Blanco came out of nowhere. Actually, he was running on the side with him, right? But it comes out of nowhere in, in the movie. Pop, pop, pop. Yep. He pops Carlito. 
Carlito doesn't make it. Mercy shown coming back to buy Carlito in the rear end. So that's why I said it is circumstantial. 100%. It's 100% circumstantial. Now, when Bruce showed Chuck Norris mercy, Bruce, Bruce knew he had Chuck defeated. So Bruce said, but Chuck was a warrior. Colt was a warrior. Mm -hmm. This is to the death. Yep. He had an opportunity, and Bruce would have left him alone. Mm -hmm. But he was he was he was, he was a warrior. Only, so he got his neck broken. There's only one dragon I consider more famous than Bruce Lee, and that's uh, Julius Caesar. Mm, okay. And, I uh, just watched the Fall of Rome the other and, day, man. And Julius Caesar uh, was a dragon, just like Bruce Lee, and his greatest opponent, just like Bruce's was Chuck Norris, who was a dog. Mm. The greatest opponent for Julius Caesar was the great Pompey, who was the greatest general in Roman history before Caesar, and he was a dog. Was so a we dog. have enemy signs, enemy yeah. signs. So again, um, it's Caesar, pretty. It's, it's consistent in yeah, history, yeah, it, right? It is, when, it you, is. when you study it, right? It, it if you study it, it will, again, yeah. big if. So yeah. after um, Caesar crossed the Rubicon, uh, he obviously started a war with the Roman Senate. They went to mm -hmm. Pompey to protect them. Anyways, a couple years later, Caesar wins the war. The great Pompey's head gets cut off in Egypt. It's delivered to him as a gift. And he wasn't very happy about that. But at the end of the day, he did something very unprecedented. He pardoned all of the great Pompey's generals, Brutus and all those guys. Mm, and you yeah. know exactly where I'm going with yeah, this. Yeah, 16 years yeah. later, those same yeah, yeah, generals yeah. murdered him. So, yeah. again, yeah. Com yeah. compassion, yeah. mercy, only works sometimes. Yeah, you got to use it discretion. It does not work all the time. No. As a matter of fact, no. some of the greatest humans in human history, and I consider Caesar still one yeah. of the greatest humans yeah. in human history. I do consider, um, you know, uh, Octavius, Augustus above him. But he made a big mistake by giving us mercy. History mm. is not the way it is right now if he doesn't show those guys mercy. Right. Right. That's true. Very circumstantial, you know. Uh, discretion, discernment, you know, intuition, all of those things come to play. So it's very circumstantial. Let's let's go back to what we were doing before. I consider this one of the best waters you can buy. And um, I believe this is what the elite use. I believe when they travel from city to city, they need to drink good water too. Obviously, it's in plastic, but if it was in glass, it would be better. Um, I believe it's jacked up the price of this so the poor people can't afford it. <laughs> uh, and so the elite have it everywhere. I find it very interesting. It's called Evian, but if you spell it backwards, naive. it's called naive. Yeah. What do you think the elite are trying to say that you're not naive by not understanding what this is? What do you think they're trying to tell us? I personally think that it's uh, just incidental. It's just, you know, it just happens to be naive spelled backwards. Uh, and this is not to say you that, 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 that you believe in coincidences. I said incidental. That's a coincidence, isn't it? No, coincidental. Co means like two. But anyway, my mm -hmm. point is that there are certain things that just happen to to like level spell backwards as level. Like it's just it's just something but, but, that but just hold in, on, incidental. Hold on, hold on a second. If you go back to scripture and you look at Eve, mm -hmm. they have Eve inside of eleven. And you have Eve inside the word seven. You have mm -hmm. Eve inside both okay. of those. Mm -hmm. You also have Eve inside the word level. Mm -hmm. So sometimes what it, they're basically it, trying to tell me is it, 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 there's a lot more to there than what In many cases, to say. it is. They're trying Not, to level up. I, true. I wouldn't say in all cases, but in many cases, there are certain things that are, are hidden. But with the water, the... Elite, for the most part, just keeping it real. They're not really big on the water. They don't drink fluoridated water, by the no, way. No, of course not. Okay, but they're big on the no adrenochrome. So, but when you know your thing about water, the best water that you can drink outside of nature mm -hmm. is going to be filtered, carbon filter, reverse osmosis, micro-clustered, ozonated or oxygenated, Minerally enhanced water. Now that's water that you have to make. That is water that you have to make. The best water is coming in nature. We don't have a lot of that left anymore in the United States of America. But if you want good water, you got to have you a unit, a machine to purify that water. Because the chemicals 
in the municipal water supply. When we talk about Americans being stupid, dumb, degenerate, what have you, yeah, the, wa so. the water plays a role. The sodium fluoride, I have a video and they show the sodium fluoride spilling on concrete, eating into the damn concrete. <laughs> and the men that go to clean it up are wearing hazmat suits. <laughs> And they wear the hazmat suits when they are putting in the sodium fluoride into the water supply. So if it's so good for children, their teeth, right, fluoride, why are you wearing a damn hazmat suit? You got to be so out good. your fucking mind to think the fucking the government cares that much about your teeth. To Please. Put fucking fluoride in the water that supply. fluoride you works on your, your pineal mind. gland. There, tell them again. Okay. That works on your pineal gland. This is the site of the Anya chakra, the sixth chakra, the third eye. It calcifies the pineal gland. That stuff is crap. And then we talk about LGBTQ and homosexuality. We're talking chemicals. Atrazine. You guys have seen the, the documentary about the frogs, the atrazine frog experiment. When they gave the frog the atrazine and the frogs became homosexual, they were transforming uh, into female frogs. The male frogs were transforming into female frogs. Sounds like there's, California. Listen, there's more atrazine in the drinking water <laughs> than they use in the damn experiment. Yeah. There's more atrazine in the municipal tap water than they used in the experiment. They, have, they created genetically modified salmon and they put that stuff into the water supply. Yes. And, and they said these salmon, the genetically modified ones, and the salmon, they are not genetically modified. You couldn't tell the difference. Everything's going to be the same. What ended up happening is the genetically modified salmon started eating mm. the regular salmon. See, that science was, is always going to go the, wrong. The, it's the, always going to be frank. The fishermen, the fishermen who get the, the genetically modified salmon now... They have to fucking pull parasites out oh, yeah, of their yeah, fucking yeah. mouth. I got videos of that, bro. This I is mean, disgusting. Yeah. They also have lice. They also have lice. But in my, in my video library, which is thousands of like DVDs, I have stuff that would just really gross people out. I'm talking about the, the most staunch fish eater or pork eater, what have you. It, it'll, 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 it'll mess you up. The, the things that people have eaten historically, well, in the past 30 to 40 something years, with them being modified and, and, and tainted, it would mess people up. It's not the same. I tell people all the time, the meat you're eating today is not the meat of the biblical days. Hell, it's not even the meat of 200 years ago. People ate meat and never got cancer. Now they're eating meat and they get cancer. Keep keeping your not, food in the microwave more and more. See what happens. It's, it's not necessarily the meat. It's the chemicals pumped into the meat. Now, if anybody using a microwave oven in 2023, you, you need to really go do your due diligence because the microwave oven, it causes the molecules of, of food to spin backwards in Come the wrong again. direction. You see, so you're eating, you're taking in cancer. You are what you eat, you see. And so things in the body like cells, like movement, energy goes a certain way, moves in a certain direction and denotes health. When it goes backwards, it's the opposite of health. So eating microwave food is eating irradiated food. You're cooking yourself. You're cooking your cells what? by eating what comes out of a fucking microwave lazy oven. motherfuckers can't even fucking use a toaster oven. Food, food don't, you're not supposed to make things in two minutes and three minutes and five minutes, man. The damn turkey takes well, 90 minutes. You know, it, well, I, don't, I can't remember my mother making <laughs> mac and cheese. I, I can't know. remember my mother making ch uh, mac and cheese for two or three, four something minutes. You know, we're Crafts. talking about like a 30 minute. We're <laughs> yeah, talking about right. a 30 minute process, man. Like back in the day, my mom, they got down with the, the cooking. You know, I mean, it's not like we didn't have fast food, but it was like a treat. We didn't have that mm -hmm. shit every day. Yeah, 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 right. You know, mom's got in the kitchen, man, would break some things down. That's Grandma sis, knew actually how to aunt, cook. my auntie, Aunt Beverly, Aunt yeah. Iris. You know, I have a I have a content house. I'll show you it tomorrow, right? Okay. Where I have all my influencers go in there, fucking OnlyFans whores in there, in and out all the time, oh, wow. right? Right, right. Listen wow. to this. The house is dirty. You have fucking 20 women who go through that fucking house. Not one of these bitches could clean. It's not in them, brother. <laughs> not one of these bras it's, it's, they don't. They clean. don't even have that instinct to like, oh, let me wash the dish. Like, that's gone, brother. But in the 70s and 80s, that's how the women got They know got how to down. get on their knees, though. 
Oh, well, absolutely. <laughs> well, this is, I told you this is glorified whore culture, man. They know how to do all that, get facials, man, you know, get butt-tuned, uh, plugged, I should say, all of that stuff. They know all of that stuff. It's glorified, you know, but, you know, the, the womanly art, you know, of being a woman, like, man, that's gone. I mean, that's, that's frowned upon. That's uh, subjugation. That's slavery, you see? And so when you have a society and the women embrace whoredom before wifedom and motherdom, it's a wrap. There's a saying. A nation can rise no higher than its woman, the state yes. of his women. So if you look at the state of American women, I keep my mouth shut on social media because I don't want to, you know, kick up dust. I don't. And, 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 and the whole ruckus, <laughs> you know, because, you know, people are already dealing with, with certain things, you know, and a lot of people have come a certain way. And so if you get them into health and other areas, you most definitely want to keep them there because they they're listening. And this aspect of, of knowledge will save their life and, and improve their health. You know, but people are so childish and immature that if you talk on so-called conspiracies and whore culture, what have you, they become offended. They don't. Oh, you mean whores don't actually like telling the truth? They no, don't they, no, no, the no, truth no. That no. they actually so, are whores. So no, they don't. And so the other things that they listen to that they that they will acknowledge is the truth. They'll turn on that. They'll like, you know what? I don't even want to hear about health anymore because you offended me over here talking about whores. They're, they're, they're not there yet. You see, so if they are offended about something because a wire has been hit, they're out. Has there? I, has I'm any, offended. Has anything worse ever happened to America than the Nineteenth Amendment? Oh man, um, I would have to say the 1913 Federal Reserve Act it was worse than feminism. Really? Than, than feminism? Really? You know what? If I had to look at both of those, right? I'm saying the Federal Reserve now, because of the, the, the whole money. Terrorists. But, 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 but the, 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 the tax situation didn't corrupt our morals. So in that respect, feminism has done more harm to the nation. Yes. Morally speaking. Yes. Than the whole tax because there you could be. T we were taxed shit back in the 1940s and 50s and we didn't have glorified whore king. 100%. See, so we were taxed and our women were, were straight. So today we're taxed and like the women are gone. So I would say that feminism has done more harm than taxation or was worse than uh, the Federal Reserve System. You know, as far as our nation, the it, morals and the, the you know, the, the ethics. In numerology, 19 is the number of bad health. Mm. I, I think it's very, very ironic or maybe it's not ironic that the 19th Amendment Hmm. And then you had COVID nineteen. This is not a joke. Nineteen was yeah, big in the exactly. nation of Islam. Then, oh, really? Tell us the about the women. It. Yeah, um, dealing with Maryam, and I think there was a book uh, one of the sisters wrote on the number nineteen. Sister uh, Tanetta Muhammad was big on that. So was the late great uh, so Doctor Ava Muhammad. Are, are, are so nineteen are, are was you, a. Si are you telling me the nation of Islam is into numerology? Yeah, absolutely. Because I forget the brother's name. Uh, was it Brother Akbar? It was one of the brothers who used to write mm -hmm. in a final call, and he dealt with the numbers, like the number 11, you know, the number 19. So uh, numerology uh, okay. was most definitely dealt with in the nation of Islam. Is it safe to say that Louis Farrakhan either has a numerologist working for him or he's one himself? He, it, it, it could he, be he either. He knows about 11. the numbers. He is he's born he, on 11. He does have a 33 on the yeah. back end of his birthday. He he Farrakhan has given a lot of uh, lectures, a lot of speeches where he dealt with numbers, the number seven, the number mm -hmm. nine, uh, the number 19. Mm -hmm. So either or. But he, he's most definitely into numbers. Absolutely. Let's go to Louis Farrakhan now. He is born on the 11th, obviously mm -hmm. very charismatic and stuff like that. But he's also a five life path. And okay. Five deals with sex. Um, mm. it, 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 is this the type of man who is a one woman man or is he going around um, basically not being Islamic? If you want to say the fifth, that's fine. No, I'll deal with it. Um, remember when I told you that there was a time I believed yes. the man could do no wrong yes. and, and the Messiah? Yes. And, well, you, in you sure. Oh, yeah. And in, okay. in, the, in the 2000s, I went to Chicago, I hooked up with a good brother who was in the Nation of Islam in Mosque Mariam in particular. Mm -hmm. And I had told him about a dream 
that I had. I think I mentioned mentioned it on the last podcast you did. we did. You did. I had a dream where Bob was in a limousine with Mr. Farrakhan, his son, and his son got out of the limousine, jumped over this big concrete or brick wall, opened up a sliding glass door and went into a woman's room and and got busy. This is came a, back a, out. A, this was a, 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 a dream. This was a dream. dream okay. This is the sun. Mm-hmm. And hops the gate, gets back in the limousine, and we take off. But mm-hmm. I'm looking at him like, how the fuck? How could how could you do that? The 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 teachings you guys preach and teach, you know, one man, one woman, and the sacredness of the woman and marriage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm looking like, how could you do that? And he just looked at me like, motherfucker, you know what time it is. Like, <laughs> you know, got my motherfucking swerve on, you know? <laughs> and so I remember rising back to the 3D state, messed up, like, damn. And there are certain dreams I can have that impact me so much that when I return to the 3D state, I'm impacted physically. I can, yeah. it's like something, it's like it was, you know, 3D. Okay. Even though it was in the astral realm, lower astral realm, the dream world. So I'm like, man, this, this just wasn't no crazy dream here. That shit hit at my core. Like, damn. Like, I discovered something in mm-hmm. the astral realm. Well, I kept my mouth shut because, you know, it was in the astral realm. I didn't have anything in the 3D, physical evidence, what have you. But my little brother, when I, when I left the nation, my little brother was in the nation. We weren't in at the same time. Is he still in? No. No. A lot of people that, you know, was in the nation in my day no longer in the uh, nation is probably two or three brothers uh, from my crew back in, in, in my day. But my little brother came home one day. He was, he was very uh, distraught, man. I said, what's wrong, man? He said, man, we had to uh, do post for minister Tony. And uh, it was minister Tony, captain Shahid and the minister son. And I'm like, okay, he said it was women from the club, Christian women, mm-hmm. right? Worldly, when I say Christian, I'm not saying uh, biblically Christian women, like with the biblical mm-hmm. Christian woman virtues. I'm not saying that. Is not when I say in the hood, Christian women, like the, those women do whatever. The Christian women are good to go. They, they're sinners. And all they got to do is pray <laughs> to God, go to church, and it's all good. And they'll do the same shit the next week. So when I say Christian women, that's what I'm talking about in the hood. And my brother said, yeah, man, they were like Christian women. They were in a fish string, fish, what is it, fish net, um, leggings, what have you, and breasts exposed, and just women that Muslim men shouldn't be with. And I said, what's the problem? You guys were doing, uh, you know, security. He said, yeah, but at, in hotel rooms. And I was like, get out of here. He was like, yeah, bro. Went to the hotel, and we had to, you know, stand outside. I was like, so they was, he was like, yeah, mess my, my brother was like me. A lot of people back in the day follow my lead. And I, 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 I can believe that. They follow my lead. I've always been a leader my entire life. Do you my consider social, yourself an alpha? What do you mean alpha? Well, like alpha, yeah, alpha, yeah, yeah, alpha, alpha male? I probably have alpha a trace would have, but I don't subscribe but, but, to. But you consider yourself a leader. My social, my social security uh-huh. numerology is one. So, so a- one is alpha, the leader. Alphas follow uh, you. Okay, okay. Correct. Uh, yeah. I, 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 when I look back at, in, in my past, mm-hmm. I've had a lot of people, you know, roughnecks, toughies, yep. what have you. Like I was the, the counselor, man. Like 100%. they came. Yeah, they came 100%, to me. One hundred percent, man. I had rappers. I had mm-hmm. gangbangers. I like all type of people, man. But what I was saying is that I've noticed that my entire life, I've been the leader. I remember being in kindergarten, man. And like I just became the leader, just walking around and shit. I wasn't, you know, like righteous. You just mess with people, would have them, like five or six, would have you. But I was a leader of the damn pack, man. Even back then. But but wait a second. I look at you. You don't look like a muscular dude. No, I've you never. You don't look like you have a whole bunch of bitches on your team. No. But but this is what Red Pill teaches us. They tell us you have to be a bodybuilder. They say you have to fucking have a whole bunch of whores on the team. What do you say to that? You know, believe it or not, my paternal side of the family are bodybuilders my really little, my little brother mike uh-huh. dude was like lee haney jr man muscular uh-huh. he did do that juice though saheed and all the other mm-hmm. brothers so this is in 1989 okay right? 
So in the hood, we do. We, it was a lot of that going on, you know, wearing the wife beaters, lift, lifting weights, what have you. That's just that's just how it was. You know, in, in the hood, a lot of brothers went to jail and they picked up the habit of lifting weight <laughs> in the jail because if you went to jail. You came back. You were on swole. Mm-hmm. You were on swole. So, you know, jailhouse culture, you know, pretty much saturated the hood, you know, and, and yeah, oh, absolutely, absolutely, okay. yeah, absolutely, yeah. We have jailhouse culture, so the sagging and uh-huh. you know the ears piercing and all of that. Can you, you know, tell the people what the sagging actually means? That's how it just it's jailhouse culture. See, in in jail, when you would sag, uh-huh. that was like showing your ass. You you were marketing your goods, uh-huh. you were advertising. So you, if you, if you have your uh, pants hanging down, you show your ass. Your, so so you ba- you show your you're, ass you're as ba- a man. You're basically saying, "Yo, I'm available." Yeah. So that's some fucking faggot ass shit. Yeah, all that cripping and blood and look here, man. That, look in in L. A. Back in the seventies, you can watch the Al Pacino movie Cruising, and there's a little scene in there dealing with the the color of the of the um, bandanas. Mm-hmm. The blue bandana and the red bandanas were used by the homosexuals before it was used by the Crips. And the, and the, <laughs> no, seriously, this is this is serious talk, man. And the right side and the left side denoted, you know, genders. The right side was masculine. The left side was feminine. Mm-hmm. So, if you wore the blue rag, the blue rag dealt with. Um, uh, anal sex. The blue rag dealt with anal sex. So the homosexuals in L.A. and Hollywood back in the day, they didn't say like, "Hey man, you want to fuck me in the ass, man?" Or, "Hey, can I fuck you in that?" They didn't talk like they that. They would wear a. Bu- they would wear the bandana. So if you oh wore the bandana my. on the left side, that meant you bent over and you 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 got you know plug tuned up the butthole. And if you was wearing the blue rag on the right side, you were doing the plug tuning. There was no conversation. So, hey, man, so, I fuck so, you so, so the origins of Crips and Bloods are pretty Hoover, much but J- straight, straight up for homosexuality. J- J- Jagger Hoover put that homosexual thing in there. See, the oh Crip my. is the counter-revolution. And by the way, J. Edgar Hoover is a known He's homosexual. homosexual. He was the fun. guy who started the FBI. Yeah. His lieutenant was his fucking lover. Clyde Tolson. And, and, and by the way, this is the only homosexual I won't attack too much because he killed communists. Okay. So that I'll give him a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's of a true. Pass. That's true. But that's other true. than that, he's a fucking fag. Yeah, and uh, Meyer Lansky and Lucky Luciano had uh, pictures of him blowing Clyde Tolson on the side of a building in Cincinnati, which is why J. Edgar Hoover denied the existence of the mafia. Whoa, 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 whoa. Go back and say that again because I never heard that before. Yeah, You're Meyer telling- Lansky and mm-hmm. Lucky Luciano had photographs of J. Edgar Hoover on his knees. Filating Clyde Tolson because Tolson was the man in the relationship. Hoover and, was the bitch. His name was Mary. That's why they never went after. They, they, the they couldn't. They would have fucked. Yeah, they would have blackmailed him. Wow. So they had a picture of Jacob Hoover on his knees sucking Clyde Dolson's dick, and and they sent that to um, <laughs> to to I Hoover, and he knew did. that. So you did. go back and study Hoover. He Hoover always denied the existence of the mob. We know the mob exists. We of know course. the mafia, La Costa Nostra, Nostra exists, but he denied it because. He was being blackmailed by uh, Lucky Luciano and Meyer Lansky. So that's why as soon as Ed, uh, J. Edgar Hoover was removed, the fucking FBI went right after the fucking mob. Absolutely. See, uh, they had, you know, but see, the CIA, the CIA took out J. Edgar Hoover. See, they took out Hoover with sodium morphate in a toothpaste. That's why they found Hoover. Go research this. They found mm-hmm. him dead, naked in his bathroom. So the CIA with, killed him. The CIA knocked him out why? because... See, Jacob Hoover was violating the statutes. He was he was he was violating the establishment clause of the uh, FBI. Mm-hmm. So when you understand the FBI and the in, CIA internal CIA CIA oh, is, is globally. Yes. Well, Hoover was gangster. He was like, F that. So the CIA kept running to FBI agents all over planet Earth. Oh, wow. And the FBI wasn't supposed to be global. They're 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 national. And. Hoover, they kept telling Hoover, look, you got to stop this. Hoover's like, man, screw you guys. Like, Hoover was about that power. So the CIA took well, Hoover out. Pretty fucking homosexual. Yes he, huh? yes, he was. So the CIA took Hoover out and installed their man, the second what, in command. What year was this? This was 1971, I believe. 71 to 72, early 70s. I believe it was 1971. 71 to 72. And so Hoover was found in this apartment. He Bush. stayed. 
Bush ordered that. He was in charge of the CIA. No, that was, that, time, that no? was later. He was a, he was an agent. Yeah, he was an but agent. he wasn't in charge. He was in charge he was in seventy six. He was one of the guys. He was in he was in, no okay. no no Bush. He, when we talk about the Kennedy assassination, yes. we got to talk about yeah, Bush. Yeah, yeah, Bush, yeah, Bush. Yeah, but Bush was the head of the CIA in 1976. So the CIA took out Hoover in 1971 to get the FBI out of the global market, the intelligence market, and to be relegated. To the United States, the domestic domestic United States. But what a lot of people don't know, even though the CIA is international, right, global, mm -hmm. those motherfuckers operate domestically. Of course, of they were course. on the scene when uh, Senator Robert Kennedy Sr. was assassinated. Yeah. Uh, the CIA, and they're not supposed to be on American soil. You know, operating on American yeah, soil, so that's it went well, both. It went both well, ways. When the CIA was founded, nineteen forty-seven, year the pig, their number one enemy was uh, President Kennedy, who was uh, born nineteen seventeen, year the pig. Mm -hmm. Pig and snakes are enemy signs. That's why right? they called it the you, Bay of Pigs. You told me that. Right. That's why they right. called the Bay of Pigs. You told me. So yeah. Basically, so basically, here's what will happen. Uh, John F. Kennedy passed Executive Order 11110 on 6 4 1963. So, 1 1 1 So, you have your 11 11. He waited until that executive order mm. and he passed it on the 11th day. That took away the uh, power from the Federal Reserve to print money. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. what happened is Four within six dollars. months, they put a bullet in him. And when uh, Lyndon Johnson took over, the first thing he did wasn't bury uh, his predecessor, wasn't he reversed it. First thing he did was reverse he reversed executive the executive order. order. One 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 zero. Yep. So again, President Kennedy was on our side. Oh yeah. President Kennedy best president was you guys good, had. It, it, best fucking president you 100%. had in the past one hundred fucking percent. Even over Trump. Trump is in second place to JFK. And that a, was it, the dude. And it's a big second place oh, because it's absolutely. Like Michael Jordan absolutely. when he was the prime absolutely. guy absolutely. and the second guy Akiba absolutely. Lajuan. Big fucking gap absolutely. Between those. Um, Kennedy was the dude. I, I, I want to make this abundantly clear. I'm a hardcore uh, conser uh, conservative now. A lot of people even uh, said I'm all right, whatever the fuck that oh, means. Damn. You know, they, they call me fucking every. Oh, I'm, wow. a Jew, I'm a Jew. They're calling me all wow. right. Okay. So here's basically what I want to say. I respect President Kennedy more that motherfucker than was awesome. any fucking other yes. American official yes. ever, except with maybe maybe uh, George Washington. How oh yeah, that, but that's that's yeah, that's, 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 that's yeah, yeah. We're John talking F. modern. Kennedy, that well, he has some balls. Yes, the shit he, he did he really in did. modern day times, man. That dude has some balls. That's and, and my he dude. Was, and he was charismatic, too. That was my dude. He, he had a lot going yeah, for himself, man. He was man. born on 29, 2 and 9 and 11. Yeah, he had, he had a charisma. lot. He had a lot uh, going for he, himself, He did man. have one problem. He liked whores. Yeah, and he Marilyn did. Marilyn Monroe, while she was fucking Fidel Castro, she was also having sex with him. And the thing is, she was taking secrets from Kennedy and Pillow giving talk. them to Fidel. And that's why the CIA murdered Marilyn Monroe. Because See, she was a double agent, too. Yeah, see, Kennedy was sleeping with a lot of uh, women. He was sleeping with a, a German, a West German prostitute. You know, that was the woman he said gave him the best head he ever had in his life. <laughs> but uh, what a lot of people don't know, Kennedy also said Marilyn Monroe had a little stink on her, too. I bet she yeah, did. You know, much? Yeah, that woman, the hygiene, she'd been around too much, you know. So usually when it's filed down there, the woman she, is filed. You mean so. she's been ran through? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the woman had 12 abortions, man. I mean, what? Yeah, Marilyn Monroe had 12 abortions. Yeah. I hope you're burning oh, in hell, no, no, no. you fucking whore. That woman had 12 abortions. 12 abortions? Yeah. This and, is the and, fucking and, 60s? Yeah. And, and, How do you and, have and, 12 and, and abortions? The 50s, the 50s the, and the 60s, that's man. That's sick. You know, but we're dealing with Hollywood, wow. you know, and so now shit, the whole world is, I should say, like all of uh, Los Angeles, all of California, you know, is Hollywood. It's kind of trickled around the nation. I, I don't but, think uh, most women have 12 abortions. That's that's that's, well, that's, that's but, something but, else. But when I when I say trickle in this nationwide, it's the blue, it's the pockets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. New York, right? New York is come on, what three thousand something miles away from 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 L. A. But you know, New York. They got this shit, the LGBTQ, and they drag stuff bad, and the whores, there's and they go off our whore culture. There's nothing that's worse than But San that's Francisco. California, though. Yeah. You know, that's like California is the capital. Don't get it wrong. California will always be the capital. Okay. But, you know, shit going on in Las Vegas, you know, shit going on in New York City, shit going on in Atlanta. That's a capital, you know, uh, gay capital for black men. Like Say it we, again, we, 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 people don't know that shit. Oh no, no, Atlanta is the capital. It's the it's the, it's the gay capital. Um, for black men. black the black gays. Yeah, black gays. Atlanta is the is the capital. I remember the last time I went Never to Atlanta. Yeah, when I the last time I went to Atlanta, I could like feel that shit here, man. And then when I got to the hotel, like the dude was flaming and shit, you know. And it's like, 
that shit was really weird, man. Because I'm like, man, there are the homosexual energy is just fucking. Lo- I was in the air, and I'm like, I'm going into like fucking Sodom and Gomorrah. Like yeah, I just kind of yeah, just yeah, felt yeah, that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. And then I got to the hotel. The motherfucker was just flaming. He told me about some vegan restaurant or what have you. And I was like, God damn, you know. And I'm biased, you know. And I'm like, oh, the pussy in in Atlanta, women, like like they're there, and you want pussy. Yeah. You want all the these, ass. All you, these you, women, you, you, all these beautiful curves and beautiful shapes. You want bussy. And motherfuckers want to suck You dick. want bussy. No, mm. get, get some booty. Mm. You know, that, and so I'm like, man, you know, let me just, just chill and let these people like do their thing. I'm just visiting. Even though I'm, <laughs> even though I'm from L.A. We got a Hollywood in our backyard, but still, I'm from South Central. So the energy is the, 180 the, degrees. The, the energy in South Central, even 180 today, degrees. They're not, they're not pro-homosexuals, right? They're, no, that energy. See, it's some. See, you have to deal with like um, vortexes, if you will, like mm-hmm. cities. They're they're um, energy fields. Yes. And so the energy field of the Compton, the Wide South Central, what have you, that shit is 180 degrees opposite of Hollywood. It's like night and day. You go there today, and the hood is not how it used to be in my day. But still, what you see going on in in, in Hollywood, you don't see that there. Like all the LGBTQ and the, mm-hmm. the flags. I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but it, it, it's not evident. They're not waving flags and you're not seeing like what I see when I go to certain spots in Hollywood. I have a very weak stomach, by the way. So if I go to a restaurant, mm-hmm. right, so I go to Allah and then I see, you know, a transvestite come in. It it messes with me. Yeah, I have to get yeah, up and yeah. go. I can't. I, it'll I spoil went, my I, appetite. I went, I, a, I, I went to a fast food place. And I'm getting the food out in a transsexual I gave it to me. I fucking threw the shit away. There's a spot eat. that we have a, a plant. Eat. We have a plant, plant power. I believe is the name of it in Hollywood. And there's a transvestite that worked there. And so when I go there, it's all, I'm always taking a risk when I go there because that individual could be working there. And when it is, I just turn around and just leave. Like damn, I just I drove out here for nothing. I'm that sensitive. I used to go to a veggie grill in Burbank, and they had one out there. Fuck my appetite up, man. I throw the food away. You know, I'm like, damn, I can't even eat this shit now. Very sensitive stomach. I'm from South Central Los Angeles, and so that will always be in me. Back in my day, and I'm not saying this is right. I'm not saying this is right. But this was the reality of South Central Los Angeles. You, you could not be flaming back then. They used to beat up. The flamers. If you were flaming back then, you got your ass. They still ass. do that in Russia. Well, well, in South Central, they would beat your. It was very rare. It was very rare. And this is why they put the black men in dresses. This is why they always put the black men in dresses in mm. movies because they're trying to influence they wanna, that yeah. black community to turn homosexual too. I've always thought homosexual growing up is a white man's disease. Hmm. I always thought that was, that's what it was. Well, before it was, it was like when you watched the movies, you heard, read the books about mm-hmm. San Francisco, what have you. It was mm-hmm. always like white males. We had blacks, but uh, black males uh, who were you know homosexual. But see, back in the day, they weren't flaming with it. Like yeah, they yeah, were yeah, still yeah. dressed like men. They didn't yep. wear dresses and skirts and heels and shit like that. You know, like one of my favorite human beings is James Baldwin. That's my dude. But James Baldwin, Baldwin was homosexual. But he still had that masculine flair, like when he's talking to Nikki Giovanni and he's like, baby, Nikki, baby, baby. Like there was that, that coldness there. Like you would not have known that that man was a homosexual unless you found out, unless you read and found out that James Baldwin was a homosexual. Mm-hmm. He, was, he made the FBI list. But today, the, the, the gay males want to look like females. I don't know if you guys have seen uh, Magic Johnson's son, EJ. Oh, God. Like this You know he cut a deal. You know he cut a deal with a fucking son like that. Oh, absolutely. But I also believe, too, Magic was doing a lot of shit to Playboy Mansion and some shit jumped on his ass. I I honestly believe 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 that. It's the same thing of the women screwing a lot of men. Worry around your kids. Yeah, because your penis is the site of Mm. a, 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 it's a chakra. It's like the first chakra, you know, so, and your chakras are discs. Or discats, so they pick up information. And and Magic used to fuck around with uh, uh, Jerry Buss at the, at the Playboy Mansion, you know, mm-hmm. fucking all type of females, you know. So I, this you, is just you, my you know, opinion. You know, he hit Jenny Buss too. Maybe. No, no, no. There's no maybe. I, I, no, I, no, I, no, I, I never heard of that. I'm, but, I'm but, but, telling but, you. I'm, I'm, I'm telling let, you. Let me say I wouldn't be surprised because yeah, Magic. Right. I heard Magic out of his own mouth say 
that the most amount of women he had ever been with one time was seven women. So it doesn't surprise me. Well, what else and, do you, and, what and do you magic, expect from a swan? And Magic had a, a, a private shower in the forum. After games, he would always have two whores waiting for him. Mm. And when he, it used, to, it used to belong to Jamal Wilkes. So this started in 1985 when Jamal Wilkes got cut from the Lakers. Magic Johnson took it over. Magic was into some freaky shit. So when I look at that, his son EJ, mm -hmm. it's like Magic, sense. yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't care what nobody said. I'm like, Magic, mm -hmm. I know your fucking history. You was in some Solomon Gomorrah type shit at the Playboy Mansion. Uh, Hugh Hefner spot mm -hmm. with your dude Jerry Buss. And, and a lot of shit used to go on at the Playboy Mansion. And you agree with me that if you're a fucking homosexual, if you're a whore, whether a man or a woman, but much more a woman than mm -hmm, man, mm -hmm. that your kids will be yeah, the ones kids, who pay the freight. Well, 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 look by, at well, Dwayne the, Wade. Uh -huh. the, look at Magic. The children. Yes. The, the sins of the father passed down to the children. I, be, I believe that. I don't think it, it, it's an accident. No, no, no. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. So Magic was doing a lot of what, freaky what, shit at the Playboy Mansion. What do you say to the red pill guys who say a man can fuck 50,000 uh, women, it doesn't matter, but his woman has to be pure? You know, when, as I was telling you earlier, mm -hmm. I don't subscribe to the, the, the whole pill type of thing there, and I do my best to stay out of it. Mm -hmm. It's entertainment to me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's entertainment to me. You got to call I, these people out, though. I just, I believe in, in righteousness. I believe that, you know... Marriage is the best thing for society. Even the United States Congress said that, that marriage is in the best interest of society and it's in the best interest of children. Correct. Children need, you know, family. So there's a risk involved when you're plug tuning uh, 50 women. Pregnancy. Are you going to be in those children's life to be their father? If not, then you're part of the problem that we're dealing with in America. Okay. Now, so let's take Andrew Tate for example. Okay, he's, he's out there. And, and by the way, we I know you support a lot of the stuff that Tate says. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, a, yeah. as do I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About seventy yeah, percent yeah. support what he says. But the the man out there has had kids with multiple women. Now, see, I didn't know countries. that until you yeah, told. Yeah. Well, I, I, I exposed his ass. Oh, okay. He's a bitch. I was about to say I never heard so that until you said I, it. He basically has multiple kids with multiple women. We know as men that you have to be around your you child got to. to basically make sure these to. kids are not beta males. You have to. So what happens? How do, are you as a man? Even I admit you're an alpha. How do you as a man have three different families? How can you be at all these different people's lives? See, the you Muslim can't. men who had money... And had multiple wives, the family was together. It was all together in the same house. Yeah, they're, so, they're mostly concubines. Yeah, but still though, they was in the and same place yes. to be impacted. Yes, by that man, this 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 spreading out type mm -hmm. of thing is very problematic because you're not there to monitor. You know, this like 100%. when your children on the scene, you can look at your your child and tell you know what's going on with them. You know, you start seeing shit. Your son playing with uh, baby dolls, mm -hmm. little Barbie dolls <laughs> and shit. You're like, no, whoa. Not, you, not we, no, I'm just saying. Yeah, but yeah. the point is, you have to be on the scene to see shit like that. Correct. So you start seeing. When you're on the scene, you start seeing things. If you're not on the scene, then you're not seeing certain things. You see. So spreading your seed around like that is very risky. And. It plays a role in where we are today in America with all of these fatherless children, fatherless children who are more impacted by females rather than males. Back in my day, even though I had the maestro on the scene, my pops, but I also had maternal uncles and I have paternal uncles and then they have friends in the hood, Joe, Skeeter, and those type of dudes masculinity man the coolest shit man that you could ever see like to this day i'm blown away like my pops you know i want to be like my pop that was the man he was a favorite uncle mm -hmm. he was the only one who stayed married he took care of his children cousin kev said man if it wasn't for uh he said if i had your pops i'd be knocking balls out of dodger stadium i would have got caught up in high school he went to lock high school got caught up in the 12th grade got a girl pregnant Fucking life was over with, man. The girl was a nurse and got him for child support. He was working at a goddamn supermarket, working part time and filed child support on his behind. Didn't even need it just to punish him, man. And so I just saw my cousin, man, just 
subjugated by a female. And then here's another dude. You can consider Keith uh, an alpha. Saw the motherfucker cry, man. He was like, you know, cousin, man, I can't even buy a fucking pair of pants, man. I can't even fucking get a haircut. I can't do this. I can't do that. You know, broke him down, you know. So it's easy to have the muscles and be big and all that shit there. But remember I said, me and crying in the dark? Some of the motherfuckers cry in the daytime. And I've seen that shit. And I'm not co-signing that shit. I'm just just keeping like shit real. You know, it's like my wife said, do you cry? All my women have said, do you cry? Because my women have not seen me cry. No, I'm like, should, nor should they ever. no, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But, you know, women are like, are you even human? Sometimes I wonder about you. And it's like the fuck. Like if I cry, my shit is inwardly, you know, energetic fucking. Cry, but I don't go. I don't I don't. No, no woman has, has seen that. And so damn near from the 20s on up, like, I don't know about you. you, you you're very stoic. Mm-hmm. You don't you're cry. You don't. Yeah, like, like you, but they know I'm not evil. Like, you're, you're righteous and, you're, you know, all these things here, but you don't cry. I never saw my father cry until my grandmother's funeral. That's I live my, a, I, I know, I know. But my point is, 20 22 years, I knew my father. I never saw him cry. Didn't even think of it. What does it look like when daddy cry? It, it, was a, it just never came to mind. My kids have never seen me cry. And I Same thing with me. Will. You know, I but I, 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 we're human and so we have that in us. But like you just said, that's something that we shouldn't be doing because as soon as a woman see that shit there, yeah, it's, it's that's lights out. It's, 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 it's a wrap. Like, like I always tell people, man. If, it's a wrap. If, if you're a man, whatever your problems are, they are your They're problems. They're your fucking They're problems. They're not the woman's problems. Yeah. Because if you try to basically uh, share all your problems to your woman, what you're going to do is basically masculinize her. Absolutely. And then she's going to fucking be more like a man. Absolutely. And then she's going to start arguing with you more. Absolutely. You don't need that nonsense. Absolutely. You don't need any of that nonsense. Absolutely. As a woman, though, whatever your girlfriend or your wife, much, much more your wife, whatever her problems are, they're your problems too. That's how this works. Her problems are your problems. Your problems are your problems. And if you do that, your marriage will last because there has to be a difference. There's some people out here who work with their wives all the time. Fine. I, I, I've seen that. My mom and dad, I've seen that. And I also see him arguing all the time. Too. Yeah. I yeah. don't need that. I don't want to work yeah. with my wife. Obviously. It masculinizes them. Uh, what I want to do with my wife is more important than work. Yeah. I want to raise kids with her. That is the most and important women thing. And women, they tend to bring work home with them. No, They're yes, very they do. emotionally internalized and things, yep. you know. But what I want to say in response to that whole, you know, red, red pill question, mm-hmm. from my personal experience, mm-hmm. brother, there was a time I had the knowledge, which was the true wealth. Mm-hmm. But I didn't have money. And I've never been a muscular dude. I've been skinny my entire life. Mm-hmm. But that goddamn knowledge, man, I was attracting the most fucking beautiful, just dream girls, man. At a time when I was financially broke, I had women, they were in Mercedes Benz, man. They had occupations, mm-hmm. man, doing colonics, all that shit. And I'm like, listen, uh, yeah, I'm I'm not gonna, you know, rock with you. Uh, I'm lying, right? I, I, I got legal work to do with it. I'm broke. So this is why Mary and I was broke. Boom. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But, but, I but but my point, my point is, the true wealth is inward. Yes. There's a metaphysics to this wealth, and so I'm broke. I people when I say I'm broke, like this was the lowest I had ever been as a man, right? Early 2000, and the finest babes out there in California, Early L.A. 2000? Early 2000s, man, mm-hmm. on the scene. Re- I didn't really y- blow y- up y- until... Y- year the, 2000 was the year of the dragon, your enemies. Mm-hmm. Well, this was, you know, mm-hmm. 2002. Mm-hmm. It just took place between 2002 and, two, and 2005, mm-hmm. right? The age 32 and 35 are our most critical, pivotal years. That's when we dump off a lot of... Um, karmic debt, especially if we got things to do in society. So this is why I tell people between the ages of 32 and 35, you're going to go through some shit. 
Okay, but even Jesus died at 33, 33, 33 is within the 32 and the 35. But this is when we are throwing off the most uh, karmic debt. Okay, the most karmic dirt. The slate is being cleansed because we got work to do, especially if you're a light worker. So if you're between the ages of 32 and 35, don't fret. Don't trip. Prepare yourself. Because when I hit 32, man, divorce. Money, everything gone. But I kept working on myself, learning law, Do you learning think business. If you learned numerology and astrology at a younger age, you probably wouldn't have got the my, li my, my life would have been totally different with, yeah. with those sciences. I trip on people who talk shit about numerology and, and astrology and all of that and palm street. I go to psychics, man. Some of the, the dopest people that I've ever met have been people who were into these uh into the so called uh, occult. The, the occultic sciences, the, the occultic arts and sciences, some of the deepest people. Hey, man, this person here does this. This person does that. You know, I got a what you call them. They said, man, how can you be boys with, uh, with with Gary? And he smokes. I said, Gary is one of the deepest, tightest dudes on planet Earth. And what you guys don't know, when motherfuckers are deep, when they're heavy, they do certain things that to onlookers. They do certain things to, to onlookers that make the onlookers think that they're they're engaged in a vice. But what's really going on is they they're so deep and so high they need things I to need, ground I, I themselves. Need, whether they know yeah, it or not. I'm I'm too what, wound up, bro. I okay. need downers, bro. You see I'm way too wound up. And so I've met psychics, man, who were overweight and they knew, look, I gotta stay grounded. Especially the ones who were Pisces. They ate chocolate. They did all type of shit. They smoked. They did weed, what have you. And they were some of the tightest fucking human beings I ever met. Because those things that we call vices help them to stay or be grounded. Because those motherfuckers are way up here. And I met a psychic in Beverly Hills, man, who was probably the best. At least one of the best. Because I've gone, everybody I've gone to have just been on the money. I mean, just awesome people. And this is, was before 2005. I became a light worker in 2005. So before 2005, I could tolerate cigarette smoke. So I met this woman in Beverly Hills. I went to her spot in Beverly Hills. And when I came into the room, she had, had sprayed it with aerosol. I was like, God <laughs> damn. It was, it was kind of great. It was smoke and aerosol <laughs> shit. I, I was like, man, should I turn around and get out of here? You know? Mm -hmm. But I stayed. Mm -hmm. Man, that woman was deep. And it took me years to figure out why such a woman like that smoked. Mm -hmm. She was, I mean, she was out of here, man. She, she was, you know, ethereal, man. She, mm -hmm. she did astrology. Uh, she did numerology. She was a psychic. I mean, she, and she was an elderly woman, too, man. She was tight. She was one of the best I'd ever gone to, man. So when I learned that there, I'm like, look, I'm going to these people for their skill, you know, their, their, their craft, their science, their art, what have you. That's what I'm there for. Fuck all the like the, the whole judgment. The, the, what have this you. is what I'm going to tell people about marijuana. Um, I agree. Most people shouldn't smoke. I agree. Um, I'm not most people. Uh, geniuses, there are some exceptions to the rule. Geniuses can do whatever the there, fuck there, they there want. There are some exceptions to the rule. And I'm a fucking genius. And I will do whatever the fuck I want to do. And you, you, I, I want uh, people to understand, I don't smoke weed for me. I smoke it for you. Because if I didn't smoke weed, I'd be fucking doing some much, much more um, things the government's against. Now, now, now see, here, here's the difference. Now, I grew up with weed smokers, right? Mm -hmm. Homeboys and cousins. You're not like them. They're lazy. So, they don't the, want to do anything. Those motherfuckers forget things. Got, they, they, I'm they, over they, here they, pushing dates. I'm over here doing that, this. But that's I'm why I said there's a difference. Yeah, so when you heard me say that there there are exceptions to the rule, mm -hmm. there are exceptions to the rule. And I'm G one is of one of them. Yeah, I was just about to say that. G is one of them. So he's most definitely correct. There's certain things he can do that you can do. Because I've never heard this man sit up here and, and forget things or not be able to spit, especially when it comes to numerology. Nah, nah, nah. This motherfucker right here just is it, it's, it's mind boggling, you know, because I'm one of the first person to tell you, like, this motherfucker's a genius right here. The mind is very mathematical. He'd be pulling and, shit, and man. And just him, this that, that actually matters. This is not that, some fucking pleb. This dude here. This, this is coming from Dehute. If the Hute fucking says I'm up there, then you know it's the fucking real deal. This this man had his shit together. Man, our first conversation, man, like I had always known. Heck yeah. And I remember 
Like I, I, I don't talk to people for that long. Man, I want people to understand something. Man, I, I talk to people for a brother, living. I was, I'm I was, sick and tired of talking to people. I get paid to talk to people gee, for a living. We, we spoke Him? for fucking. Bro, I was oh I was God. in Pasadena, bro. I yeah. was in Pasadena, man. And we was on the phone three, four something hours, man. And I'll never forget. I don't do cause, stuff cause, like that because I was I was studying. Cal, a Korean airline, 007, mm -hmm. that flight there. Mm -hmm. So, and I knew it was an espionage plan because I studied it's in my conspiracy section. So I knew the 007 dealt with intelligence plus James Bond, mm -hmm. right? Intelligence agent uh, for what, MI, MI5, MI6. And I talked to you and you're like, uh, I was in a car. Mm -hmm. I was in a car. He said, you got something to write on. Mm -hmm. I said, let me look around, you know, in the back, see what I have. Got some paper, got my pen. You was like, okay, write down this. And I was like, okay, Yahoo, write down this. It was Google, you know, and it, I, it was Facebook, Yahoo, Google, what have you. And it was the double O. Yep. And I had been hearing things about, you know, the government creating social media, mm -hmm. all that Mark Zuckerberg shit. You got on, Zoom on, on, now, on, too. On, on, the Chinese Zoom, got into that. it. Yeah, you know. And so I'm like, this shit is more than meets the eye right here, you know, that Cal 007, that's just a little part of it, man. Mm -hmm. You got social media, which is intelligent. I had just been reading about the intelligence agencies working with social media. Now, we all should know that now, the whole Trump thing and, yep. and I mean, Russia Gate. So, why and, they and, call and, it social media? Because you have the word C-I-A. Same with Balenciaga. C I A. Remember, that is probably the most ruthless organization yeah. in the whole fucking world. Yeah. They take out presidents. Yeah, they CIA is no corrupt. joke, man. Now, there was a time where I respected that agency because they actually killed communists. There was a time where what they would do is they would focus on getting rid yeah. of communism, getting rid of socialism. Now, all they want to do is spread LGBT fucking garbage. And that's what I was trying to tell you the lab podcast about the CIA and the whole crack mm -hmm. crack cocaine thing. You, know, you started with the Sandinistas was communism. Yep. So that even took place up into the, like the 1980s, which How you just said about change. the CIA. How things change. Things have most definitely changed, you know, big time. But you got we, what we got to understand is, you know, we hit like a new millennium. You know, we got the Internet, you know, things are digital, what have you. It is a new world order and not necessarily the, you know, from a conspiratorial, you know, perspective, man, but just from a whole like life perspective for a lot of us, things have changed so much, man, that a lot of us can't even like keep up. You know, a, a, a lot of us are like Noah uh, getting off the boat in the new world, you know, staggering like he's a drunk man. That's what it's like for like a lot of people that the world has changed so much. Or you come out here to Sunny Isles and you live in paradise and just fucking forget about the rest of this shit. There are places <laughs> here in America where you can go to forget about a bunch of shit. You just better make sure that you don't get caught up in a place that you're not supposed to go. Correct. This is why I'm, I'm very thankful, very fortunate, fortunate that I go to certain places with a certain energy. I never worry about somebody coming in the places that I go to to uh, commit a robbery, you know. Uh, to shoot up people like all these little crazy shootings at supermarkets and things of that nature. I go to places where stuff like that just doesn't happen. The metaphysical bookstores, the, the crystal shop, you know, the vegan spots, what have. Now, I'm not saying that it could never happen there, but energy. I have a spiritual GPS. You know, I deal with spirit guides and, and I angels. Like that. I can steal that from you. Yeah, I, I do. GPS, you know, like, like, go here, go here, walk this way, walk that direction. And I've always listened to it and I've never, ever freaking gone wrong that spiritual gps saves my life and so when you're not conscious and you're into the matrix what have you you're not in tune with yourself you're not in tune with the higher the higher self you're not in tune with your angels you're not in tune with your spirit guys man you're you're wide open you end up in the world trade uh towers on september 11th you end up on the bridge that's going to collapse you end up on the airplane that's going to crash I'll be blown out of the air. You know, it's that spiritual GPS. So when you work on yourself, people, you have no idea what you're doing for yourself. Holistically speaking, you have no idea. When we talked about the FBI uh, coming on the scene in, in, in 2001 and you asked me, what was it? What did I use? I said knowledge of the law and also said spirituality or knowledge of uh, spirituality. Spirituality is my base, people. Spirituality is my base. It is what gives me the edge. Spirituality teaches me to be humble when I'm talking to law enforcement. 
I don't like me. Get the fuck up out of here. Why are you fucking with me? It's because I'm black. Like, I never go there. <laughs> I'm quiet. Shit. I'm so quiet that law enforcement talk to me. How come you're not talking? I'm just quiet. Hands on two, four when they come on. Well, when that happens, I know to do that. But mm-hmm. even when I'm like, if I'm outside of the car, stand up, what have you, mm-hmm. my hands are to the side. Is yes, sir. No, sir. It ain't no fake shit because in the nation of Islam, they taught us to address everybody, sir. And yes, even young people, it got to the point. Women were like, don't call me, ma'am. You make me feel old. I, I would be like, uh, beloved, you know, ma'am is just a, a short, direct, um, respectful address to a woman of high social stature. That's what ma'am means. Not that you're old. I I'm, stay I'm, I'm, I don't, gl- I'm glad you told me that. I can't call too many women ma'am anymore. No, ma'am is ma'am, <laughs> yeah, that's a short, direct, polite term for a woman of high social stature. Yeah, that's that's what sir and, and ma'am means. You know, and uh, there were plenty of people, you know, I'm I'm quite sure there are plenty of people today that will tell you, don't call me sir, don't call me ma'am, what have you. And they're they're correct. You know, because uh, they're not of high social stature. They're of low social stature. And they're not sirs that, and they're not ma'am. That's what happens when you have a bad, high body count. Exactly. So, you, no, they're not uh, uh, ma'ams, you know. Etymology was my thing, you know. Um, graduating high school, which I should have never graduated. They pushed me through. But it was all good. But I had to learn certain things that, I, you know, I just didn't learn in, in high school. I didn't make any excuses. You know, LAUSD failed me and Lock High School failed me. I never said the church. I never blamed the church. I never blamed my parents. I didn't blame anybody. At what I point did you start bl- stop blaming white people? Because you were in the nation of Islam and you said you hated whitey. You hate the white devil. But no, 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 but, but, no, 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 no. Hold on. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Even though I was in the nation of Islam, I never embraced certain things. You see, so even like. The white, I knew that white people had done more crime than anybody else, but I could not. And I knew that nobody had to come in and have me look at things from a different perspective. Some people say Zionists have. No, I went oh. back. No, I went back in my life. Uh-huh. I said, go back and look at your personal interaction with white people mm-hmm. from day one. And Miss Farrell was the first, Mrs. Farrell. Excuse me, Mrs. Farrell was the first person who came to mind. This woman will always be with me. You know, like this woman, grandma says, Maria, my mother. And after that, Mrs. Farrell, a stranger, just happened to be a Caucasian. But the things this woman did for me, like reading and the art, what have you. I'm 53 and I'm still impacted by what that woman did for me. And that was back in the 70s. We're talking 1977, 1978. Oh, well, thank you, beloved. Where are the gray hairs at? I mean, they're there. You just got to look, you know. (laughs) You see the little strings coming Mm -hmm. out, what have you. You know, I'm not an alien. But uh, but thank you. Uh, But I'll never forget uh, Mrs. Farrell, Caucasian. And so when I go back and look at my life, those who benefited me, it's like it's kind of hard to believe somebody is a devil, a doer of evil. And they've never done evil to you. They've only done good to you. Mm-hmm. And that they, some of them have done, in many cases, a lot of them have done more good for you than your own people. So I, I don't know if I covered this on the last podcast. When I, left, when I left the Nation of Islam and I went back to Torrance, I went to uh, Rolling Hills. I went to Rolling mm-hmm. Hills to see the movie The Client. And I had a conversation with myself. I'm like, damn, the nation is your people. Black people are your people. But you're here in Torrance, California, a predominantly white neighborhood watching this movie here and you feel better here than you do at the mosque. Now being true to yourself, where would you rather be? If you had a choice dealing with you, not black people, but you, where would you be? I'm like, fuck, I would choose rolling Hills. Not because of white people. See the thing about Tahuti Mara, I don't do things for white people. Oh, you kiss up the white people. You please, Man, it, go back and listen to my videos 10, 11, 12 something years ago. I just keep shit real across the board. I'm not trying to win over people. I'm not trying to get anything from anybody. I love my life so much because I'm responsible for it. I'm not worried about You're like the white happy. man. You're always happy. You got whenever damn right. I, Every day of my you, life, I'm happy. Whenever I see you, whenever I talk to you, you got smiles. I don't that ever see here. anything negative. You're, you're just here. a very positive person. Is here, and I had to learn that, man. You know, I had to learn that. You know, positivity. 
You know, motivation, inspiration, devotion, all of those things, abundance, affluence, uh, prosperity. I have to go against past programming, the whole victim consciousness, the poverty consciousness, man. I had to redo those things, man. My children, my children don't even have one percent experience of my of my lifestyle as a little boy. Do you, do you, are you? They don't have. Are you, are you worried about that? Why would I be worried about it? They might grow up soft. No, 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 no. I'm look. I'm on the scene. My boys are like with me. Yeah, so, but, but they're not going through the experiences. You it, but they're gonna go, not, but, it, but but they're gonna get. It's gonna be different. And when you are, I can't. When you are walking through the streets of South Central, you probably could have got jumped. Yeah. you could have got your ass whooped. True. I highly doubt your kids are walking in a neighborhood where they can get jumped. No, they're not because exactly. they're in a, in a great neighborhood. Exactly. But but because they're homeschool, I have to give them those lessons. So I have to teach them certain things that they could come into contact with. So just because they're not going to get it because they're in Lily White Glendale, which is a safe community, I still teach them things as if they were in South Central Los Angeles. When you're fighting, you need to step on that toe. Okay, when you move in, make sure you step on that toe. That person cannot move back. Now, my boys are probably never going to have to use it, but I'm still teaching them that. Sons, when you strike a blow, Hit at the chakra, hit the throat, hit the Anya chakra, you know, or between the chest or the genitals, what have you. You know, when we're like wrestling, what have you, you know, I'm teaching them, take the fit. Because I, I had dudes that I grew up with that were in martial arts, man. I mm-hmm. learned a bunch of shit, man. And like you take your fingers and stick it in people's nose, you know, poke out the eyes, all type of shit, man. That stuff is still with me, you know, and I haven't had a physical fight since age 15. And the dude I had a fight with, they just put him in the ground two years ago. I don't even remember what the hell we were fighting over, man. <laughs> no, this was, this was a, a woman. Uh, this was stress, man. Uh, he owed two hundred thousand dollars in child support in arrears. He was stressed. He had a heart attack. He died of a, a heart attack. Mistake. Got another one. You know. Uh, yeah. He. He. This dude here really caught hell, man. Two hundred thousand uh, dollars in arrears. Okay. And uh, was just stressed out, man. It was high school, but that was the dude that I had a fight with. He was the person, he was the last person I had a physical fight with. So when you was talking about being buff and the, the alpha and all this stuff here, I learned in law. I, I saw little scrawny men, men who just happened to be judges, punk big men. That messed me up, man. I'm like, man, outside this dude, he's the dude. But in here, you're crying. You're like... They reduced you to like a bitch, dude. Like you're trembling and shaking and yes, sir, no, sir. And I, hell, even I'm not like that. <laughs> I get it. Dude, there was a dude, man, that worked for Ice Cube, man. He was a member of Nutty Block Crip. Mm-hmm. And the government took his money, $6,000. I don't know if I shared that on the last podcast. They took his $6,000. He was afraid to go get it. He was a gangbanger. Big burly type dude. I did that. tell you. You went up there. Little skinny two to my rod. Gangster, man. Uh-huh. You know, so... It's here. Gangster is here. Strength is here, man. Wealth is here. Power is here. That's why you see me doing this right here. I'm pointing to the dome, man. That's where it is. Nobody gave me anything. I love I'm this the, guy. I'm the, I'm the best at my craft. With, with Say this, it with, again. With, I'm the best at my goddamn craft. With this mind and these hands, Tahuti Madra saw millions upon millions of fucking dollars, man. I wasn't even trying. I wasn't even trying. A lot of stuff that I thought I would never do, ever experience, I did, man. I'm traveling first class, going to London, England, man. Five, six bedroom house, swimming pool, just all type of stuff that I only saw in the movie. And at one point I thought was only for white people. I got this together. And the world is mine. Like Tony Montana said, you know, the world and everything in it, you know, but skillful, of course. You see, so when I do things, I do them for Tuti Matra. I do them for the sake of righteousness. And this is why I can be on Twitter telling white folks like right now, the thing that you guys are bitching and complaining about was the shit that uh, Francisco Franco, Adolf Hitler, other so-called fascists, they fought against communism like those men are not. They fought against communism. Give me Which fascism is, over well, communism yeah, any every fucking, fucking day. day. Any, any fucking day. If you know day. history, if you know history, what we just said make, makes a lot of sense. The shit you're dealing with today, people, whether you know it or not, is communism. And nothing good comes out of communism. All of this, you will own nothing and be happy. Where we at today, it's coming. They're working on that. 
and for the masses of the people, not for certain people, because if you got money, you can make it. It's like the G man, like what we are like right now. G is straight. I'm straight. He got the, he got the snap. Straight. He got the snapper rules. Like I said, worst case scenario, I fly private jet. I'm not tripping. I don't need, you know, the commercial airliners and where well, you got to be vaccinated. You got to do this. You got to do that. What happened? Oh, I'm you. always coming up with the plan. See, he who fails the plan has planned to fail. I'm always planning. How'd you learn this legal strategy? I was in my mind. Nothing was going on. You know, I just gave myself the scenario. And what would I do? When I go places, I'm looking for certain places like, okay, if this motherfucker caught on fire, what would I do? Where would I go? If Michael Myers came in this motherfucker, you, you know, with a damn big <laughs> knife or, 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 or a Texas Chainsaw Massacre, right? Where, where am I going? What room am I going into? Is this bed high enough for me to get under? Like, that's how my mind works. I am always thinking. And then I write. It becomes code. I codify things. And then I apply my code. And that's where the success comes from. But the, in applying the code, that's action. Knowledge and then the action. You got to have the actions. Like even when I was into, into sovereignty, it was the actions, putting shit in the mailbox, sending shit to the DMV, you know, to the state government, to the federal government. You, the just, IRS. you just enjoy sticking into the government and looking for any well, No, possible. no, but here's the truth. Here's uh -huh. the truth. I really want to know certain things. Hey, yeah, listen, is it. there a difference between driving or traveling? Tell me, because mm -hmm. I want to be uh, complying with the laws. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to catch any cases, headaches, what have you. I want to do the right thing. I want to be a law abiding citizen. Mm -hmm. But I found out that those who are supposed to enforce the laws actually break the laws. No, oh, of course. The laws are for me and you. They're not you for them. see what I'm saying? And uh, see, I didn't know that yeah, back yeah, then, yeah, yeah, you know, and it's like, hey, I'm hearing these people saying that I don't have to pay taxes. I'm hearing these people saying I ain't got to have a driver's license. <laughs> I'm hearing these people say A, B, C, D. Is, is this the real deal? Because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm radical like that. I'll do that shit. But I need to know, is it the law? And they would never answer me back. And that's when I knew, like, oh, snap. These people are right. But these people were missing something. What these people were missing was reason, the ability to think and understand and draw conclusions, because these people were getting their cars impounded. They were going to jail. Their children were being snatched up. And I'm like, man, now they got the truth, but they're not getting the result of it. That's what pushed me into statutory law, statutory construction, constitutional law, statutory law, administrative law. And that's what I do damage with. I'm helping my daughter out right now. And we're dealing with statutory law and case law. Case law, judicial uh, precedent. That's what I deal with. I will use like Bruce Lee taught me. I will use anything that works. Man, you know, who's doing white man's law? <laughs> but white man's law benefited me. Try, try and, Jewish law. And, 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 and the dude who said that, he had to come to me. Of course. And I'm a Taurus. I never forget. So it's like, fuck you and good luck with your black dragon cars that's supposed to be top tier sovereignty, what have you. You get your shit back from LAPD on your own because word got back to me. And you're supposed to be a goddamn more in the top more. You just, what I'm doing is white man's law is weak and lethargic, what have you. But yet and still you're coming to me while I'm out of town asking me for help to get your two impounded cars back because LAPD snatched your shit up off the street. They didn't know about your sovereign status. <laughs> People, before you think about sovereignty, you might want to, yeah, you might want to check me out before you do that. So, it, so the sovereign people are kind of like women with no accountability. No accountability, yeah, man. You okay. know, robbing people left you. and right will I tell you, you anything that sounds good just to get your money. But when you get in the Jimmy Jam, uh -huh. they're not there to help you. Sounds like a stripper who you're trying to take home. Yeah, with they're, they're not there to help you, you know. So if you guys are thinking about that, you might, you know, want to contact me and get the 411. And it's not about money with, with myself, you know. I generate, you know, different areas from different areas in different areas. So for me, it's it's not a hustle. I'm not selling anything. I'm just, you know, giving people advice. All right, That's all I'm doing. We've been at this for almost what? four hours. Ooh. I want I, I almost. But but we haven't even got into 
what you're fucking known for. Mm. We haven't even. We've been talking for three, three Man. and a half hours, and we haven't even got to your forte, yeah, my dude. But, but you know, you know that we did like you know what four hours, brother. It we can go eight hours, nine well, hours, what have you. So can do, we can do twenty four hours. You know, all, you know, I would never get tired. You talking know, to you. it's just so much information, but, people. But I do want to go into your wheelhouse. You're a holistic medicine expert, so mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you some good things. When you cut a carrot, the inside of it looks like a, the iris of your eye. Mm -hmm. Carrots are good for your eye. That's what we call um, the doctrine of signatures. Mm -hmm. When you uh, take a walnut and you cut it, it looks like a brain. Mm -hmm. Walnuts are good for the brain. Absolutely. So my question to you is, is this coincidence no 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 or is this freaking real yeah we call it the doctrine of signature explain you know so if you look at substantia's tuberosa it looks like a penis mm -hmm. and it's good for it's, your it's penis. good for the penis it's, it's known as the uh genghis khan her <laughs> you know <laughs> genghis khan has so many children man and he needed help the, and that was a substantia probably have genghis khan's dna you know don't we? you know so substantia you know you have uh turia uh, hetero, you have a uh, heterophila turia, and this tree right here, man, it, it looks like a penis with the testicles at the base, and that herb benefits the testicles and the penis. We call it guru root. You can go to mandingo.com to check that out, and that's mandingo, M A N D Y N G O, not the I N G O, that's a porn site, but mandingo, M A N D Y N G O. <laughs> That's a herb side. I don't mess around with that porn stuff, all right? Make no mistake. <laughs> but you can find the Guru Root, and the, the, um, a.k.a. the uh, heterophila at mandingo.com. So it's called the doctrine of signature. When you take a herb like Eyebright, and it has a little vessels that you can look into the white of the eye and see, the blood vessels. Eyebright is good for the eyes. Mm -hmm. There are certain herbs that are Thin fiber, they're they're fibrous, but they're thin, which is the same as the inside of the female vagina. Like these herbs are mucilaginous, red raspberry leaf, marshmallow. They they're good for the female vagina. So the doctrine of signature. You hear that horse? Let me say the horse. <laughs> That's they need to call the horse. They need to get rid of yeast infections because hey, these bras need it. The horse need the wild yam root, which is the natural birth control, right? <laughs> 99% effective rate. That's where your diocesan came from. See, before there was the drug, there was the herb. You see, as a matter of fact, the word drug goes back to the old French word drogue, which means dry plant. The plant, that's your medicine, not the drug. They push the drug on you because the drugs bring in a lot of money. You can't patent, pharma. You can't patent a herb. A uh, weed is a herb. It's a plant. It's not a drug. Marijuana is a plant with 500 plus medicinal purposes. Say it again. 500 uh, plus uh, okay. medicinal purposes. So, so, so when people start talking shit about weed while they're fucking drinking alcohol, while they're fucking out here fucking a whole bunch of whores, am I supposed to take these people seriously? No. They want to they... talk about me smoking weed, yet they're fucking whoring around and drinking alcohol. I'm sorry. I can fucking function smoking weed. Yeah. I can make money. You can. I've I seen can it. do things. Yeah. You're not going to function smoking, uh, drinking alcohol all day. And by the way, yeah. when you drink alcohol, doesn't it allow for possession? Absolutely. You know, al alcohol from alcohol, it's, a, it's an Arabic word, you mm -hmm. You know, and it means flesh eating spirit, you know, uh, jinn. They say jinn will make you sin. Well, in Islam, you know, that fiery spirit is called the jinn, J-I-N-N. So there's the, the, the connection, the correlation of physical things and spiritual things are things of a spiritual nature. So people, when you drink alcohol and you try to come up with all these reasons why you drink the alcohol, you're sabotaging yourself. You're polluting your blood. You're polluting your lymph. You're polluting your kidneys. You're polluting your liver. You're doing major damage, major, major, major damage. See, tobacco is not a problem. We talk about smoking. It's the type of tobacco that you're smoking and it's the other chemicals that you're smoking. Cigarettes have 700 plus ingredients that when you put fire to the cigarette, turns into 1400. Now tobacco is sacred to the Native Americans. What did they know that we don't know today? 
See, it's the chemical invasion. It's the same thing I said about me. It's the same thing I said about water. All the stuff that we can talk about, the water is toxic, the food, the meat, and the dairy products, and the pharmaceuticals. Is it Basically, it's chemicals, is beloved. Is it true that smoking tobacco increases testosterone? That's what I've been hearing from these alpha pill guys, red pill guys. If you smoke they're, tobacco, they're, they're saying that it to increases. Justi- no, no, they're saying that to, to justify because when you look at the Native American, the Native mm-hmm. Americans, they got us beat. They didn't have a low testosterone issue like we have mm-hmm. today. So they knew about testosterone. They knew it was the raw pine pollen. They knew it was the mirapuama. They knew it was the epimedium, the a.k.a. a horny goat weed. They knew sarsaparilla root. They knew the plant. So if you want to boost your testosterone, nothing beats the plant. As a matter of fact, I challenge you to look up bull bean natal lenses. There's nothing on planet Earth that comes close to bull bean natal lenses. All right. For go, incre- go through a list right now of what plants are best for testosterone because I keep That's hearing easy. people. I keep hearing people, yo, inject some testosterone in you. And no, I keep from where? That, Where's that, that testosterone uh, from? That's exactly. like fucking so, chemical. So it's going to shrivel I'm, up I'm, your ball. Your thinking, balls are going to shrink. I'm thinking, wait a second. Why would I put an, uh, testosterone in my body? That's like putting fucking sperm yeah, in my it, fucking it, body. Am, am I wrong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, that's that's the, the idiocy. You don't have to do that, people. Look here. When we say horny goat weed, we're talking about a goat. What's the symbol of Playboy magazine? A bunny rabbit. We're dealing with fertility, sex, screwing. Okay. What is a stud? That's a horse. A man who's a stud is some dude that he can throw pipe. Leg game is strong. So when you look at the bunny rabbit, uh, the stud, uh, the goat, you, you, it's just, I'm just being real. They're eating the fucking plants, man. You heard of the term sow your oats? We have a herb called oat straw. That is a, a, that is a herb that boosts or increases testosterone, but also increases sperm count. And improve the quality of sperm. Man, you got daughter seed. You have black, black maca root. You have bull bean, natalensis. You have uh, Africana pygium. You have mirapuama. You have uh, sustantias. You have cubraucho. You have sarsaparilla. There's hundreds of... Motherfucker, are you kidding me? Go to mandingo.com. I'm just, let me tell you something. No, I'm not going to even go off into that. I was about to say I'm 53 and some other things there, but... I would I would have said something that would have probably had the phones blown off the hook at Mandingo because I don't care what the what, what I, the, I, I, I know I, what you're about to say. I don't care what the age uh-huh. is. You can leg pipe for uh, an hour to two hours. Uh, like it's real. I'm I, talking about an hour to two hours. Not that women really want that. But all that, you know, be, as you age, your shit just as some BS. There's some plants out there will blow your freaking Mine people. While, while these motherfuckers are paying for Viagra and Cialis. Man, you don't need that stuff there. All those fields, so then the field or then the field. You don't need, that shit. Don't need, that, need shit. that shit. That's gonna mess with your vision. You know, it's not gonna have an effect after a while, but it's gonna mess with your vision. It's gonna cause headaches. It's gonna cause no nosebleeds. You don't need that. Nose All you bleeds. nosebleeds, brother. Yes, there's a great documentary on UFO uh, television. Uh, I think it's called Farmagate, and Dwayne Johnson. Yeah, that's actually his part where he's explaining the side effects of taking those. Dwayne those men. Johnson. Wow. He's in that. He's in that documentary breaking it down. Mm-hmm. And, and, but you, he, know, he you, took, know, you know that documentary well, got buried. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. on UFO television. The only yeah. place I know where to watch it. Uh-huh. But that's that, that's the real deal. So there are a lot of dudes taking things, the supermarket uh, sex pills, stuff they're buying off the internet, but they're complaining about the headaches, and they're saying like the stuff don't work. Well, after a while, it's not going to work. There are natural things that you can take day in and day out because you're not taking it to, you know, to be erect, you know, to bang some chick. You know, you're doing this even if you're not with a chick. You're taking these things every single day. They become part of you. They get in your blood after like three months and you're good to go. So no matter who you are, you can't perform. You ain't got to pop a pill in order to get an erection. Like it comes natural. You got. My, good. I, I just need my wife to be naked to get an erection. That, uh, this, this, that's hey, that's, that's what that's, I'm saying. That, that's all I, I just, need. That's you all know, I need. man, I should have issues right with women who would talk about camisoles, and you don't like camel. I'm like, look, that shit don't do nothing for me. Your naked body, your birthday suit. That's all I need. Cause all that other stuff is gonna be on the floor. You see. And I'm still gonna be turned on. So you can save your money with that stuff. That that's for the women. Cause I don't need that shit. It's just like what you said. 
Just be new, be in the new. That's all I need. But I'm telling you people, man, these herbs, whether you take them as capsules or drink them as, as, as teas or extracts, man, they get the job done. Just as I'm known for numerology, just as I'm known for code cracking, just as I'm known for basically uncovering the matrix for you guys, this is what this guy's for. He's man, a the medicine. And he is goddamn the law. He basically mastered two. And the FDA, two. they came. All those people, they, I've, I'm telling you, the law, man, I'm here today because of the law. And I mastered these people's game, man. When I told you I had all mm. them run ins with government, brother, I mean that. Federal, state, local. So, so the feds went after a black man and they if, came out nothing yeah and i mean it was just because you know herbal is going against me you could be a white man same thing in court man like if you go in there who, as the white guy they they rung up uh who, who was selling the holistic uh, the herbs and all this stuff and they put it's, in jail it's for been five, a, it's, it's, it's been a whole bunch of them so the, the main the main the, give me some main names. i mean man they locked up my dude ed mccabe and he, he he's he's the king of oxygen he's okay. pushing the oxygen they locked locked this else? behind us man names. they got rid of harold hoxie but that was like back in the day who else? um Royal Raymond Rife, and these guys weren't even herbalists. Well, all of them weren't, weren't herbalists, and, and but they, they were. If they knew what you knew, nothing would have happened to them. Now, okay, since you since you brought that mm -hmm. up, and there were you you asked about white men and yeah. to name them and who had been locked up. Well, when it comes to blacks, the number one person come to mind is my good buddy, a former buddy, Tim Morrow. I refuse to go out like Tim. Tim was a tight cat. But they got Tim, man. Tim served time in jail. As a matter of fact, Tim was so sick in jail, they let him out to die. And he was a herbalist. And they got him. Same thing with Dr. Sabi. See, when you go in, like Osho, they got Osho. Osho wrote about that in a book. When, when, when you go in behind closed doors with the government and they want to take you out, you're, you're gone. You got to make sure that you never go under. You got to make sure that you never go behind enemy lines. If you do, you're not coming out. That's Tim Morrow. How close are you? That's uh, I'm, I'm a long ways from it, brother. Look, I mm. spirituality and knowledge. I know how to navigate. I'm telling you now it's not happening to me. Wisdom, the ability to live life skillfully. I have learned so much. Law is the key. You never hear me talk about curing a disease. I always talk about repairing organs. I know the language. Law is a language. So these, these jokers are never getting the Mahat Ra. I'm, I'm wiser today than I was five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. I'll be wiser more and that, five more. That's why I move the way I move. That's why I move the way I move. If you want me, there's a barrier. I don't need your money. But my $100 monthly mm -hmm. fee, that's a goddamn, that's a barrier, man. I've been creating those boundaries. That's how we, you know, ended up dealing with this particular female back in the day. But that taught us. Because you don't move the way you used to after dealing with old after, girl. After dealing with I don't move the same. Everyone I, who comes to my group signs a non-disclosure. I and where'd that come from? It came that, from that you bitch. You see what I'm saying? He it learned. It came from that bitch, man. He learned. It I came learned. from that bitch, man. I, I did you not. Learn. I did not know there was those type of crazy people out there. The people you could you go learn from out experience. there and help. People you could go out there and help nurture. And, 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 you, and you find out these people enjoy causing trauma. Yeah, that's they, they enjoy. They, get up, they, get on that they shit. enjoy causing suffering. No conscience. And pain no conscience for whatsoever. Other and they will use the legal system against you. Yeah. And this is why you need people like this. Yeah. This is a men's right advocate to the oath fucking degree. How many fucking men have you saved? A plethora, man. You know, a plethora. I've met so many people, man. I mean, white, Asian, Latino, black, doesn't matter if you in this matrix, man. I mean, you, you're a piece, man. Like, like you, you're, you're, you're a chip, you know? So you, you, you got to know your stuff. And if you don't, then you, you, you have to know the right people, man. Even when we did with your dude, like Andrew, when I saw a video, when he was saying that he didn't know about his life, his life was in the hands of somebody else. Mm-hmm. And when I heard that, man, I really felt bad for him. You know, it's like, damn, that's that's not, you know, that's that's not a good thing to be. 
You know, because your mind ain't right. You know, you can do your thing and talk and all that stuff there. But in the back of your mind and and see what I'm saying is actually coming from experience. I've been there. So in the back of your mind, it's like, damn, what what is my fate going to be? You know, like, fuck, like, are they going to set me up? Am I going to jail? Like those fucking thoughts be there, man. And it's only when they're gone, when they say innocent or not guilty Man, the fucking joy is is out of this world. But until then, there's something riding you, man, Mm -hmm. and you're you're not free. And I've been there, people. I've been facing some some criminal shit in my early 20s when I was young, emotional, and the prefrontal cortex wasn't developed. You know, some shit along gangster lines and stupid shit, man. And I overcame that. I was a Muslim. I said, Allah, you get me out of this. I'm straight. And... I got out of it and I never, ever looked back. And you the kept thing, your promise. Damn right. You know, you damn right. I was like, you know what? Whole T, Keeb and all y'all. Yeah, I've, I've heard I'm, so many gamblers say, yo, God, get me this no, back. No, and, no. I, and I'll never do it again. I, I, meant, do it again. I meant that shit because that was mm. the first time I was experiencing, mm. you know, what I was experiencing, like facing jail time. And that shit didn't feel good, you know, and I couldn't tell my, my parents. I couldn't tell my girlfriend. And I'm like, fuck, like, how am I going to tell people I'm going, I'm going away for like six months? What have you? It's like you're a slave to your mind, man, you know? So when that was finally over with, man, I was so relieved. But like you said, I kept my, my, my promise. I kept my oath. I was free. I got off the hook. And I could have went back and did the same thing I did. But I was like, nope, I'm going in a different direction. And going in that different direction led me to the path that I eventually got on and that led me to where I am right now. So there was benefit to keeping my promise, my oath to the higher power because it got me to where I am right now. Because your word has value. Absolutely. Let me ask you this. Let's read this tweet together. Andrew is now the Cobra, but he was oh, born I saw that. a tiger. I saw that. This is Andrew Tate's I dad. saw that. This was on November 11th. I saw that. 11-11, 2012. Yeah. So he's I saw basically that. saying he's a tiger. So he's calling. He's, he's basically yeah. using Chinese yeah. astrology. Yeah. And could absolutely, you, can you believe that Andrew says this is bullshit? He does. Yeah, Andrew says this is bullshit, bro. So again, we have a man who's lying about what he knows because he wants to keep the knowledge from other people. Do you know in the war room they pay everyone on the twenty eighth? Mm mm. Mm, wonder why do they, they yeah, seriously yeah they seriously pay them on the 20th you know what they tell them they say it's a lucky number they don't even tell people oh, why wow. there's people like in walmart all the prices now are in eights you remember five years ago everything was nine nine Man. now it's nine eight everything has switched go in society you can't you see 28, hold, you, you see 28 this 28 that and this is basically the you, knowledge i put out there through numerology now here's the thing a lot of people copy you. They don't give you credit. You know, and I'm cool with it. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm Well, not. because people going to do them. You know I'm what I'm not, saying? I'm not, about I'm not the, cool. See, this yeah. man is it's, okay with it. Because it's just so, <laughs> it's, so, it's, so, it's so much knowledge. And then everybody don't know how to apply it. That's why I can give it up so much. Because I'm knowing that the missing component is application. Knowledge is nothing if you don't apply it. And I a agree. lot of people don't have the ball. They don't have the, the can courage, I, can I the something? tenacity. Oh, let me, ahead, let me, let me talk about application of knowledge. Okay. I, this, okay. Is, this is basically when I threw all the numerology books away. I threw all the stuff away. I was talking to a numerologist. Uh, this bitch's name was Allison. And she, I basically asked her, listen, if eight's the number of money, right? And she's like, yeah, 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 100%. I'm like, why are you selling your products for 25, for 50? For a hundred, hmm. why aren't you selling 80, 89, 98? Hmm. All the ads up to a hundred. Yeah. All of a sudden, I heard dead silence for 45 seconds. Hmm. And then she told me, I never thought about that. So at that point, I was like, wait a second. You've been at this for 40 years, but you never actually applied what you're teaching everyday life? Fraud, oh, fraud, God. fraud. I'm done. At that point, I was like, you know what? I'm doing this myself. I threw all the books away, threw everything away. I went up to people. What's your birthday? In the mm. elevator, what's your birthday? In the yeah. grocery line, what's your birthday? Experience, I to application. To, I used to go to fucking cemetery, smoke weed, be like, this guy is born on this day. He died on this day. Figure out why. You're not leaving this fucking cemetery until you come to some fucking conclusion. And that's yeah. why I used to do that Application. for four or five hours myself. Application. Myself. Application. And, but see, the people out here in society, they fucking feel entitled. 
They want everything fucking handed to them. You're fucking nothing. And, and, and this goes in the spiritual community too. You're nothing but spiritual fucking communists. That's all you fucking are. You want everything handed to you. And let me tell you something. If everything in life is handed to you, you will have no problem solving skills. Yeah. Zero. None. And that is the problem of society. Yeah. They do not have problem solving skills. You can throw this motherfucker in somewhere in Morocco. I bet you will be a millionaire within 18 months. I don't know. You can take everything away from him. Yeah, exactly. And I'm willing to bet he will be Absolutely. a millionaire and he won't be blaming the white man. He won't be blaming the fucking government. He won't say, oh, the Jews are holding us down. You know, that's the funniest thing I hear. Mm -hmm. Yes, Zionists run shit. Mm -hmm. No one's disagreeing. Yeah. Okay. But let's keep it real. We're living in the most prosperous time in human history. Mm -hmm. In the past 80 years, mm -hmm. more people have been taken out of fucking poverty than all of human history before. So, yes, the Zionists are running the world. Yes, they're doing certain things. But that didn't prevent this black man from getting his bag. And it didn't prevent this immigrant son from getting his bag either. It doesn't matter what's going on in, in the world, people. It's about you cultivating your mind and taking charge of your life. This right here, this is the most precious gift your mind is the genie Tell bottle him. it is the magic wand it doesn't matter what your race is man or your background and your class this mind here can get you to wherever it is you want to go whatever it is you want to be this right here and see this is why i don't put shit in this right here man because this right here is the key this right here is the key i know with this i can solve any problem that comes my way and as a G-Man just said, man, if I was to, you could put me in Morocco, Russia, what have you. The formula is here. And here in the States, I have walked away from several multi-million dollar businesses that I started. You know why I could walk away, people? I'm the spider, not the web. I spin the web. Ooh. So I knew the things I did Coming before I could do again. And I've done it three times over. It's a, it's a, it's a formula. And I follow that formula. And once you have it, you can't ever lose it. And it doesn't matter where I go. I can go to Ghana. I can go to Spain. I can go to Germany. It don't matter. I'm a herbalist. And I'm going to put together the best formulations. I'm going to help human beings wherever I go. And if they listen and they submit to the knowledge and to the formulations, they're going to get results. That's a law. The only thing that can stop people are their own mind. That's the only thing that can stop people, their own mind. Like I tell people, if you want to heal, the first thing you got to do is believe that you can heal and that you're worth healing. A lot of people can't heal because they don't feel that they're worth healing. You see, this mind is all powerful, people. This is why I don't bitch and complain about nothing or nobody. I drop the real. I talk about all type of stuff, man. But you never, ever hear me talk about the 50 run-ins with law enforcement and how that stopped me or how that, you know, that was a, a shortcoming for me, what have you. <laughs> you know, it set me back. You know, Christianity, my parents, LAUSD, uh, girlfriends, uh, homeboys in the hood, sellouts, what have you. Nothing can set me back but me. No, I make no excuses, people. My man, um... You're self-made. You, you can we're, bo we're, we're both self-made. We're, we're both we, self-made. We, we can retire. We're, one thing I like about being with you is you're the top of the game in your profession. You're the, you're the Jordan mm -hmm. of basically, I don't care about doctors. I've, 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 I've you, never you, said it, but I always I, No, no, I'm saying it. Okay? Yeah, I don't I've give a fuck what you say. I'm I was, saying it. I was, okay? I was, I, you're, you're the yeah. man. You're the man, okay? Appreciate you it, are brother. the man in your field. I like being with another Jordan, brother. Mm, right I like on, brother. being with another Jordan. But right here's on. what I'm going to tell you, man. Right on. What do you tell the men who are listening right now who want what you have? They're not you. They don't have your intelligence. What can they do to fucking have a piece of what you have? Number one... You got to own this because that's work, too. I could I could really just say, hey, you got to do the work. But there's mental work. Then there's physical work in the action going to like I had to go to the law libraries, man. I had to make copies. My back is aching because I'm making copies of whole books. I'm going to the courthouse. 
you know, I'm sitting in on cases. I'm going to the clerk's office filing things, man. Your mind and then the action. You got to put in the work. See, in the Bible, Jesus says, when ye desire a thing, when ye pray, believe that you have already received and ye shall have. Notice the first thing that was said was desire. Now, in this world, they'll tell you to get rid of desire. I say no. And even the biblical Jesus said, when ye desire, when you pray, prayer is a vehicle for desire. What are you desiring? But you don't Brother, pray. No, I'm making a point because mm -hmm. a lot of those people do. But my point is mm -hmm. on desire. Mm -hmm. OK, Jesus didn't say you pray for certain things when you desire. Then you pray. Mm -hmm. This is what Jesus is saying. But desire is above prayer is my point, uh, because the way it. I pray is I think. People say, do you pray? I don't pray the way you pray. When I think, I'm, I'm praying. You, think? you see what I'm saying? Oh, well, I so, said think in the Quran. To, to think, absolutely. Yeah. So I tell people that's my form of prayer. I don't I don't bust the mold and, and things like this and the rock cause no disrespect. I just don't do that. You know, when I rise in the morning, man, I do me. You know, there was a time, oh, you must pray. And if not, you know, Allah's going to get you. Do, 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 do you I do me first do you, thing in the a.m. Do you put God above your family? Do I put God above my family? Yes. I put, I'm, I'm above my family. What about God? Do you put God I, I, above your family? Like Osho said, it's not about God. It's about God being godly. It's about godliness. So I don't know God. Have we met God? Have we had a conversation with God? What have you? So that's why I said, you know, I'm over my family. Good man. I'm Good over man. my family. 100%. I've always to had. Teach his own, though, but that's just I, me. I, I've always had uh, problems with people who are religious who believe they put a free God will. They, they, they in got front free. of their own family. I mean, e, e, these are people that, you're with, phew. a woman you had a child with, and you're going to put no, some, no, 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 some no. kind of entity. To teach his own. I would never do that. Mm -mm. To each his own. Religion can make people do certain things, man, that are, are very questionable. To me. Thank God the age of Pisces is over. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, the only, the only religion that's growing right now is Islam because it's not really a religion. It's a political it's a, system. Yeah. Yeah. It's a political system. Yeah. So again, that's why it's growing uh, at a, a rate that other religions just can't match at this point. Um, the Hute. Hey, I'll be back, man. You know, it's like you we hyped up during the four or five hours, what have you? We already did it. But, but yeah, we already did it, brother. But we didn't cover everything, you know. Brother, so I don't, I, think, I, I don't think if I do you for uh, do this it don't matter. Twenty four hours, it, we'll cover it, everything. It, it, it don't matter. We we just this is the longest podcast I ever did in my life. Wow! And I knew I'd do it with him. Wow! I knew it because you know what? It's so pleasurable having him around. Because I don't have to do all the talking. Yeah, I, I don't feel have like to do brother. all the talking. I usually have to dominate yeah. the conversation. I have to talk about numerology twenty four seven. Guys, you guys know what the fuck I am. I'm going to bring guests on who can add value, and this man right here definitely adds that. Dehute, how do people get a hold of you? Yeah, they can get a hold of me at lifemasteryforum dot com. Lifemasteryforum dot com. The products I mentioned. A Mandingo.com. That is Mandingo spelled M-A-N-D-Y-N-G-O.com. And then for all that other good stuff I've made over the years, you can find those products at DivineMedicinal.com. Divine Medicinals with an S dot com. Can, can I give you some advice, brother? Yes, sir. Um... Make a website that's real, real easy to remember. Oh, I, I used like, to. Like, like GG33. And I real, used to. I and, used and to. Then, and then have all those other websites under that because you have to understand people are stupid. Oh, I'm already knowing, people bro. People can't spell. I, I'm people already knowing. People can't fucking do anything. That's why I wrote 800 articles. I'm used to, t to training people and to teaching people. But no, I, I most definitely used to do. That's what DMR was for. Yeah. You know, you DMR dot boom. But um, yeah, it's life mastery. Uh, forum.com it is long but it's only for certain people for people who, who want to mm. find me they're going to do, do, do their due diligence lifemasteryforum.com and dingo.com divine medicinals Com. If you want to find me, uh, there's a couple ways to do it. GG33 Academy is the biggest, largest occult school in the world. We have over 3,000 members. We have over eight teachers that I've trained myself personally. Mm -hmm. Numerology, astrology, kundalini, tarot. All that stuff is in GG33 Academy. 
I implore you that if you actually want to learn this stuff and you're on a budget, 98 bucks a month, uh, again, I actually apply what I talk about. I talked about eights and prices, nine, eight to 17, one, seven, eight. I'm not a hypocrite. This man is not a hypocrite. We believe in what we are saying. That's the difference between us and all these other oh, yeah. fucking frauds out oh, there. Yeah. We actually believe in what we're saying. And trust me when I tell you, there's few individuals in this world like this guy. I mean, he gives me hope for nine life paths. Mm. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I know you shit. feel about I, the nine. I, I, I was going to throw shit in these motherfuckers, man. I'm already they, they, knowing. They, you know, they think they're some kind of uh, superpower. And at the end of the day, um, yeah. you know, it, it. I don't even want to say anything. I don't no, it's, a, it's, it's all, it's all good. Knows hey, it. I, yeah, I'll be back, man. This Florida is, this, is my spot, man. This is a GG33 gold member. Man. He's one of the last people I will ever give a scholarship to because this man is fucking dead worth it. I, oh, I mean, thank look, you, good do, brother. Do, do you know how many of my students actually want to say, yo, where's the Hute? Hmm. Where's the Hute? I mean, hell, man. Uh, literally 20 people want to come up here who are GG33, hmm. and I only let one fan in here. Hmm. <laughs> wow. I told you wow. I had to bring you food. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Anyways, uh, this has been the longest podcast wow. I, I've done. And most likely, this is going to be the longest podcast until me and him do oh, yeah. number three. Yeah. And you're going to be in Miami oh, yeah. much you more know, often yeah, now. Absolutely. So we're going to do this. I'm going to say absolutely. one more thing. The same way Zerka fucking made it in 2023 because he's born on the 23rd. Mm. My man over here is going to be a fucking household name in 2024. Tell him what day you're born on. April 24th. This has been a GG33 production.